This is Audible. Tantor Audio, a division of recorded books, presents Out of Frame by Megan Erickson. Narrated by Mark Bachman. Chapter 1 Quinn. I wanted to pretend I was Kate Winslet, gazing at the large cruise ship from under the wide brim of my black and white hat. But this wasn't the Titanic, and I wasn't a statuesque woman with curves. This was Fort Lauderdale, in 2015. Our boat was the Coastal Mia of the Coastal Cruise Lines, and I was a ginger college student who needed at least SPF 50 so I didn't broil red like a lobster. I glanced at my best friend beside me as she shaded her eyes with her hand, blonde hair whipping around her shoulders from the breeze rolling off the Atlantic Ocean. Jess turned her blue eyes to me and winked. This is it, Quinn. How long have we talked about doing this? I inhaled the pungent sea air and let out an extended breath. A long time. We were misers in college, working every chance we could at our on-campus jobs and then at her parents' barbecue restaurant during the summers and over breaks. For four years. Now, this was it. Our senior year spring break, and we planned to live it up. If I knew what live it up meant, I wasn't so sure. Damn right a long time, she said, nodding her head for effect. And now it's our time. A shadow loomed over us as Jess's older brother set her large pink suitcase down on the ground beside her. My mouth always went a little dry at the sight of Colin. He was my first crush, before I knew what a crush was, before I realized that said crush meant I was gay. He still gave me funny feelings in my stomach, that hot flash of attraction. He'd only ever seen me as his little sister's shy best friend, and that was okay. He was happy now, with a boyfriend he loved, and who loved him back. He wasn't for me and it had taken me a long time to get over that first crush, but I had. He placed his hands on his hips. Did you pack the whole house, Jess? Damn, you're only going to be gone for a week. I need outfit options, she said. Exactly. Riley stepped next to Colin and rubbed his boyfriend's elbow. Outfit options are a must, Mr. I pack three pants for five days. Jeans always fit better after you wear them a couple of times, Colin said. Riley patted his boyfriend's denim-clad ass. Of course they do. He turned toward the boat, and the crowd beginning to board. You guys are going to have so much fun. Baby, we can go on a cruise if you want, Colin said in that deep drawl he had. Riley rolled his big brown eyes. No way. I had a shoot one time on a boat. I had to lean halfway over the railing, and it was windy, and my eyes were watering, and I was half sick to my stomach. And I was wearing only a jock strap. I now had a mental image that was really attractive. But then I felt guilty for perving on Colin's boyfriend. Colin's gaze shifted to Jess and me, his cheeks a little pink, then back to his boyfriend. I'm thinking you could have left off that last sentence in mixed company. Riley winked at me. Not sure anyone minded, right, Quinn? I swallowed, but my tongue felt thick in my mouth. I managed to croak out a... Right. Riley flashed me a smile, then flipped his bangs out of his eyes and surveyed the ship. He had an overt sexiness about him, the way he moved his mouth the way he walked and talked. He was... really everything I wasn't. I was that awkward gay kid who'd never felt right in his own skin, not a beautiful, graceful gay like Riley. But really, the way Colin looked at Riley, the guy could have been a hunchback with horns and Colin still would have loved him. An ache bloomed in my chest. I rubbed it and stared at my feet. That had been the problem with my ex-boyfriend, no matter how much I had pretended he did. 
He never once looked at me like Colin and Riley looked at each other, not ever. And especially not in public, because... I shook my head. This wasn't the time to be broody or pissed off, or any of the other myriad emotions that floated to the surface of my mind like debris when I thought about Alexander. This was the time to have the best week of my life aboard a cruise ship with my best friend, hundreds of other college students, and cast members of the reality show, Trip League. So I wrapped my fingers around the handle of my wheeled suitcase and gripped the strap of my messenger bag across my chest. Ready? I asked Jess. More than ready, she answered. We said goodbye to Colin and Riley, the former telling us to be careful and safe, and the latter telling us, with a sly grin, not to do anything he wouldn't do. We went through the security line first, where our bags were checked inside and out. The male security guard seemed extra interested in a red lace bra of Jess's. She glared at him the whole time and snatched her bag as soon as he was finished. Then she rolled it away quickly, whipping her hair over her shoulder with a haughty toss of her head. I followed, my gaze cast down to hide my smile. We stood in line on the ramp leading into the ship, waiting to board. A group of passengers beside us had clearly started the party early, or more likely they hadn't stopped from the night before. At nine-thirty in the morning I could smell the beer rolling off them. A girl in the group, probably one of their girlfriends, was slumped over her suitcase. I couldn't imagine boarding the boat like that. What if one of them had missed their alarm and they hadn't arrived at the boat on time? I'd set my phone alarm, Jess's alarm, my watch, and scheduled a wake-up call for the front desk at the hotel. Jess didn't even bat an eye, because she was well acquainted with my crazy. I nudged Jess and jerked my head in their direction. She raised her eyebrows at them, then turned to me. Hey, that could be you later, but you'll be sick because of the boat, not alcohol, Mr. I puke on all forms of transportation. I shook my hand and rummaged in the side pocket of my book bag, then pulled out a small plastic package. Jess squinted at the contents. What's that? Sea bands. Sea bands! I touched the cotton wristbands through the clear plastic, feeling silly now. My, uh, mom knows I get motion sickness, so she bought me these. I pointed to a small white bead on the wristband. That sits over your pressure point. Supposed to ease the nausea. Jess stared at me with big eyes, and as my cheeks heated, I mumbled, whatever, probably won't need them. Then I shoved them back into my book bag. Quinn, she said, drop it. I stared at the people in front of me, willing this line to hurry up or I'd throw myself overboard. Quinn. I sighed and slowly rolled my eyes to her. Yes. One thing. Just one? Please, for the love of God, do not wear those things. What are you, a senior citizen? I couldn't help it. I began to laugh. So did Jess as she wrapped her arm around my shoulders and pressed a kiss to my temple. I love you, I really do. You have such an old soul, but let's tap into the college senior in there somewhere and have a good time, all right? I wanted to. I really did. It was like I couldn't turn off, well, me. The Quinn who analyzed every situation and decision, weighing the pros and cons, and consequences. It was always about the consequences. We hadn't even gotten on the boat, and I was prepared to wear sea bands, a hat, and zinc on my nose. I should just get out my loafers and be done with it, join AARP and buy a Buick. Sometimes I wondered if that was why I couldn't make relationships last. I couldn't relax and enjoy life. Jess, who I'd known since elementary school, understood me and my neuroses and let me be me, even when I didn't want to be me. I let out a heavy breath. I think I need a drink. I gestured to the drunkies behind me with my thumb. I mean, maybe not uh, that much to drink, but enough to loosen up. Jess nodded. I think that will be our first mission. 
get into our cabin, then find the bar, and scope out the casino and the buffet. Mmm, buffet, I said, rubbing my stomach. And? Jess said, lowering her voice. Casey Arlington. Her eyes turned dreamy as she gazed ahead of us to the entrance of the ship. I shook my head. You're crazy. Casey was a cast member of Trip League, a jock with sandy blonde hair and green eyes and a brilliant white smile, and Jess had convinced herself she was half in love with him. She crossed her arms over her chest. He's hot. I pulled a face and waffled my hand. Don't you start. She pointed a finger at me. You just wait until we see him in person. I guarantee he's hotter in person than on TV. I sure hope so, I muttered. She ignored me. Trip League was a reality show in its third season. The cast was billed as regular people picked to travel to exotic locales while being filmed. The cruise ship was the season's big send-off, a party before the next cast would be chosen. We'd managed to score tickets to the cruise while huddled at our computers, fingers hovering over the keyboard so we could click as soon as they went on sale. There'd be cameras on the ship, too, and I thought it was kind of genius on the show producer's part, because the drama among the cast and spring breakers could be high. Me? Well, I wanted a glimpse of J.R. Butler. My crush on the guy was the rare secret I kept from Jess— mostly because I knew one of her favorite pastimes was hating on the guy. I didn't really blame her, honestly. He was kind of a jerk. He was also straight and had a girlfriend back home. Why I liked him was a mystery even to me. But I couldn't take my eyes off him when he was on TV. He had dark skin and deep, warm brown eyes. His hair shaved close to his head. He was built, too, with big, bulging muscles— on the ship, I planned to observe him from afar. There was no way I wanted to meet him and find out that he was really as much of an asshole in real life as he was on the show. Everything about my attraction to him, my fascination, felt private. Jess craned her neck to see why we were at a standstill. Who are you looking forward to seeing? I hope J.R. doesn't pull his usual bullshit and get in a fight, Jess said. I wanted to tell her that he had only started one fight, one, and now everywhere the cast went it seemed like people wanted a rise out of him, so they goaded him until he gave in and acted like the asshole they all knew he'd be. At least, that's what I thought. That's what I pretended to believe, because it was what I wanted to believe, that there was more to him than that. I shrugged. I don't know. Everyone, I guess. She didn't ask me to elaborate. When we boarded the ship, we were handed a pamphlet of information along with our room key. There was a map to the ship, and although I had seen the outside of it, having a map of Mia made her seem... larger. There were ballrooms and dining rooms, two casinos, an indoor pool, and passenger cabins. She was immense, and my stomach fluttered as we walked to our cabin. I was here on a cruise ship, with my best friend. We were going to party and eat lots of food and do all the things we hadn't done as we worked our asses off for four years just to get to this point. I was going to act like a real, live college student rather than the old man I'd been since birth, and I couldn't freaking wait. Our cabin was tiny which we had known about ahead of time, but it was still a lot different actually being there, bumping elbows and knocking heads, laughing as we tried to maneuver around each other and our luggage. Jess made me choose the top or bottom bunk, and I chose the bottom, which she turned into a joke, and then we were laughing all over again. She tumbled onto my bottom bunk bed. I think I'm drunk on cruise ship air she said, gasping to catch her breath as she sat up on my mattress. I plopped down beside her and brushed my bangs out of my eyes. Well, I'd prefer to get drunk the old-fashioned way. We held the map between us, looking for a place to eat before we explored the ship. I pointed to one of the many red circles on the map, 
What are those? Jess squinted at the map, then began to rifle through the bag we were given at boarding. She pulled out a slip of paper. Ah, here it is. That's what I thought. What's what you thought? That's where the live feed cameras are. I stared at her. What? She didn't look at me, her eyes on the paper she was holding. Yeah, the live feed cameras, remember? We had to sign a waiver when we bought the tickets. I rubbed my damp palms on my shorts and tried to count to ten in my head, which now felt like it was filled with cotton. I tried to swallow, but my mouth was dry. Excuse me? She looked up and frowned. What's wrong with you? I need some more information on these live cameras, as in, What are they? My voice ended on a shout, and Jess's head reared back. Did you not read the paperwork? Apparently not. My voice was a squeak. I always read the paperwork. Always. But when we signed up for this trip, I had an assignment due for one of my core classes, and I must have not read as well as I should have. I dropped my head between my knees. Jess rubbed my back. I swore you knew. I thought we talked about this. In addition to the crew, there are cameras rigged up around the ship, which will show a live feed that viewers can watch in real time at home. Oh, my God. I moaned. I knew there'd be cameras, but not live feed cameras. It'll be okay, she said, and she sounded like she was reassuring herself more than me. I knew coming onto this ship that I could be on TV, but I was sure I'd be able to mostly stay away from the cameras. I was Quinn Mathers, after all. I was an expert at not getting noticed, even when I actually wanted to. But with live cameras all over the ship? Oh, no. The thought of people at home watching me in real time felt so much worse, more intrusive. I'm sorry, just give me a minute. I tried to work on my cleansing breaths. Sure. Tell me a story or something. Jess paused. Remember in high school when we made my homecoming video? I smiled, despite my racing heartbeat. Jess had been nominated for homecoming court, and we'd made a video to get people to vote for her to be queen. Yeah. You played the part of a drowning guy in the ocean, and I had to save you. Except the undertow took you under, and I ended up saving you. She laughed. You were so dashing. She ruffled my hair. You'll be fine. Just another face in a crowd of spring breakers. As long as you don't hook up with Levi, you'll be okay. I lifted my head and shot her a look. No. He was the token gay cast member, and while he was nice and all, and objectively hot, he didn't do anything for me, which was good. Spring break flings would only lead to problems and complications. Bad consequences. See? She held up her hands. You have nothing to worry about. I took a deep breath, my heartbeat returning to normal, although I was still shaky. How about that drink? She checked her watch. It's, uh, not even lunchtime. I grabbed her wrist and hauled her up and toward the door. It's five o'clock somewhere. Chapter Two J.R. I knew when I signed up for Trip League that it was a real possibility I'd be on a boat at some point. But that still didn't prepare me for actually boarding this fucking thing. It didn't matter that it was over 100,000 gross registered tons. I read the brochures. I didn't give a shit. My body knew I wasn't on solid ground, and the ship hadn't even pulled away from the dock yet to sail around the Caribbean. This was going to be a long-ass trip. I shoved my hands in my pockets and pulled my shades over my eyes as I squinted at the sun overhead. Casey was beside me, pointing out hot chicks. And it said something about how miserable I was because I couldn't even get excited about all the barely-there bikinis in my near vicinity. The deck was already a party. The bass from the music thudded through my body, and the bartenders shouted out drink orders. We were up on stage near the pool, 
where we were supposed to look effortless and cool. I was pretty sure I looked queasy and bored. This is our chance, man. The sea air ruffled Casey's blonde hair as he flashed me his white grin. We finally get to live it up. Party like rock stars. Get laid like fucking kings. I tried to get excited about that and failed. He bumped me with his elbow. I shoved him back, a little harder than I meant to. He laughed it off, but his brow furrowed like he knew I was giving him the back-off sign. That was the one good thing about this fucking reputation I'd earned. No matter how ill-deserved. If I wanted to be left alone, my castmates left me alone. Selena Gutierrez walked over and stood beside me as she flung her long, dark hair over her shoulder. How you feeling? She was wearing a red bikini top and some sort of flowy shirt. There had been a lot of drama lately with her and Casey. They had a messed up, on-again, off-again relationship. So it was nice to see her happy. They were off again right now, which was for the best. Fine. I just don't like boats. She tilted her head. Really? But you got on that airboat in New Orleans and didn't say anything about it. That was because if I didn't go, they were going to make us all do something else, and I felt bad because you wouldn't stop talking about wanting to see the alligators. She stuck out her lower lip. Oh, so you went on the boat for me? I went on the boat so I wouldn't have to hear you yapping about the damn alligators anymore. She smiled, like she knew something I didn't. Yeah, whatever, J.R., you big sweetheart. I glared, and she laughed at me. Well, I'm going to enjoy this boat, too, and maybe we'll see dolphins. I'll cross my fingers for you, I mumbled as I wandered away from her and Casey. I wasn't in the mood for conversation, and I knew in a couple of minutes I was going to have to be on. Leaning against the pillar on the side of the stage, I scanned the crowd of spring breakers that I'd be spending the next seven days with. This was a party, and I really should let go and live it up, as Casey said, but the years of keeping my guard up had rendered me unable to fucking drop it. That wall I'd held in place for so long had been rusted over and covered with ivy. I wondered, when I was finally done with Trip League after this season, if I'd ever be able to be normal. I didn't even know what normal was. I'd never really lived as me. So the closer I got to this future that had been the carrot dangling in front of me for so long, well... I was starting to realize it was just a carrot. And I didn't like carrots. A head in the crowd caught my eye, a flash of golden red hair. I followed the kid as he made his way down the deck. Well, he wasn't a kid. Everyone on board was twenty-one or older, but after everything I'd been through with this show, these carefree college students felt like kids to me. This one, though. He was standing with a girl. Long blonde hair. Pretty. I would have been content to stare at her if he wasn't standing there, because I couldn't stop looking at him. Red hair. Just a shade on the blonde side. Big, round, blue eyes. He wore a tank top and had freckles that blotted the pale skin on his shoulders and down his toned arms. He laughed at something the girl said, and I found myself smiling at the sight of it. If I'd seen a picture of him, he might not have even stood out to me. But in person, I did notice. The way he shimmied his hips when the chorus of the song came on. The way he jerked his head to flip the hair out of his eyes. The way he seemed to have no idea that he was someone worth watching. Oh, he sipped his drink, something light, green, that looked like a margarita, and pushed his pink lips at something his friend, girlfriend, said. He was probably straight. And I was supposed to be. It said so right in my contract. I was about to look away, swear to God, when he took his finger and swiped at something on his margarita glass. He stuck his finger in his mouth, 
and I swallowed, my mouth suddenly dry. My body jolted with that undeniable heat of attraction, and what followed shortly on its heels was panic, pure panic. This couldn't be happening now, not when I was so close to the finish line. It hadn't been that difficult to keep my attraction to guys a secret as long as I did. I liked girls, too. And it wasn't often that I found a guy I was attracted to, so it was inconvenient as hell that this was happening now. How was I going to get through this cruise if some strange, probably straight guy was getting me hard? Fuck! But hey, it was a big ship. The odds were I wouldn't see him again. I clung to that hope with everything I had. I'd made it this far. I couldn't fail now, not when my family back home was depending on me. Something bumped my hip and I turned to the side. Levi Granger stood next to me, his gaze on the crowd. He tapped his finger to his lips. Well, I'm going to need to start making a list of all the hotties. I didn't answer. When I'd first met him, I'd wanted to hate him. He could be openly gay because he didn't have a shitty agent who'd advised him not to be. Levi was a nice guy, and I'd been a royal asshole to him at first. I'd tried to make up for it ever since. He didn't hold it against me, and now we were pretty good friends. He probably thought I was a reformed homophobe. If only he knew. What about you? he asked. See any potential conquests? Conquests? Who talked like that? Oh, right, Levi did. Uh, saw a redhead, actually. Oh, really? Nice. What was she wearing? I looked out over the crowd, but didn't see my guy anymore. I remembered, though. He wore a pair of gray shorts and a light blue tank top, black flip-flops. Uh, I wasn't paying much attention to her clothes. Levi laughed. She probably wasn't wearing much. Right. He squinted. I'm thinking maybe I'm in the mood for a football player. There have to be football players on this cruise, right? Football's in the fall? I smiled. Football's in the fall. I'll keep my eyes open for you. He fist-pumped the air. It's on! Gazing back at the rest of our cast members, there were six of us total. I sighed. Aren't we supposed to be doing something, or are we just standing up here? He shrugged. I think we're supposed to throw out beads later, and then there will be free Bahama Mamas for the whole ship. I raised my eyebrows. For real? They want everyone shit-faced right out of the gate, huh? Makes for good TV. I hummed under my breath. Sure. And then a bunch of drunk, testosterone-fueled assholes would start a fight with J.R. Butler because that was what always happened. Levi made his way over to the rest of the castmates, and I followed him. In addition to me, Casey, Selina, and Levi, there was also Paisley Chapman, a quiet girl who made me laugh, and Adriana Lee. I'd seen the show, and the editors had done exactly what they were told to do, stereotype us, keep us in our little boxes, and there we'd stay. I was the angry black kid. Casey was the hot jock who slept around. Selena was the sassy Latina. Paisley was the shy, virginal brunette. Levi was the effeminate twink, and Adriana was the smart Japanese girl. When I'd signed up at nineteen, the show had been on for only two seasons. I didn't think any of us were experienced enough to know what the show was about and how we'd be portrayed. By the time our season was filmed, I had just turned twenty-one. Now I was twenty-two and ready to end this whole fucking thing, which was good since our season was drawing to a close, so a whole new cast of suckers would be picked soon. I hoped I wouldn't be known forever as the guy the show portrayed me to be. All I'd ever wanted to do was be an actor. I'd thought this was my shot. Now I wondered if it was my demise. It was a pretty depressing thought at twenty-two. I was just a hell of a good time lately. I also wondered what the live-feed cameras would show. It seemed risky to me that they'd take this chance, but whatever, not my decision. 
Paisley was sitting on a chair in the corner of the stage. I pulled one in front of me and straddled it, setting my arms over the back and placing my chin on my wrists. What's up? She yawned. Is it dinner time yet? I laughed. Apparently everyone has to get drunk before dinner. She made a face. Are you bummed Andrea couldn't come? My imaginary girlfriend was so real to me at this point that I didn't even hesitate. I'm a little bombed, but it's okay. She's busy at her internship. I figured go big or go home, and the love of my life, Andrea, was studying to be a lawyer. She had a job as an intern at a law firm in New York. She was clearly too good for me, if she actually existed. Paisley nodded. Good for her. Maybe after this is over I can meet her? I looked into her hazel eyes and wished I didn't have to lie to her. Sure. Sorry, she's just really private. I get it. Paisley wasn't really shy. She just didn't talk unless she felt like she had something important to say. It was why I liked her so much. You remembered to bring the Xbox, right? She eyed me. Duh, of course. We often played Assassin's Creed on our downtime, and she kicked my ass. She said she liked that I didn't get upset that I was beaten by a girl. I told her, hell no. She was the best gamer I knew. It was an honor to play with her. I was one of the few people who knew she used to dress up in sexy clothes and videotape herself playing video games, then upload them online. She made a lot of money doing that under an alias. Shy, virginal brunette, my ass. My lips were sealed on that secret. I wished I could tell her mine, but at this point, I didn't even know how to come clean. Doug Collins, our producer, walked over to us. We're a couple minutes away from departure, and then we're going to get the party started. He winked. Have fun. This was our last hurrah, our send-off after spending a year as the crew of Trip League, and then my life could finally start. I smiled weakly at Paisley, and she smiled back. I could get through this, as long as I didn't see that redhead again. Quinn After grabbing margaritas from the bar on the deck, we walked around, waiting for the time the boat was to depart from the harbor. Jess had her phone up to her ear, listening as Colin told her where he and Riley stood below so they could wave as Mia headed out. It seemed like every passenger was out on the deck now, huddling in groups, dancing to the top forty music blasting from the speakers, and waving to the crowd below. I saw one girl heave over the side of the boat. We hadn't even left yet, so I assumed it was from a hangover and not motion sickness. Your sea bands won't help her, Jess muttered. I smiled and took a sip of my margarita. Okay, more like a gulp. I licked the salt from my lips, then ran my finger down the condensation on my glass, catching another grain of salt. As I stuck my finger in my mouth, a weird sensation pricked the back of my neck, like someone was watching me. I looked around quickly, but there were so many people surrounding us, heads swiveling. I figured I was jumpy from the adrenaline and the margarita, so I shrugged and took another sip. Uh gulp. I saw some movement on a stage by the other side of the boat, but Jess was tugging on my arm, urging me to follow her in the opposite direction, so I lost sight of the commotion. We squeezed along the railing between a safety boat and a group of girls wearing sorority letters. Jess stuck her hand over the railing and waved. I peeked from over her shoulder and spotted Colin and Riley below, Riley waved both hands in the air while Colin stuck his fingers in his mouth and whistled. Jess blew a kiss. A loud horn sounded and a voice over the loudspeaker announced we were leaving the harbor. I barely even realized that the ship was moving, but Colin and Riley were starting to slip off to the side until they were no longer visible. And we were on our way. Mia would take us around the islands of the Caribbean, We'd be on the ship for eight days, eight days of doing nothing but eating, drinking, and wasting time. 
Once the people on the dock looked like ants, I swore I could hear the metaphorical snapping of cut leashes as the students on the boat realized they were home free. No school, no parents, just a cruise ship filled with flesh and alcohol. I'd heard of massive frat parties and mansions at some of the biggest universities, but I doubted they held a candle to what I was in the midst of as the shouts went up and the bass of the music shook the deck beneath us. This trip almost didn't happen. I'd been with Alexander for two years, one of which I hadn't even realized I was his gay secret that he never planned on telling anyone about. We'd decided on spending this spring break together until I finally formed a backbone and broke up with him. It still stung to think about all those times he'd never held my hand in public, never acknowledged in any way that we were together, that we were supposed to be in love, and that he expected me to go along with it, like I didn't have my own opinions or desires. Whatever. I was here, and I was drinking, and Alexander could go fuck himself. I refused to hide who I was or who I loved from anyone ever again. The crowd seemed to be surging toward the stage, so Jess and I made our way there. Her eyes were bright, and I wasn't sure I'd ever seen her smile so big. My cheeks hurt, and I realized I hadn't stopped grinning since we got on the deck. Maybe it was the margarita. I was content to let her lead me around. I had a huge decision regarding my future to make after this week. She could make the decisions now. Jess pointed to the front of the ship. We totally need to reenact that Titanic scene. You can stand behind me and we'll pretend to fly. Why can't I be Kate Winslet? Jess pursed her lips. Fine. I'll be Jack. Draw me like one of your French girls. I murmured with a bad accent. She smacked me and laughed. There was a shout from the stage, and then something went zinging past my head. I ducked and covered myself with my arms. What the hell was that? Are we under attack? Jess doubled over at the waist, laughing, then pointed to a girl beside us who was waving something in her hand. Yeah, we're under attack by beaded necklaces, you goober. Stand up! You're making a scene! I stared at another girl in front of me, standing on a guy's shoulders, waving her arms. I saw her hands drift to the hem of her tank top. I'm making a scene? Jess wasn't paying attention to me anymore. Her gaze was narrowed in on the stage, and when I looked too, I knew who she was looking at. Casey. But I wasn't looking at him. I was looking at J.R. Butler. He stood off to the side, wearing a pair of board shorts, unlaced black high-top Converse sneakers, and a white T-shirt. His biceps flexed as he hurled necklaces into the crowd. Next to him were Paisley and Levi, his friends on the show. He leaned over and whispered something in Paisley's ear. She laughed once, and he grinned back. He was so fucking hot, he took my breath away. I couldn't move or cheer or hold out my arms to catch necklaces as they went whizzing by. I'd watched J.R. for a whole season, and while I wouldn't call it an obsession, I was a huge fan. He was here, now, in the flesh. It was creepy to me that I knew about him, about his life, about his girlfriend, Andrea, and his sick younger brother. And he didn't know a single thing about me. He didn't even know I existed. The thought was sobering and comforting, all at the same time. I didn't move from my spot on the deck as the cast members finished throwing necklaces as they waved goodbye to the crowd, and as a woman over the loudspeaker told us there were barrels of free Bahama Mamas. I swallowed as I caught sight of J.R.'s back as he headed below deck. Minutes later, Jess pressed a drink into my hand. We knocked our plastic cups together. To finally acting like college students, she toasted. To the trip of our lives, I said. And then we drank. Chapter 3 Quinn
Much to Jess's disappointment, I wasn't drunk yet, because I'd promised my parents I'd call them once the boat departed. I stood at a quiet area on the lower deck, which was hard to find, and dialed my parents as Jess stood nearby, still sipping a Bahama Mama, her cheeks flushed from the alcohol. I wanted that to be me. Being sober on spring break was dumb. Hello? My dad answered on the phone. Hey, it's me. Quinn? We've been waiting for your call. Hold on, let me get your mother. There was some muffled talking, then another receiver picked up. Hello, Quinn. Hey, Mom. You made it on the ship okay? Yep. There was a silence. That meant they wanted me to keep talking. It's nice. Our cabin is small, but it's clean and everything. Are your sea bands helping your motion sickness? Cheryl said they wore them on their cruise and they felt peachy. I looked at my naked wrists. Yeah, they're great. I felt a pang of guilt for lying. Was that an only child thing, guilt? Great. I'm glad to hear that, Mom said. I fidgeted, unsure of what to do or say. Was I the only fucking kid on this ship who checked in with his parents on spring break? This was normal for me, but now that I stood here doing it, I wasn't so sure I wanted it to be normal. So, um, I should probably get going. Tell Jess we said hi, Dad said. I found a couple of things about the ship that I can email to you. I called the cruise line and asked about their emergency services. They have a staff in the event of injury. I closed my eyes and focused on my breathing. That's great. Jess sliced her thumb across her throat, giving me the end it sign. I waved at her and mouthed, I know. All right, well, we love you, Quinn, Dad said. Be safe. Love you, too. I ended the call and didn't bother asking Jess if she needed to call her parents. They weren't as hands-on as mine. Or maybe stifling was the right word. I ran my hands through my hair and pretended they weren't shaking. I was surprised I wasn't getting motion sickness as the ship glided through the water. Maybe it was the sea air or the steady hum underneath my feet. Either way, I felt fine, save for the queasy feeling from the phone call. Jess handed me the rest of her drink and I gulped it down. I might have to take a nap later, but I was determined to get my buzz back, damn it. How are your parents? she asked. Begging you to come home? Telling you not to give in to the temptation of debauchery? I snorted. Dad is apparently emailing me information about the ship's emergency services. Like a nurse? I guess. Emergency personnel. Only your dad can take the fun out of spring break. I laughed, but damn, it was sad. God, Jess, I know they mean well, but sometimes I wonder if growing up in that house has doomed me to a lifetime of worrying. It's like I always think I have to prepare for everything that could go wrong, everything that could affect my future, every fucking thing, until I look back and realize I missed a whole lot of shit. She bit her lip and then sidled closer, throwing her hand over my shoulder. Oh, Quinn, and I can't blame them any more, can I? I'm 21, and if I don't want to be like this, I don't have to, right? Her eyes were wide as she studied my face. Right! I know she wanted me to say more, but instead she ran her hand up and down my arm. I folded my arms on the railing and laid my chin on my hands. Too bad I had no idea how to be anything but a freak show. My parents' commandments ran over and over in my head on a daily basis. Don't get a tattoo because it'll fade and you'll look awful when you're older. Don't go to this party tonight because you'll regret it when you can't pay attention in class tomorrow to take notes. Don't enjoy anything fun now because you'll regret it later. Except it was later, and all I regretted was everything I hadn't done. I closed my eyes briefly, blocking out my parents' voices. The one voice that was surging to break through was my own. It was so faint sometimes that I couldn't hear it. 
but this one was telling me to make the most out of my trip. I opened my eyes and rolled my head to the side. What do you want out of this week? She turned to me and was silent for a moment. I want to live in the moment. Her words were like a punch. I want that too. But all I've done my whole life is live for the future. How do I even live for the moment, Jess? She pressed a kiss to my temple. I don't know the answer to that either. But we'll figure it out together. Can we start doing that by drinking more? She laughed. How about we get on that Titanic reenactment right now? My face must have shown how much that excited me because she gripped my hand and led me toward the prow of the boat. We had to weave our way through already drunk people and past pools with splashing bodies. Finally, we reached the front of the ship, and to my amazement, we weren't the only ones who had decided to take on the role of Jack and Rose. A guy was clearly humoring his girlfriend. He looked incredibly uncomfortable as the girl stood with her feet on the bottom rung, arms out. When he saw us waiting, relief washed over his face as he urged his girl to get down. She shot us a look of irritation, but Jess marched right past her. She stopped and motioned to the railing. Get on up there, Rose. I pretended to fix my hat and pursed my lips as I walked past her with a limp wrist. Jess laughed. Rose wasn't an effeminate gay man, you weirdo. Oh, Jack. I batted my eyelashes at her, then stepped up onto the first rung. Make me fly. And then you'll repay me by not allowing me on that piece of wood so I freeze to death. Bitch. She placed her feet outside of mine, then huffed. This is dumb. Of course it's dumb, I said. We're reenacting a corny scene from an equally corny movie. No, it's dumb because all I see is your back. Jess, be creative for God's sake. Step up onto the next one. She grumbled and did that, her hand a little unsteady on my shoulder as I held my arms out. Her breath blew over my ear as she leaned over my back. Okay, Rose. Happy now? You're really ruining the moment, Jack, I muttered. That made her giggle. I laughed, too. And then we were both in hysterics. Jess collapsed over my back as we watched the cruise ship plow through the water. The sun was shining, and the salty air whipped my hair and Jess's around us. I slipped my fingers through Jess's when we finally collected ourselves. Thanks, Jess. She was silent for a moment, then rested her chin on my shoulder. Back at you, baby. By the time we made it off the deck of the ship to explore the levels, we were... drunk. Good and drunk. But that nice, happy stage of drunk, before tears set in or the room started to spin. We traipsed through the ship, peering into the casinos and the dance halls, scoping out the multiple bars. Jess found a set of stairs leading from one level of cabins to another and lay on them, reaching for me as if the boat were flooding. The other passengers didn't seem amused as she yelled, Save yourself, Quinn! I always thought that was one of the best parts of Jess. She was a great friend, of course, but I loved that she didn't put stock into what other people thought. She would be herself and damn what everyone else thought. Maybe that was what had drawn me to her in the first place. Opposites attract and all that. When evening rolled around and we perched ourselves on the bar, the room was spinning, and a little blurry, and also a little bright and loud. Part of me just wanted to go back to my cabin and lay down and sleep off the rum and cokes and Bahama Mamas. I had achieved the elusive all-day buzz. Maintaining a buzz all day was hard work. I had to drink just the right amount at the right time. I couldn't lose it or I wouldn't get it back that day, and I couldn't drink too much, or I'd be sloppy drunk. Today, I had achieved the all-day perfect buzz. It was incredible.
and I honestly thought I should get a medal or something for it. I'd treated myself to an extra cookie at the buffet. Tomorrow, Jess and I planned to do more eating, more walking around the ship, more napping, and maybe some more swimming in the pool on deck. And maybe a game of craps or two. I was fucking awesome at craps. Jess had left to go to the bathroom, and as soon as she came back, I was going to suggest heading to the cabin until my gaze landed on the corner of the bar where J.R. Butler stood casually. Like he was right out of a fucking magazine. The entire cast was there, plus a cameraman. Wow! How had I missed that? J.R. was drinking a glass of something clear and ice. I imagined it was something really manly, like straight vodka. He crunched the ice with his molars and nodded as Casey regaled some story to him that required lots of arm movements. What are you looking at? Jess said, as she slid into the bar stool beside me. Time to lie, so she didn't know about my crush on J.R. Um, uh, your man showed up. Her head swiveled like a meerkat's. What, where? I gestured to the corner. Over there. She gripped my arm, nails digging into my skin, but I didn't even feel the pain. Rum was amazing. Oh, my God, look at him. Look at him. Yeah, I did. His hair is perfect, and those eyes are like the fucking ocean. Poetic. And his ass looks stellar in those pants. Why does he have to be standing next to J.R. the douche? I took another sip of my drink and decided to enjoy the fucking moment by ogling J.R. I risked another glance at the guys in the corner. I could do that now. Just look. Everyone else was looking, too, so I was just another kid in the crowd, and Jess would assume I was looking at Casey. I wasn't. J.R. wore a pair of dark jeans, those same Converse sneakers, and a black tank top. I could see the vein running down his hard biceps, and it made my mouth water. I itched to touch it, feel the blood pumping beneath his skin. His large hands gripped the glass as he held it up to his full lips and took a sip. His mouth stretched into a small grimace at something Casey said, and then he looked up. Our gazes met. In the dim light of the bar, his eyes looked almost black, unreadable. I couldn't look away, not from his handsome face, those high cheekbones, those deep-set eyes under a heavy brow. He was beautiful. Someone walked between us, and when I caught sight of him again, he was walking away with Casey. I swallowed and looked down at where my hands rested on my thighs. They were shaking. Jess was talking, and I tuned in. What do you think I should say to him? Shit, I should have practiced in the mirror. She took my shoulder and turned me so we faced each other. Pretend to be Casey. Uh, come on. Me Casey. She rolled her eyes. Stop being dumb. Me, Casey, lift a lot. Jess giggled. Want to lift me? Back to your bed? I puffed out my arms. You woman, me man, let's do the sex. She laughed harder and flung her arms out to the side to hug me. But then I heard a smack and a gasp. Jess whirled her head around, blonde hair flying, to see Casey standing beside her, his drink now spilled down the front of his shirt. I am so, so sorry, Jess said, hopping off her stool as I grabbed frantically at a stack of napkins on the bar top. I didn't see you. With his hands held out to the sides, Casey looked down at his shirt, which was now dripping. Then he looked up, and his face was thunder. No shit you didn't see me. He wiped at his shirt in disgust and snarled at her. What the fuck? I froze at the venom in his tone. And so did Jess. This had to be a bad dream, right? We were drunk, and that wasn't really Casey being a jerk. It was just some pissed-off bro. I blinked, clutching the napkins to my chest. But no, it was Casey. He still stood there, wet and angry, blue eyes narrowed on Jess. 
fucking ship full of drunk assholes. My best friend knew how to take care of herself, how to defend herself. If this were any other guy, she would have narrowed those blue eyes at him and told him where to go. But this was Casey Arlington, and Jess was frozen in place, her face drained of color. There wasn't a camera around, but in that moment, I couldn't have given a shit if the whole fucking crew was there, because no one made Jess look like that or made her feel like that. I jumped off the stool, stepped up to him, and threw the balled-up napkins in his face. Don't talk to her like that. It was an accident. You're the drunk asshole, not her. I straightened my spine in response to his glower. Go change your clothes and grow up. Jess turned her wide eyes on me, and I swallowed, because I didn't think I'd ever talked to a human being like that. Was this what living in the moment felt like? Casey's face was red now, his fists balled at his sides, and I wasn't sure if I should duck or brace myself for a punch. Then a hand curled around Casey's bicep. It was Selena, his on-again, off-again cast-member girlfriend. She tugged on his arm, saying words I couldn't hear. Casey shot me one more look, and just when I thought the situation was diffused, he shot out a hand and shoved me. I fell completely, gracelessly, on my ass, with my hands braced behind me, right in the puddle of Jess's spilled drink. When I looked up, I saw the back of Casey as Selena led him away. I sat up and looked at my hands, my vision still a little blurry. Perfect buzz was gone now for sure. Damn rum, making me have courage. Why couldn't I have just led Jess away from the situation? Why did I have to think I was a hero? I wiped my palms as a hand wrapped around my wrist. I looked up and opened my mouth to tell Jess I was sorry, but instead of her blue eyes, I was met with a dark brown gaze, surrounded by the longest lashes I'd ever seen. My mouth dropped open as J.R. pulled me to my feet. For a second our faces were inches away. I was breathing his air, smelling his skin, all while our hands were still clasped together. The heat of his body seared into mine. A million things whirled through my brain that I could say, one of which would be simple. Hey. But before I could get anything out, a cameraman approached from our side. I could see the light like a beacon on us. J.R. yanked his hand out of mine with a small sneer to his lips. He took a step back, looked me up and down, as if he was sizing me up, then said, Watch your back, kid. Then he headed off after Casey kid. He'd called me kid. I knew his age, and he was the same age as me, and he called me kid. He was even more beautiful in person, and even more of an asshole. I wanted to cry. I said a voice beside me, and I turned to see Jess watching J.R.'s back as he disappeared into the crowd. I can't believe that just happened. I swallowed and nodded. I mean, I expected that from J.R., right? I balled my fists at my sides. But I didn't expect that from Casey. What an asshole! Total asshole. I croaked. My tongue was thick in my mouth, my head a useless hunk on my shoulders. I wanted to curl up in bed. And J.R. threatened you. Threatened! I think we should tell security. Did your dad say anything about security? I shook my head. No. It'll be fine. I couldn't even tell Jess that I was less upset about what he said than the fact that it was exactly what I'd expected from him. She'd say, I told you so, and laugh, and normally I wouldn't care. But I knew this time it'd make me angry. I didn't want to be angry at Jess, so I kept quiet while she raged beside me. She went from despondent to angry, to flippant. Screw Casey, she said, as we walked arm in arm through the ship to our cabin minutes later. I refuse to let this ruin our trip. 
No way, I said. Even though I didn't really feel it, this won't ruin our trip. Right. She bobbed her head, mind made up. Casey was now a memory for Jess, a thing of the past. But I couldn't stop feeling J.R.'s gaze boring into mine. J.R. They couldn't even give us our own cabins. The only saving grace was that they'd put me with Levi, because if I had to face Casey right now, I might punch him. That kid, that damn redhead. There were three fucking bars on the goddamn ship, and he had to be in the one I was in. He had to be with a friend who'd pissed off Casey, and he'd had to be the hero to defend her. Of course. Of fucking course. I didn't know his name, but now I knew he had blue eyes. I knew he had blonde lashes. I knew he had a mole on his right cheekbone, along with a sea of freckles. I knew he smelled like soap and fresh air. I knew he made me hard. One thing I didn't know was why I said what I did. Maybe it was the approaching camera which caused me to go into J.R. Butler mode like a light switch. Or maybe I was so damn frustrated that my instinct was to help him off the floor that I'd taken it out on him. Either way, I knew I was going to be haunted by that devastated look in his eyes after I'd told him to watch his back. I'd meant for him to watch his back around Casey. But now that I looked back, it probably hadn't seemed that way to him at all. I didn't have a whole lot of experience with men, but I was going to guess he was probably gay. Or bi. No straight guy gazed up at me like he did, with a little bit of hero worship and no straight guy would have been that devastated when his hero proved to be anything but. I flipped the latch on our cabin door and flung it open. I winced as it slammed against the wall. Levi was inside rummaging through his suitcase and jerked his head up to stare at me. His gaze shifted to the still-shaking door, then back to me. Uh, Hulk much? I stepped inside and gently closed the door behind me. Sorry. It's okay, but I'm pretty sure they'd prefer we not break the cabin door or sink the ship, you know. I'm not gonna sink the ship. Levi sank down into a chair in the corner and towed off his shoes. He was quiet for a minute, and I watched the top of his head. When the cameras weren't around, Levi was less... just less like a toned-down version of the Levi he was in front of the cameras. So what's got you all pissed off? he asked. I flopped down on my back onto my bed and placed my arm over my eyes. Casey was a dick. To you? No. To some girl who accidentally spilled a drink on him, and then of course the cameras caught me instead of him, so I'm the one who'll look like the asshole. I picked at a wet spot on my shirt. How I looked in front of the camera wasn't what really had me the most upset. But I couldn't tell Levi the whole truth. Upsetting that kid was what had me sick to my stomach. I played into it, though. Of course. I rolled my head to the side to see Levi chewing on his lip. He had great lips. Not that I'd ever tell him that, because... Awkward. Not much longer, he said. It's almost over. Yeah, I know that, but... I bit my tongue. But maybe it was the drink I had earlier, or the melancholy feeling that had been hanging over me, because that didn't stop me from continuing to talk. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I wanted to be an actor, but I'm so tired of cameras and the whole scene. The bed dipped, and I looked up to see Levi sit down near my feet a respectable distance away, taking care not to touch me. I hated that, because he could if he wanted to. He could lay a hand on my knee as a friend, and I wouldn't freak out that he was hitting on me. But I'd lied for so long that it was easier to keep doing it. What do you want to do? I asked. I'm done talking about myself. Levi dug his toe into the carpet. 
Well, my sister is supposed to return from her deployment soon. I nodded. His sister was in the army. And? He continued. We talked about going into business together. But first, we want to hike the Appalachian Trail. I smiled. Really? What, you think I can't camp? I know you can camp. But I also know you like to look pretty. He scowled at me. I'm naturally pretty. I laughed and shoved at his hip with my foot. He squawked and flailed his arms to stay on the bed. He pounded a fist on my shin, and I made a show of clutching it and groaning. You're dumb, he huffed, standing up. You're dumb, I shot back. He hauled himself up to his bed above me. Turn off the lights then, will you? I turned off the light, stripped out of my clothes, and crawled back into bed. I stared at the wall beside me, trying not to think about the fact that I was on a boat and not solid ground. Then Levi's voice came from above, quietly. It'll all work out, J.R. You'll figure it out. It was nice for someone else to have faith in me, since I didn't have any in myself. Thanks, man. I hope so. I lay awake for a while as Levi's breaths evened out, thinking about how I wasn't so sure I had anything figured out anymore. In high school I'd audition for just about every play I could, but no one wanted a black Danny Zuko. Or Romeo. So lead parts that would have challenged me were hard to come by. There hadn't been any theaters near me with programs for teens, so I didn't have many options. When I moved to Los Angeles at eighteen on a prayer, I thought it would be the start of things for me, my chance to act, to be challenged, and my chance to finally deal with the fact that I was attracted to guys and girls, a knowledge I'd suppressed since I'd figured it out in middle school. That had all been fun and great and totally freeing for once in my life, until I found an agent. I should have known he was shit representing a broke kid like me without a credit to my name. He'd found me the Trip League audition. It was a last-minute one because a cast member had dropped out. They needed someone not white, but straight. I was not white. And hell, I could play straight. Right? Sure. So I'd signed my sentence. Andrea was my agent's idea, my plan to prevent anyone from asking questions. At the time, I thought this was my only shot, my only way to get noticed, my only way to make some money to help out my family. My agent had told me coming out would affect my chance on Trip League. He said all I had to do was play straight for the show, and it would all work out in the end. I wasn't so sure of that anymore. The further I denied who I was, the further I fell into the role of J. R. Butler. And the more I felt like J. Ryan Butler was a stranger. Chapter 4 Quinn After the night I had, I should have crashed until noon. That's what normal people did on spring break. But I was up at 6 a.m. because I couldn't sleep. Jess was still out, her hair spread across the pillow, small snores escaping from her lips. I tried to read for a little, but I was restless in my narrow bed, so I crept out of the cabin to walk around the deck. Maybe some fresh air would help. I grabbed my sea bands and shoved them in the pocket of my shorts, just in case. Jess would never know. I didn't see another living soul on the deck besides me, which wasn't a surprise, because it was the ass-crack of dawn and I'd seen nothing but dozens of drunk people last night after we'd left the bar. The ship was huge, like several football fields huge. I'd read the brochure and it said the ship was about a thousand feet long. That was a big fucking boat. Screw you, Jaws. I ran my hand along the blue metal railing while watching the churning water below. The sun was rising above the sea, a large red orb on the horizon. 
I dropped my chin to the railing and stared at the white foam below. They said we might see some dolphins. I was hoping for a giant squid. But that was obviously wishful thinking. I passed a tennis court and a pool with a cabana bar, which was closed at this early hour. A couple of crew members were out and about cleaning and what not. Thinking I should head back before Jess woke up, I took one last gaze around the ship. As I turned, movement caught the corner of my eye. It wasn't a crew member in a white starched uniform. This guy was in a pair of khaki shorts and a black tank top. As I stared, he bent over the railing, his hand on his head. I knew I should just mind my own business, go back to Jess, but as I began to walk over to the guy, I realized with a jolt it was J.R., and he looked sick as hell. His dark skin had a pale cast to it, and he rubbed his stomach with one hand. As I approached, he turned watery eyes toward me. His lips moved, and I hoped he didn't recognize me from the night before. Those hopes were dashed when he said quietly, It's you again, huh? If he was trying to sound threatening, it didn't work, not when he looked like he was seconds away from hurling over the side of the boat. Too much to drink last night? He shook his head. I had one drink. It's this fucking boat. I fortunately had been spared motion sickness so far on this trip. Maybe it was the size of the boat. I wasn't sure. But clearly, J.R. hadn't been so lucky. I stuck my hand in my pocket and curled my fingers around the sea bands. I took a deep breath, wondering if he'd stare at me, horrified, like Jess had. But what was the worst that could happen? Like always, I ran through the consequences in my head. His comfort won out over my anxiety. I pulled the wristbands out of my pocket and held them toward him in my open palm. Want to try these? They're supposed to help, um, motion sickness. He stared at my hand like it was a snake. What are those things? I stepped closer and opened a package, then took one out and slipped it over my hand to demonstrate. They're called C-bands. This bead sits over your pressure point and is supposed to make you feel better. Not be so affected and feel so, um, sick. I left out the fact that my mom bought them. He had called me kid, after all. We were close again. So close. I could smell that he'd showered recently, the soap mixing with the sea air. The breeze coming off the ocean ruffled his shirt, and I caught a glimpse of nipple under his loose tank top. I stood, frozen, as he turned fully to face me, still leaning slightly on the railing. He bent his head and gripped my wrist turning it this way and that as he inspected the band. The warmth of his fingers seared my hand, sending flares of heat up through my arm. I didn't think he was breathing either, so I focused on that before I passed out. I was in front of a guy who had fascinated me for a year. He was touching me and talking to me as if he wasn't a celebrity, as if we were peers. My knees threatened to buckle, and I remembered to lock them. Finally he looked up at me, his brown gaze boring into me the same way it had the night before. These actually work? They're supposed to. I haven't felt sick yet, so I don't know for sure. I slid it off my wrist and handed it to him with the package. Here, maybe you can even keep some breakfast down. I smiled at that. He blinked at me once, and his gaze dipped to my lips and back up, so quickly I thought I'd missed it. Heat raced through my chest, up my neck, and over my face. I knew I was blushing like crazy. Stupid fucking pale skin. But he'd looked at my lips. And he wasn't moving away, even as he slid on the wristbands. He stayed close, his bare feet on either side of my sandaled ones. He had nice feet, well-formed toes with a high arch. Damn it, Quinn, stop looking at his feet. Hello? I jerked up to see him staring at me. 
a slight curve to his lips. He had the wristbands on now. Sorry, what? I said, what's your name? I glanced around, wondering if there were cameras. He must have known because he shook his head. There aren't any live feed cameras here, and the crew isn't up for another hour. I chewed my lip. Oh, well then, my name is Quinn. I'm J.R. Yeah, I kind of know that. He laughed. Yeah, I guess you do. Then his smile faded. Color was starting to return to his face. Why are you being nice to me? What? His eyes narrowed a little now. I said, Why are you being nice to me? After what happened last night. I shrugged. You were a jerk to me, but that doesn't mean I want you to feel like shit the whole trip. So the entire night and this morning were enough punishment? Guess so. These aren't actually filled with poison that is slowly being absorbed into my bloodstream. I gasped and clutched my chest. How did you know? I swore I made the formula undetectable. I liked the way his throat moved as he threw his head back to laugh at my words, and I liked how his eyes glowed in the early morning light. I couldn't reconcile this man from the one who sneered at me the night before. Why are you being so nice to me? I asked. He frowned. What do you mean? I leaned on the railing next to him. Last night, you... He shook his head. Last night was... a mistake. Threatening me had been a mistake. He glanced at me sharply. I wasn't threatening you. I was warning you about Casey. I could keep up with just about any lecture on macroeconomics or web development, but give me a conversation where I had to pick apart the intricacies of various words and social interaction, and I was a little lost. Warning me? The muscle in his jaw jumped. Look, Casey is... He left the sentence unfinished, then turned his head to stare out at the ocean. I kept my gaze on him. Casey is what? He finally turned to look at me, his shoulders slumped. We've been like rats in a cage for a year, with only one another for company. And this is all a little bit of a shock to us. Casey's my friend, and this isn't about him. It's about... He let out a long breath. We're not who we've been edited to be for an entire season, okay? There are things the cameras don't show. I didn't know how to answer that. Of course, logically, I knew reality shows were edited. I knew producers decided what we'd see and what we wouldn't, and I knew scenes could be framed to show the cast members a certain way. But I hadn't thought about how it affected them. On TV, they were just little two-dimensional pixels running around, here, in the flesh. I saw what a toll this was taking on J.R., and you? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. He didn't react, and I wondered if my words were whipped away by the sea breeze, and then he began to shake his head back and forth, all the while staring at the floor, his fists clenching and unclenching. Finally he lifted his head and glanced at his wrists. I gotta go, Quinn. Right. Of course. I was some kid on a cruise ship. He was a celebrity TV star. What, did I think he'd spill his guts to me? I ducked my head to hide the heat creeping over my cheeks. Oh, yeah, sure. He rotated his wrists and gave me a small smile. Thanks for these. I actually feel better already. He went to take them off and I held my hands out. No, please, keep them. He quirked an eyebrow. You sure? I'm sure. He dropped his hands to his sides, then shoved them in the pockets of his shorts. Um, okay. Thanks a lot. I nodded. He took a step away, then stopped, turning slightly at the waist. And Quinn? I tamped down the surge of hope. Yeah? I'll watch your back for you. And then he was off, strolling across the deck, head bent, 
the wind whipping his shirt across his back. I shot out a hand and gripped the railing, then bit my tongue before I did something stupid like call his name and then run leaping into his arms like this was some romantic comedy. This was real life. I was just a kid on spring break, and he was J. R. Butler. Before boarding, I wasn't sure I'd even see him, let alone talk to him. A private conversation like that was more than I could have hoped for. I rubbed my naked wrists and ran a finger over the places J.R. had held my hand. That was creepy. Jess would tell me that was creepy. I shoved my hand in my pockets and made my way back to the cabin. J.R. I sat at breakfast, stuffing a waffle in my face. I was going to have to visit the gym later because Crew's buffet food was going to wreak havoc on my diet. I looked up at Casey. Hey, where's the gym? Mid-sip of his orange juice, he grunted out, first level. I nodded and continued to eat. Casey was like a Jim K-9. Swear to God, the kid could sniff out a set of barbells in a cornfield. Levi popped a mini muffin in his mouth. Ugh, I need cardio time. I did yoga this morning. Paisley stirred her oatmeal. There was a class at seven. Is there a basketball court? I asked. Beside the gym, Casey answered, mouth full of omelet. Good deal, I answered. Are you guys seriously going to spend all your time on this cruise shut in the gym? Selena said. Casey leaned back and patted his abs. Please don't come free, baby. I flexed my bicep. The gun show even comes along on the cruise. She rolled her eyes and stood up. You guys are so dumb. I'm going to get a bowl of cereal. Stick with something high in fiber if you plan to snub the gym. Casey called after her. She shot him the finger and I laughed. Good for her. Adriana walked over and set a plate of pancakes and bacon down on the table beside me. Hey. Hey, I said, gulping down my orange juice. I sniffed her coffee. What did you put in it this morning? Cinnamon and honey. I loved the smell of coffee, but never warmed up to the taste. Coffee was Adriana's first love, I was pretty sure, and she changed up her flavorings every day. When we were on location in Brazil, I'd found this rare set of beans and given it to her for her birthday. I thought I was her favorite just because of that. Smells good. Got any plans for the day? Bunch of us were going to hit the gym. She wore her hair in a short bob, the black ends barely brushing her cheek as she shook her head. Nah, I really want to sit on the deck and scope out our shipmates. Oh, yeah? I think the percentage of guys wearing shirts at any given time on this boat is like 35%. It's my personal heaven. Adriana hooked up more than anyone on the show, and I wasn't sure how she did it, but she managed to keep it all off camera. I was a little bit in awe of her, and I would have asked her tricks, but then I'd have to reveal why I was asking, and I wasn't going there. So I stayed loyal to the imaginary Andrea, which meant that except for a few very discreet hookups, I was a freaking choir boy for the last year. Quinn's face from that morning flashed through my mind. Red hair whipping around his head in the breeze. Crooked grin aimed at me. Fuck. I leaned back in my chair and stretched, moving my neck from side to side. Think I'm gonna knock out that workout, then maybe check out the casino. She wrinkled her nose. Probably too many guys wearing shirts there. No thanks. I jabbed her softly with my elbow. You have fun on the deck. Don't get too blinded by all the flesh. She smiled at me and crunched a bite of bacon. I clapped Levi on the shoulder. Want to go to the gym? He gave me a suffering look. I lifted my hands up and surrender. Hey, you're the one who wants cardio. He sighed and stared despondently at his plate, which was empty except for a rather large puddle of maple syrup. Shit. I really should work out. I can't look bad in front of the cameras on a damn cruise. Nah, can't have that. He stood up, 
scowling. Fine, let's go, but don't get all beefy and flexy around me. Makes me look bad. I poked him in the chest. Hey, you're looking a little more buffed up than you used to. He swatted my hand away and tried to sound stern, but I heard the laughter in his voice. Don't patronize me. Let's go get you on the treadmill, buddy. Don't call me buddy. As Levi walked back to the room, I found a quiet corner on the first floor of the deck to call my family. A camera hovered nearby, which I fucking hated. They loved capturing the sob story of J.R. Butler's sick younger brother. But I gritted my teeth and called home. Darren answered the phone. Bro! His voice wasn't tight with pain, which eased the cramping in my gut. Hey, D, how are you? Pretty good, actually. As much as I hated it, Darren's battle with sickle cell anemia, a blood disorder that left him in pain and on constant medication, was public knowledge. He'd once been an up-and-coming basketball player and then was forced on the sidelines after his diagnosis. I clenched my fists and ignored the camera zooming in on my face. That's great. His last crisis, when his body was racked with pain, was about two months ago. My parents were both teachers, and while they could pay the bills with some money left over, they couldn't raise the funds needed for a stem cell transplant. Which is what Darren needed. That was where I came in. The money I earned through Trip League, and any money I ever earned, would always go to Darren. I'd live in a fucking shack if it meant my little brother could live past forty. How's the cruise? You win any money on the casino yet? I smiled. Nah, didn't make it to the tables yet. Play a hundred for me. We'll do, Dee. Mom and Dad aren't home. They'll be pissed they missed you. Shit. I leaned my head back against the wall behind me. Tell them I'm sorry and I'll try to call back again. It's cool. Can't wait until you get home. Couple more months, then we'll tear it up at home. He laughed. Yeah, you can be my wingman. You're a chick magnet now, all famous and shit. My family knew my truth and completely accepted it. We'll get you hooked up. Damn right. Gotta go, but you hang in there, okay? Always. Love you, D. Take care, Jay. I closed my eyes and hung up the phone, then pushed past the cameras, fighting through the tears that threatened to come out. I had to remember what I was doing this for. It wasn't just the contract, it was my career, it was my life. And I had people depending on me. The kid was fucking everywhere. Oh no, not the kid. Quinn. He had a name, and that name was Quinn. Fuck. Why did I have to ask his name? There were about 1,500 passengers on the boat, and of all the people to wander up on the deck at dawn, it was him. Of fucking course. And now, who was in the gym at the same time I was? Oh, right, Quinn. With his pretty blonde friend. I was starting to wonder if they were following me around. Then I realized that was paranoid as hell. The cameras were there, too, watching Levi sweat it out on the treadmill. I stood in front of the mirror, busting out some bicep curls. Sweat dripped down my face and my arms trembled, but I kept going, fueled by frustration and the sight of Quinn on the leg press. Fuck me. His shorts were riding up his thighs, revealing freckles on the pale skin there. He gripped the handles on either side of his hips, the veins in his forearms bulging. I switched to triceps, keeping my head down, focused on my workout, when the whole time I was aware of Quinn's presence behind me. I still had the C-bands on, because they fucking worked, but I'd covered them with my own Nike sweatbands. A girl laughed behind me, and I lifted my head, about to lay down on the bench to work on some chest presses. Instead, I spotted Quinn's friend talking to Levi. They were walking over to Quinn, who was standing up, a cautious expression on his face because there were cameras in the gym and live-feed cameras in the corner. Levi placed his hand on Quinn's shoulder and squeezed it, and I recognized his expression immediately. He was flirting. 
Levi, with his effortlessly styled dark brown hair and shining green eyes, was flirting with Quinn. But that was good, right? Levi could distract him, since I was tempted to throw everything away for one taste of his lips. After the conversation with my brother, the guilt weighed heavily on my shoulders, so I gritted my teeth and thought about picking up a heavier weight, something to punish myself. Quinn kept stealing glances at me, and every time Levi laughed, every time he spoke with his voice dripping with charm, I wanted to take the dumbbell I was holding and throw it through the mirror in front of me. I hadn't even known bisexuality was a thing. All I knew in middle school was that certain boys made me feel the same way as certain girls. That all-over warmth, the butterflies in my stomach. I had almost convinced myself it was weird teenage hormones, so I kept it under wraps, until high school, when I learned what the B in LGBTQ stood for. My first feeling was the settling of pieces into order. This aha moment of, oh, so that's what I was. I was scared as shit and stuffed it down, preferring to date girls. After I moved to L.A. and actually touched a guy at a club in West Hollywood, and he touched me back, that was when I knew with absolute certainty. I knew, deep in my gut, that it wasn't just hormones. But then I'd signed on the dotted line shortly after, sealing my fate, and I'd worked hard to avoid guys who got my blood pumping, who turned me on. I'd done a great job of it, too. Until now. Levi looked over at me, wearing a big grin, his face flushed. I knew it wasn't just from the treadmill. He beckoned to me. Fuck! I resisted dropping the weights from where I stood. There wasn't a gym manager, but that was a pretty universal rule. Don't drop the weights. With shaking arms, which wasn't all muscle fatigue, I set them back on the rack and wiped my wrist across my forehead. As I walked toward them, Quinn stared at me with wide eyes while his female friend stiffened. Levi clapped me on the shoulder. So this is Quinn, and this is his friend, Jess. I noted the use of friend and not girlfriend. We met last night, I said, looking at Jess, knowing I needed to make up for what I'd said last night. Um, sorry about that, by the way, the whole drink thing with Casey. Jess's eyes were narrowed on me. You don't need to apologize to me. Casey does. But I think you need to apologize to Quinn. She tilted her chin up in a dare. I liked her. And it also showed a little bit about Quinn's character that he had such a loyal friend. Quinn bit his lip, his gaze shifting between me and Jess. He clearly hadn't told Jess that we'd talked that morning, which made me a little pleased. That morning had been our little private oasis in this ship of crazy. Quinn placed his hand on his friend's arm. It's really okay, Jess. I thought more about it, and he was just trying to look out for me. It sounded threatening, Jess said, frowning. I didn't mean it that way, I said. Levi's gaze was darting among the three of us, and I saw recognition dawn on his face as he connected the dots based on what I told him last night. His mouth formed an oh, but he stayed silent. I scratched the back of my head. I'm sorry I said it the way I did. Quinn smiled, obviously trying to play peacemaker. It's really okay. And I'm glad to meet you under, um, better circumstances. Something passed between us as we locked gazes. The knowledge of our secret meeting? A promise it would stay that way? I held his gaze. Same. Jess still looked suspicious of me. I tried to offer her a smile, but she didn't seem to be having it. Tough chick. So, Levi clapped his hands together. How about a little casino after lunch? Uh, I started. Quinn has great luck, Jess said proudly. I raised my eyebrows at him. Oh, yeah? 
I don't know about that, he murmured, his gaze shifting down and to the side at the attention. I grew up in New Jersey. Atlantic City was my second home, so yeah, I knew a little bit about luck. I knew I rarely had it. I should have said I had other plans, that I wanted to swim or lay out on the deck, but instead I found myself grinning and saying, Awesome. Then it's on. Quinn's cheeks flushed. Jess looked triumphant, and Levi's eyes glittered with mischief. I really should have just stayed in my cabin all day. Chapter 5 Quinn we started out playing easy games, a couple rounds of slots, and then some roulette, during which Levi enjoyed himself immensely. On screen he came across like a sassy twink who rolled his eyes a lot, and he did some of those things right now. But he did a lot of other things, too. He was graceful, a little like Riley, and I wondered if he had a background in dancing. He turned the sass up and down depending on the situation, to watch him on Trip League, he seemed a little exhausting, but in real life he was really fun to be around. And J.R. was irresistible, which was crazy awkward. We weren't even friends, and he was straight. But he was sitting beside me, and his big hands were right there, resting on his thighs. I thought about how those long fingers had touched my palms how those hands had rotated my wrists. I imagined his full lips pressed against mine, and it was driving me crazy. Never in my life had I been attracted to a straight man like I was attracted to J.R. Our chance meeting on the boat that morning was a blessing and a curse, because I'd found he wasn't as much of an asshole as he'd been in the bar. And that was bad. So bad for this weird obsession I had with him. When Levi had asked if Jess was my girlfriend, she'd piped up quickly to tell him no, that I was gay and single. I loved Jess, but sometimes she had that annoying habit of just assuming I'd be attracted to another guy because he was gay. I'd told her over and over that wasn't how it worked. I think she did know, in her heart, but her desire to see me happy made her want to shove me into the arms of any available gay man. When she'd pulled that crap in front of Levi, the flirting had started. I didn't think Levi intended for it to go anywhere. That was just his personality. Maybe in another situation I would have been flattered. I would have flirted back. I would have encouraged it. I would have tried to kiss him and wriggle those skinny jeans down his hips. But with J.R. around, my whole brain was scrambled. What if Levi told J.R. I was gay? What if he already had? Was that why J.R. was so quiet around me now? Was he regretting this morning, letting me touch him? Was he plotting to throw me overboard? The questions swirled around in my head until I was nearly dizzy. I didn't give a shit that it was three o'clock. I ordered a drink as soon as I could and gulped it down while we watched a game of twenty-one. This week was turning me into a lush. Shouting and whistles echoed from the other side of the floor where the craps tables were. My fingers itched to hold the dice, to hear the cheers when I won the table their bets. Craps was a game of strategy, timing, and a little bit of luck. I'd gone to Louisiana with Jess one time and played in the riverboat casinos. I still wasn't on top of the more complicated bets, but I loved the game. Playing online was even better because, uh... No eye contact necessary. J.R. shifted beside me and gestured toward the tables in the corner. Want to watch? Levi was huddled with Jess, counting their remaining chips. I licked my lips, nearly salivating to head to the craps tables. No, I don't want to watch. An unreadable expression flitted across J.R.'s face, and he opened his mouth, but I cut him off. I don't want to watch because I want to play. There was a pause, and then his eyes widened in surprise. Oh, oh! He huffed a small laugh to himself. I forgot. Jess said you were lucky. All right. Well, then I want to see what you can do. I tamped down the urge to tell him I'd love to show him a whole lot, 
and that I'd love for him to show me what he could do. Privately. Damn, even my thoughts were corny. I hopped off of my stool. Hey, Jess, I'm going to go over to play some craps. She looked up. Oh, okay. I think we're going to stay here for a little. We're kind of on a roulette roll. Levi nodded his head enthusiastically. So I'd be alone with J.R. It didn't matter we were in a crowded casino. I'd be... with him. And with the camera that was hovering a couple feet away. Shit. Um, okay. J.R. walked behind me silently, the heat of his body soaking into the back of my thin T-shirt. I looked over my shoulder when we reached the tables. You going to play? He looked at the table, then at me. Nah, I'll just watch you. I'll just watch you. Not the game. Me. I needed to quit reading into everything. He was just being nice. I'd given him the C-bands, which he still wore, and I'd managed to suppress my fanboying. So that was it. I needed to play my game and forget about the big hunk of man next to me. The big hunk of man I wanted to pounce on. I placed my chips on the groove in the table and nodded to the dealer. He nodded back. There were a couple kids around the table, and they seemed to size me up, wondering if I was going to win them money or make them lose. I hoped it was the former. I placed a five-dollar chip, the table's minimum bet, on the pass line and wiped my sweaty palms on my shorts. I refused to look back at J.R., but I was ever aware of his presence. A pretty brunette at the table smiled at him. Not playing? He shook his head. Not right now. Come on, butler, said a guy wearing a dolphin's jersey. I had forgotten for a minute who J.R. was. Of course, kids on the boat would notice him. Not all, I was sure, but a good amount. Again, J.R. shook his head, then clapped me on the shoulder. I'm gonna invest in my man here. He placed one hundred dollars worth of chips next to mine, then leaned in to talk softly in my ear. Win me some big money, baby. I swallowed around the thickness in my throat, and willed myself not to get hard at the lick of his hot breath on my face. Dealer? I croaked. Change, please. J.R. I asked myself what I was doing, then gave up. I didn't have the willpower around Quinn. My eagerness to see him play craps won out over my self-preservation instinct. I knew. The cameras were on the table, which put extra pressure on Quinn. I felt bad about that, but there was nothing I could do. Sweat beaded at the hair on his temple, but he still smelled damn good from his post-gym shower. He wore a T-shirt today, a dark blue one that made his eyes look even more like the ocean surrounding us. When Levi and I were in the privacy of our cabin after the gym, he'd told me Jess had said Quinn was gay. It only confirmed what I had guessed. Levi asked if that bothered me. It sure did, but not for the reasons he thought. I wondered how different I'd be around Quinn if this cruise was a year from now, when I'd be free to act on an attraction to both men and women. When I was free to be who I was. It wasn't worth thinking about, though, because this was the present, and I wasn't free to do much of anything. I watched as the guy in the dolphin's jersey rolled a six. The dealer flipped the black button in the center of the table so it read on and placed it on the six at the top of the table. Quinn's eyes narrowed. Then he nodded like he'd decided something. He placed two chips behind his current one on the pass line. Craps wasn't a game I was familiar with, so I leaned in. What does that bet mean? His brow was furrowed and it was a little hot how focused he was. He didn't turn his head when he spoke. I added to my bet. It means I think he'll roll another six before he rolls a seven or an eleven. What happens if he rolls a seven or eleven first? He turned his head a little then. It means the house wins. We lose. I leaned back. 
We don't want that. He smiled. Nah, but the house always wins. Damn the man, I said. He laughed. Dolphin's jersey, who I found out was named Carter, did in fact roll a six again before a seven or eleven. The table cheered as Carter fist-pumped the air. Bets were paid out, and then the dice were passed to the brown-haired girl who'd wanted me to play. She did some weird ritual where she blew on the dice and whispered something to herself. Then she rolled. The dealer placed the button on the four, and Quinn frowned. He set a ten-dollar chip on the do-not-pass line. What's that mean? I said, hoping he didn't get irritated that I asked questions, but I liked hearing his steady voice, and it was turning me on a little to hear him spout numbers and odds. I noticed he often fidgeted and didn't always look people in the eye when they talked to him. Here at the table, playing this game, confidence radiated off him. His presence was intoxicating when he was in his element. Quinn cocked his head a little as he thought. I'm betting she'll roll a seven or eleven before she rolls another four. Huh. I looked at the table and watched as she did her ritual again. So you're betting against her? He nodded, and his lips twisted into an odd smile. Sometimes you gotta go with the house. She rolled an eleven. The table groaned because they'd all betted on the pass line. Quinn grinned then collected his winnings. And I wanted to kiss him. Three more players rolled before Quinn got the dice. He held them in his hands, rolling them slightly in his fingers. I watched as his gaze scanned the table. And then he threw. Nine. I bumped him with my shoulder. That's my lucky number. Oh, yeah? He grinned at me over my shoulder. How come? It was my jersey number in high school. Basketball. The camera crew drifted away from us, maybe because Levi was making a racket over at the roulette table, high-fiving everyone around him, and I wasn't doing much of anything. I smirked and turned back to Quinn. He frowned, but his posture was relaxed as he tossed the dice on the table. They hit the opposite end and rested. Eight! The dealer called. So what does that mean? I asked. Means I can still roll. Wish me luck. He rolled three more times, and the numbers must have been good because the table grew progressively more excited. Quinn's pale skin was flushed the whole way down to his neck. The air around us was buzzing, everyone at the table on edge. I wasn't even playing, yet my skin tingled and my blood pumped hot through my veins. I could see how this could get addicting. On Quinn's fourth roll, everyone was holding their breath. No seven, no eleven, no seven, no eleven, he chanted as he shook the dice in his hand. He threw. Nine, the dealer called. Quinn threw his hands in the air and the table cheered. I reached up and squeezed the back of his neck and leaned in. Way to go, kid. He paused, eyeing me, but then his face split into a huge grin. Thanks, old man. In the end, Quinn doubled our money. I was one hundred dollars richer and thoroughly entertained. But how did you know when to bet what you did? I asked. He shrugged. A lot is luck, but sometimes I feel like... I can tell when people aren't lucky, when they're going to roll shit, and that's when I bet with the house. I stopped along the casino wall and leaned against it, crossing my arms over my chest. Really? I don't know how to explain it, he said. And sometimes I'm wrong. You weren't wrong much today. No, he said quietly. But I am wrong sometimes. He took a deep breath and scanned the casino floor before locking eyes with me. I'm much better knowing who to bet on at the craps table than in real life. He laughed softly and ran his hands through his hair. You know what I mean? I've bet wrong in life so much, man. I blew out a breath, paying for it now. He cocked his head. How so? How freeing would it be to just blurt it all out, right here, 
right now. Tell Quinn, hey, I'm bisexual, but I signed a contract to keep that a secret. Life's a bitch. I bet it wrong. Quinn was looking at me like he trusted me, and that sucked. That sucked a lot. He'd have better luck betting on the house than on me. The camera crew was still focused on Levi, but I knew any minute that could change, and they could come over to see what I was up to. What I wouldn't give right now to take those cameras and smash them on the wall to bits. Just a couple more months, J.R., get your shit together. So I took a deep breath and shook my head. It's not important. Let's go cash your chips. Most of these are yours, he said. You won them. You invested in me. His eyes were big and so goddamn blue. Buy me a t-shirt or something. It's fine. He narrowed his eyes, and his body tensed. I don't need your money. Shit, now I'd insulted him. No, that's not... I sighed. Okay. I'll take back one twenty-five. Keep seventy-five for yourself. That's fair. His hackles lowered as he stared at his chips. Okay. That's fair. His smile faded and he glanced at the distant cameras, then back at me. Are there live feeds here? I pointed to the far corner. Over there. I'm not mic'd up so they can't hear us. The cameras make me nervous, you know. I don't know how you do it. The thought of so many people watching me makes my heart race. I shrugged. You get used to it. He nodded. Okay, well, since no one can hear us now, I just want you to know, since we're hanging out, that I'm... He chewed his lip. Gay. My first reaction was jealousy. I was jealous as hell of Quinn, who could just blurt it out like that. Okay, I said. He blinked. I just want to make sure you're okay with that. A bunk with Levi, who's like a one-man pride parade. <laughs> it's okay, man, really. His smile was tentative. Um, okay. So do you want to go get your cash now or just stand here and hold your chips forever? He hesitated like he needed time to deal with the subject change. I... I'd like my cash now. Great. And get on it. I'm hungry, and I think the lunch buffet is open. He shook his head at me with an eye roll. Yeah, yeah, I'm hurrying. Good, because it's going to take a crowbar to pry Levi away from the roulette table. We glanced over at Levi and Jess, who were holding hands as the wheel spun. Good God, we've created monsters, Quinn said. The wheel stopped, and Levi put his hand to his forehead like he was fainting while Jess wailed in agony. We looked at each other. Let's just ditch them, I said. Are you supposed to let the camera crew know where you're going? I'm supposed to. Quinn's eyes glittered as he spoke in a hushed whisper. I'm going to cash out. You slip out the back and meet me on floor three. That buffet is small, but they have Alaskan king crab legs. I held out my hand for a fist bump. Good plan. He bumped me back. It's go time. Like a man on a mission, he trotted away from me toward the payout desks. I found a side door and slipped out as the cameras stayed focused on Levi. Chapter 6 Quinn There was a live-feed camera in the dining room, but apparently J.R. had studied the locations because he managed to sit us out of frame. He said there were certain times they were required to wear mics, but not always. I wasn't sure what had made me suggest a Mission Impossible to stuff ourselves with crab legs. With J.R., I didn't always second-guess every little decision. Maybe because I was so focused on him that my analytical mind was too overrun with attraction to deal with worries. Either way, a thrill ran up my spine a surge of excitement that spread out to my fingers. Sure, they were just crab legs, but they were spontaneous crab legs. It was like a secret seasoning. We each had plates overflowing with crab legs. It was a little obscene, the carnage in front of us. 
J.R. took a deep breath and puffed out his cheeks as he exhaled. So we have the legs. Check, I said. The melted butter, check. Beer. I clinked my glass with his. Check and mate. And it's only one o'clock. I took a sip and grinned. Spring break is great, isn't it? After a long glug of his beer, J.R. set it down on the table. For you, this is spring break. For me, this is work. I had never been good at hiding my emotions. Ever. Jess called me on it all the time, and I must have shown the way his words hit me like a punch. This is work. Because his eyes widened. Oh, shit, I didn't mean it that way. I shook my head. Why was I making this lunch into a thing? It wasn't a thing. It was nothing. No, really, it's okay. No, it's not. That didn't come out like I wanted it to. He sighed and picked up a crab leg. I mean, this trip is work. This? Eating crab legs and drinking a beer without a camera on me? He cracked the leg open. That's not work. Right. It had nothing to do with my companionship. And the sooner I remembered that, the better off I'd be. He's straight. He's a celebrity. He has a girlfriend. Knock off the hero worship, Quinn. I nodded. I totally get that. I picked up a crab leg. So let's dig in before the crew finds us, right? He laughed as he dipped a hunk of meat in the melted butter. Right. He dropped it in his mouth, and I looked away so I didn't track the butter dripping down his chin. So where do you go to school? I concentrated on cracking my crab legs and piling the meat on a separate plate. East Carolina University. What are you studying? I wiped away some crab juice that had squirted in my eye. Um, I'll graduate in May with a bachelor's in computer science. And then I had to decide which job offer I'd take, the one in North Carolina, where I could live at home, or the one all the way in... California. I took a sip of my beer. I wasn't thinking about that now. When I glanced over at J.R., his gaze was on my plate of crab meat. What? He blinked and quirked an eyebrow at me. What are you doing? I looked down at my hands, then back at him. What do you mean? Are you eating any of the meat? I shook my head. No, I'm just getting it out of the crab legs. He stared at me like I was crazy. Why the fuck would you do that? Because I like to eat it all at once. I braced an elbow on the table. Let me get this straight. You take the time to pick out all that meat before you enjoy any of it? Hey. I poked his arm with a claw and he jerked back a little. I grinned. Don't knock my technique. I put in the work now, and in the end I get to gorge myself on a whole plate at one time. His gaze dropped to my plate, which was already pretty full of crab meat. Huh. Yeah, huh? Try it sometime. He stuck another hunk of meat into his mouth and chewed. You into delayed gratification or something? I shrugged. I don't mind waiting if it's something I really want, you know? He chewed slower now as he watched my face. Yeah, I guess so. I did the same thing with my lucky charms as a kid. I would save all the marshmallows until the end, because there's nothing worse than getting to the end of your bowl of lucky charms and you only have those Cheerio-like things left. Everyone knows it's all about the marshmallows. I was sitting here talking about lucky charms to a TV celebrity, and yet he was watching me like it was the most interesting thing he'd ever heard. He was probably a great actor, and in actuality couldn't wait to get away from my boring ass. He leaned back in his chair and crossed his arms over his chest, a small smile on his face. Man, I never had lucky charms as a kid. Mom and Dad wouldn't buy them for us, said they'd rot our teeth. But I remember getting money for my birthday one year, and I went out and bought Captain Crunch. I groaned. That cereal is straight sugar. Right? I might as well have mainlined pixie sticks. My mom had me so scared of sugar that I thought I was going to lose all my teeth after one bowl. I brushed like five times a day for a week until my gums bled. 
My mom had to sit me down and tell me to chill out. Your parents sound okay. He cracked a claw and dipped it in butter. Yeah, they're pretty great. Tried to raise my brother and me right. What about you? I ran my fingers over the sharp bumps on the crab leg. Um, I love my parents. They love me. They are... strict. That was an understatement. I knew early on I was gay, and it was like they wanted to put me in a bubble. Jess is probably the only reason I wasn't homeschooled, which, you know, is fine for some kids, but I wanted to go to public school with her so I fought my parents to stay in school. He leaned in. You had a hard time in school for being, uh, who you are? I shrugged. It wasn't too bad. I'm from a small town in North Carolina. Jess's older brother is gay, so I guess he kind of paved the way for a lot of us after him to be open. He nodded. That's good. I'm glad you had that. You an only child? Yeah. How's Darren, by the way? I knew about his younger brother, who had been diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. Darren had even been on the show once, when J.R. visited his hometown. J.R. stared at his hands on the table. He's doing good right now. That's great. At that, he grew quiet, and I let him. We ate in silence for a while, and I wondered if I said something weird. It wouldn't be the first time, but J.R. didn't seem uncomfortable, just thoughtful. By the time I was halfway through my second beer, I was feeling emboldened. I was a lightweight, after all. You know, you're not at all like you are on TV. He jolted, as if my voice startled him. What? You said on the deck how the camera doesn't show everything, and you're right. At least when it comes to you. He wasn't eating any more. His plate of empty shells was pushed to the center of the table, and his intense, dark eyes were trained on me. So, what do you see? Well, shit. Um, you're nice. And funny. And easy to talk to. What did you expect me to be like? Still with the unwavering stare pinning me in my chair. I swallowed. Um, not nice. He barked out a laugh and broke the intensity of his gaze as he leaned back in his chair and ran his hand over his shaved head. Well, I wasn't nice the first night. I'm still not always nice, Quinn. Well, you're nice now. At least I know you're capable of being nice. He looked at me again with pursed lips. Yeah, well, you're probably going to want to remember that as this trip goes on. That sounded ominous. And he didn't elaborate as a waiter came over to take his empty plate. I stared at my mound of crab meat, took a deep breath, and dug in. J.R. I should have made an excuse and left. My phone was buzzing with text messages from our producer, Doug. Where are you? I was surprised he hadn't found a way to work a line item into our contracts requiring us to be implanted with tracking devices. But instead of leaving, I grabbed another beer and sat down to watch Quinn eat. I knew something was shifting beneath us like quicksand, and I couldn't seem to find my footing, yet I didn't want to stop. I wasn't talking to him like I'd talk to a guy, to a bro. A friend. I talked to him like we were on a date. And this wasn't a date, it wasn't anything. Which was why I should have walked away. But watching Quinn lick the melted butter off his fingers and give little contented sighs was making it nearly impossible for me to get up and walk away without causing a scene. I could feel my pants getting a little tight my cock liking the sounds coming from Quinn, the sight of his tongue licking his lips, the brightness of his eyes when he focused on what I had to say like it was important. I thought I was good at self-control, but this guy was seriously testing me. 
It wasn't even the fact that I liked to look at him. I liked to be around him. He didn't treat me like J.R. Butler. He treated me like a normal guy. In the last couple years, people did one of two things when they met me, picked a fight to get on TV, or kissed my ass to get on TV. It was never about me as a person. With Quinn, I felt almost human. So what do you want to do after the season is over? Quinn asked, his blue eyes fully focused on me. I picked at the label on my empty beer. My go-to answer was that I wanted to act. It was what I always said, even when I didn't believe it any more. Looking at Quinn, though, I didn't feel like answering with a lie. I want to act, but I'm not sure how well it'll work out. He smiled, and I didn't know what was so good about that. I would think you'd have a lot of options after everything is over. Options. Yeah, sure. But what would I have to do to keep those options? Yeah, I guess so. I always knew what I was going to do. My parents were great, but I mentioned they were strict. I think they had me on the college path in kindergarten. There was always a plan, rules on what I could or couldn't do to adhere to that plan. He blew out a breath. It's exhausting to be aware of consequences for every single action. I laughed. I guess that's called being an adult. I envy you a little, Quinn said. After the league is over, you have options. You can choose your own path. I don't hate the path I'm on, but I hated that I never, not once, went off trail. He tilted his head to the side. Do you know what I mean? I nodded slowly. I do. I mean, you just, what, graduated high school and took off to L.A.? Pretty much, with a hundred bucks and a wish. He blew out a breath. Wow. See... I say I want to go off trail, but then I'd have a million questions before doing so, like, what's the weather like, and do I need a jacket, and hold on, I burn really badly in the sun, and I need SPF 50 so I don't get skin cancer. Fuck, I wanted to kiss him. Hey, that's okay, too. Not everyone is made to go off-roading, you know? He shrugged and nibbled his lip. Yeah, I guess so. But his voice dropped so low I barely heard him. Maybe one of these days I want to give it a shot, you know? I swallowed, sobering with him. Yeah, I know. Quinn shook himself. Ugh, I'm getting all weird and introspective. Sorry about that. It's okay, I said. And just so you know, I'm not as free as you think. I have cameras following me around. There are consequences and about a million people who will see if I fuck up. He twisted his lips. I'm sorry for that. I shrugged. Me too. Glancing at the clock, I sighed. I had to get going, even if it was the last thing I wanted to do. I motioned to his mostly empty plate. You about done? I think I have a thing up on deck I'm supposed to be at soon. He shoved his plate away. God, yeah, I'm done. You enjoyed your massive crab meat plate? He rubbed his stomach. Delicious. He followed me as I made my way to the door. So what's happening on deck? I think it's a dance contest. I'm judging with Selina and Levi. He had to jog a little to keep up with my long strides, so I slowed down. So you have a schedule, kinda? I waffled my hand. There are some events we're supposed to host, so... Yeah. He looked down at his feet. So I can come watch, right? I bumped him with my shoulder as we walked down the narrow hall. You don't want to compete? Maybe I can teach you how to duggy. He rolled his eyes. I don't even know what that means. I have to grab my sunglasses. I'm only a couple of floors down. He bit his lip and looked at me from under those golden lashes. You want to come, or... Sir. Sure which was a dumb answer. So fucking dumb. 
We stepped into the tiny elevator, and as it descended, I was even more aware of his solid presence behind me. His arm brushed mine by accident, and he mumbled an apology. This close, I could count the freckles on his skin, smell the soap he'd showered with that morning. There was a small razor cut on his jaw, marring his otherwise unblemished complexion. I looked away and stared at the changing numbers over the door. When we reached his floor, we turned down two hallways before we came to his door, number 299. Those damn nines. I knew there wasn't a live-feed camera on this floor, which was great, because I didn't want Quinn anywhere near those damn cameras. I didn't know how I was going to manage that if I continued hanging out with him. The best thing would be to leave him alone. But as he unlocked his door and then looked back at me, blinking red bangs out of his eyes, I knew that was going to be one of the toughest things I'd ever done. His lips twitched. Uh, you can come in, or whatever. I should probably put on some suntan lotion, too. I mean, he motioned to his arm with his chin. SPF 50, remember? Well, that answered that. No way in hell was I going to watch him put on lotion. I can just wait out here. He smiled, but the guy wore his emotions all over his face. He was disappointed. Sure. Leaving the door open a crack, he stepped inside. I leaned against the opposite wall, biting my thumbnail and checking my watch. I was early, so I didn't have a good excuse to leave. My phone was still blowing up. I pulled it out of my pocket and didn't bother checking the messages. I texted Doug, Be up on deck in fifteen. My phone rang and I gritted my teeth, wondering how Doug would react if I told him to fuck off. However, it wasn't Doug. It was my agent, Carl Simmons. I glanced at the door, then answered my phone, turning to the side to lean a shoulder against the wall. Hey. J.R. Carl said, all business as usual, like I was just a line item on his to-do list. Yeah? I have some news for you. You have a minute? He acted like he didn't know I was on a fucking cruise ship, or maybe he'd forgotten. Whatever. He wasn't my best friend. Sure, I got a minute. I got you an audition. It's a small part on a pilot for a TV show on the TW network. You'd play a high school football player. I can email the details on the part. My agent was an asshole, but at least he was doing something. My heart sped up. Really? This is a family-friendly show, J.R. So is the audience. I think you know where I'm going with this. And then my heart plummeted into my shoes. But I told you from the beginning it's going to be much easier to get you parts if you're straight. And you kind of are, right? Just date women. He had no idea what it meant to be bisexual. Just date women. Like that ignored a whole other part of me, like he didn't understand that even if I fell in love with a woman and married her, I'd still be lying to her about who I was. But I thought about Darren and my parents, and I kept my mouth shut even as the walls closed in around me, even as my chest tightened and I thought I was going to black out from lack of breath. Send me the details. Will do. Take care. He hung up, not giving a shit that he'd just laid a ticking bomb at my feet. I stared at my phone, my body numb. For the first time I wanted to cry about my situation, wail about how unfair it was. But I'd made all these decisions. Every step of the way I'd put one foot in front of the other and walked toward the fire. And now my feet were over the coals and there was no way out. A loud crash sounded from inside Quinn's room, followed by a yelp and a curse. My body came alive again with a shock as my heart raced with concern for Quinn. I shoved the door open and rushed inside, immediately spotting him in the bathroom. He stood with his shirt off, rubbing his jaw, a squeezed bottle of lotion spilled on the floor. I swallowed as my gaze took in his body. Christ, he was perfect. Slender, with a flat stomach and a trim waist, 
There were freckles everywhere, and I wanted to play connect the dots with my tongue. My gaze snapped up to his face. He was looking at me, his brows furrowed. J.R.? I licked my lips and tried to act casual, despite my racing heart and rising arousal. Uh, hey, I heard a crash. You okay? He smiled, but he still looked thoughtful. Yeah, I'm fine. This damn bathroom is so small and I slipped on Jess's clothes on the floor, banged my face on the sink. It's fine. There was a red spot on his jaw, and I imagined it might bruise a little, especially with his fair skin. He bent over to pick up the bottle, so I got a good view of his ass, his perfectly round ass. And because I had absolutely no willpower, I stepped into the bathroom with him. Here, let me help you clean up. He was now on all fours, mopping up the spilled sunblock, and I dropped down with him. Our heads were close as we used wads of tissues to wipe the white lotion from the floor. The entire bathroom smelled like coconut and quin. I could hear his soft inhales and exhales as he strained to clean up a drop in the corner. I sat back on my heels and dropped the tissue in the wastebasket. Quinn did the same, then wiped his hand across his face, leaving behind a smear of lotion on his cheek. The phone call was still fresh in my mind, but for probably the millionth time today, when I was around Quinn, I didn't think first. I completely threw the J.R. Butler plot. I reached out and swiped the lotion from his cheek with my thumb. His gaze darted to meet mine, and his chest heaved, then stilled. I held my breath, too, because what else was there to do? I was caught in his blue depths, as blue as the ocean that buoyed this massive ship we were now on, and I was drowning. Good as gone. Drifting to the ocean floor. But instead of struggling against the cement blocks tied around my ankles, all I felt was peace. Quinn swallowed, his Adam's apple bobbing. J.R.? Yeah. My voice was a croak. Why are you here? Because I heard a crash. He shook his head, cutting me off as he pointed to the floor between us. No. Why are you here? I knew what he meant. The last thread of defense kicked in, though, and I shook my head. Not sure what you mean. His face fell and I had to curl my hand into a fist to keep from reaching out to him. Look, Quinn. Quinn? Why is the door wide open? Jess's voice filtered through the haze, preventing me from doing something stupid like confess everything at the freckled feet of Quinn. Her footsteps were close, and I jumped to my feet just as she stopped in front of the bathroom door. Her gaze went from me to where Quinn still knelt on the floor. I had no idea what it looked like, but from the anger sweeping over her face, I was guessing it wasn't good. What the hell? She took a step inside, her little fists balled at her sides. What's going on? Why does Quinn have a bruise on his jaw? Oh, shit. I'd forgotten about the bruise. I glanced behind me as Quinn slowly rose to his feet with a sigh. Jess, calm down. No, I will not calm down, Quinn Mathers. Her dislike of me was written all over her face, from her scrunched nose to her thinned lips. She poked her finger in my chest, and I bristled. You need to leave, she said. Jess! Quinn hissed, pushing me aside to face off with his friend. Knock it off! He was standing outside our cabin while I put sunblock on. If you wouldn't have left your damn gel bra on the floor, I wouldn't have slipped on it and banged my face on the sink, and J.R. wouldn't have rushed in to help me clean up the sunblock I spilled. He lifted his eyebrows and placed a hand on his cocked hip, chin out as he glared at his friend. Jess didn't move for a minute. Then her entire body sagged. Oh. Yeah, oh. I think you need to apologize to him for coming in here like fucking Xena. I did not come in here like Xena, she muttered before turning to me. Um, 
I'm sorry. That was not nice of me to assume the worst. I was crammed with three people into a small bathroom that barely fit one. I was angry with myself for getting into this situation, for almost blowing everything because of Quinn. Then I got yelled at by an overprotective blonde. I was done, so fucking done. This whole thing had been a mistake and I needed to stay away from Quinn. I only had six more days to mind my own business. Yeah. It's fine. I said, sidling my way around them and out the door. Um, gotta go. Later. I jogged down the hallway. The faster I put distance between us, the better. Chapter 7 Quinn The worst part about that whole awkward situation was that I hadn't been wearing a shirt. Okay, maybe not the worst part, but that had been pretty big. I was skinny. While I had some muscle tone, I couldn't seem to build big hulking muscles like, well, like J.R., who had run out of here with the speed of an Olympic sprinter. I wasn't even mad at Jess, not really. We protected each other. It was what we had always done for so many years. But now she was staring over her shoulder where J.R. had left, biting her lip. She turned back to me, her head tilted to the side. I feel like I'm missing something. I tugged on my shirt and brushed past her out into the cabin. You aren't missing anything. No, I really think I am. I misread the tension or something. What exactly happened? I told you what happened. He was waiting for me outside because we were going to go up on deck. I fell, he heard the crash, and rushed in. He was helping me clean up, that's all. She wasn't letting up. So why were you on your knees and he was standing up? I rolled my eyes. Because I was about to suck his dick, Jess. God, what do you think? He stood up when you walked in. A flush crossed over her face. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for yelling at him. I'm sorry for interrupting. You didn't interrupt anything. Even now I could feel the heat of his thumb on my cheekbone. I closed my eyes and turned away before Jess could see my expression. Okay, well... She was grasping at straws. I'm sorry for everything I did in the last five minutes that was wrong. Jess, it's fine. But J.R. is... Not a jerk, okay? So please quit treating him like he's going to punch my face any minute. She ran her fingers along my jaw while I glared at her mutinously. Do you need ice? I'm not going to break. It's not a big deal. I shot her a teasing scowl. Clean up your clothes a little next time, will ya? She had the decency to look ashamed. Of course, I'm sorry. I'm going to be the worst person to live with ever. My future husband will hate me. I pinched her cheeks. No, he'll love you just like all of us do who know you. Now you're just lying. Crap, I said with a snap of my fingers. You know my tell. Jess crossed her arms over her chest and tapped her foot. So anyway, what's the plan now? You want to go up on deck? I heard there's a dancing competition. I think you should put your hat in for it. She winked. Uh, you know I can't dance. Like, at all? Oh, you're not that bad. I am so that bad. After checking my hair in the mirror and grabbing my sunglasses, I followed her out of the cabin, locking the door behind us. J.R. said he's judging with Selina and Levi. What have you guys been doing this whole time? We ate lunch, then came back here for me to get my sunglasses. We bonded. I thought about professing my belief in soulmates. Huh, she said. What? She shrugged as she pressed the button for the elevator. Nothing. As we made our way to the deck, I replayed what happened in the bathroom over and over in my head. There was something crucial I was missing. I knew it, because everything about that moment had felt... not innocent. If Jess had been outside and heard a crash, she would have laughed and said, 
What the hell did you do now, like a normal friend, and not rush to my defense? Friends don't look at me like that. Not the way he had. And the way he'd reached out to wipe the lotion off my face? Even now I got shivers thinking about it. Why had he touched me? Why had his expression been so intense? I had to be reading into things, because the alternative would be... No, that couldn't be. J.R. was straight. Everyone knew about his epic love story with his girlfriend, Andrea. I could still feel the heat of his glare on my bare chest. I wondered if he was as affected as I was. We got off one floor below the deck and then took the stairs the rest of the way. The rail shook beneath my hand from the sound of the bass-filled music playing on deck. Damn, Jess said. I guess they started the party without us. We pushed open the door and immediately had to press ourselves against it as a group of girls in bikinis ran by, chased by a laughing... Casey. My nemesis, Jess growled, shaking her fist in the air. I laughed and grabbed her hand. Come on, let's go check out the dance competition. I wasn't sure what I expected. Maybe something like The X Factor, where the judges sat at a table and watched the competitors on a stage. Because I clearly hadn't expected. Well, whatever was going on. It was times like these I felt about eighty years old. Selena sat on a chair in the middle of the crowd, her long dark hair flowing down her back, large sunglasses over her eyes, and her mouth open in hysterical laughter. There was a guy on the ground in front of her doing Ace Hump in the Deck, Jess said. Wow! Someone's been having one too many magic mock marathons. A girl was shaking her boobs in Levi's face. While everyone knew boobs weren't his thing, it was clear he was having a great time, dancing along with her and pretending to bite her neck. This wasn't a dancing competition. This was a stripping competition. How had I not anticipated that drunk college students would take it that far? I needed to get out more. A shout went up at the opposite end of the stage where some girl was dancing with J.R. Well, dancing made it sound nice and innocent, and nothing about that dancing was nice and innocent. J.R.'s shirt was off and tucked into the back pocket of his shorts. The girl was wearing a pair of tiny shorts and a bikini top that covered probably a total one square inch of skin. His forearms rested on the girl's shoulders as he rolled his hips into hers, her legs straddling his thigh. Over and over again, the movement so hypnotic I couldn't look away. It was... dirty. Kind of filthy. For a moment I pretended I was in that girl's place and J.R. was grinding those beautiful abs against me, that his strong thighs were straddling one of mine, that I had the freedom to run my hands up the strong muscles of his back, that I could lean in, just like that girl was doing, and lick his neck. I turned away as he threw his head back with a laugh. I couldn't hear his laughter over the sound of the music but the sight was like a needle in my eyeball. Sure, he'd spent the afternoon being nice to the gay boy on the ship, but it was obvious I wasn't anything he wanted. I needed to get that damn fantasy out of my head. Somehow a drink appeared in my hand. I looked down at it, then raised an eyebrow at Jess as she clinked her glass with mine. I got us some drinks since you seemed stunned into silence at the debauchery on the high seas. These kids should all be ashamed of themselves. I stuck out my little finger in a haughty gesture and sipped my drink, then promptly sputtered. What the hell is this? It's some signature drink from the ship. It's called a Mamma Mia. I took another sip and made a face. It didn't stop me from continuing to drink it, though. It had been a fucking day. I needed to get plastered. Fuck worrying about what I'd do when I was drunk. Fuck the hangover I'd have afterward. Fuck it all. I chugged the drink, my throat convulsing as it protested weakly. I didn't care. Nope. 
I was half in love with a straight celebrity I'd still have to see for a couple more days. That called for finally venturing off my path. Fuck it all. I ordered us the next round of Mamma Mia's, and on my way back to Jess I tried to hand one off to a different blonde girl. When I finally found my friend, I was giggling uncontrollably. Holy shit, you're drunk already, she said, taking the drink from me, then eyeing the cup. Is there anything even in this thing, or did you spill it all on the way back? I couldn't stop laughing, and apparently my laughter was contagious, because then she was laughing too. I started shaking my hips to the music, and Jess joined in, backing her ass into me as I wrapped my arm around her chest. Hey, baby. I said in her ear. Hey, stud, she said back. Then we couldn't dance anymore because we were laughing so hard. Everything was so fucking hilarious after a couple of Mamma Mia's. My fingers felt a little fuzzy, and I prodded them with a thumbnail. My skin itched like it was drawn too tight, like I needed to do something, say something, anything, or I'd scream, or maybe I could just scream. That sounded great about now. My blood was pumping hot, and I wondered what was really in these punch-flavored drinks. I swore I could lift a car right now. Quinn? Jess's face was blurry, but came into focus the closer she came. What? You should dance! I am dancing. She shook her head and her hair caught on my lips. No, you should dance. She pointed toward the stage, and I squinted in the direction of her finger. Poor Levi's been surrounded by girls this whole time. Go dance with him. Go dance with him. Another girl took her place in front of Levi, and in gay solidarity I felt empathy. I rolled my shoulders and handed my empty cup to Jess. All right, then. Wish me luck. J.R. I focused on the girl currently grinding her perfectly shaped ass into me. My lips were numb from the three shots of fireball whiskey I'd taken before the competition started. I probably could have done without those, especially as I kept losing my footing. The girl didn't care. Her name was... Candace? I gripped her hips and tried to focus on the thin bikini string stretching across her back, which was the only thing holding in those massive tits of hers that she'd previously been rubbing all over my chest. I wasn't going to lie. I was a little hard. But my brain couldn't determine if it was left over from being in close quarters with Quinn or from grinding with Candace. Shit! I had to forget about Quinn. I had to. I gripped Candace's waist and let her beat dictate my movements. Why couldn't I just focus on the smoking hot chick in front of me? That had never been a problem before. I loved tits and ass and everything that came with the opposite sex. She turned her head and winked at me. I licked my lips in a gesture I didn't really feel. She closed her eyes and doubled up her efforts. Damn it. She really should win this whole damn thing with how hard she was working. A loud cheer went up from the other side of the stage. I looked over and immediately ceased all motor function of my body. Levi was no longer getting a hilarious and awkward lap dance with a girl. Nope. What he was doing sent a red-hot poker of anger right into my chest. Levi and Quinn were in an embrace, Dancing so close there was barely an inch between them. Levi bent his legs and dropped his ass to the floor, his hands coasting up and down Quinn's thighs, his face right in Quinn's crotch. Then he slowly rose, gyrating himself against the body that had been torturing my head for the last two days. I hadn't watched gay porn. I hadn't done anything for as long as I'd been contracted with Trip League. And now, watching two guys have simulated sex on the dance floor was causing every single one of those feelings that made me not straight come rushing back, like a tidal wave. I wanted Quinn. I wanted his lips and his ass and his cock. I wanted it. And right now, Levi was too damn close to it. Hey, 
said a female voice in my ear. Is my time up? I was such an asshole. I looked down into her pretty face, long lashes over big brown eyes. Yeah, babe, thanks. That was fun. She grinned. It was? Thanks, J.R. Nice to meet you. And then she turned and melted into the crowd. I turned back to Quinn and Levi, in time to see Quinn with his back to Levi, his arms above his head. Levi stood behind him, hands on Quinn's hips, lips at Quinn's ear. Those lips were moving, and I wanted to know what he was saying. I knew what I'd say. I want to suck your dick. I pictured Levi dropping to his knees right there, opening up Quinn's pants, and... Looks like Levi and his guy over there are going to win it all, Selina's voice said beside me as a hand rested on my shoulder. They look like they're having a blast, and it's pretty hot. I began to walk, my stride picking up the closer I came to Quinn and Levi. I had to do something because I couldn't handle this any more. Didn't Quinn know he was rubbing this in my face? Didn't Levi? Because I could swear every single emotion racing through me was all over my face. As I made my way, the DJ called an end to the competition, but Levi and Quinn were still in an embrace as the crowd clapped. Quinn laughed at something Levi said, and it burned in my gut how beautiful they looked together. As I drew close, Quinn lifted his face to me, his skin flushed, his eyes glazed over. He looked like he'd just come, and I wanted to punch something because I knew I'd never find out if that was right or not. What the fuck, Levi? I snarled, my voice rough. Pretty sure it was a dance competition, not a sex-on-stage competition. Levi's face, which had been lit with excitement, hardened in an instant. Excuse me? What were you doing with that little miss over there? Fuck off, J.R. I wasn't even rational right now. I kept it in my pants. Levi's expression tightened, and he poured on the sass as he cocked a hip and waved a finger in the air. You see a dick waving around right now? No, you don't. What? Because we're two dudes, we can't dance like you with a girl? Jesus, J.R., watch out, your homophobia is showing. Quinn was backing up now, his gaze darting between Levi and me. I hated that instead of the blush of happiness, his color looked a little dull, the flush of embarrassment clear on his skin. I'd done that. Me. Because I was an asshole. Levi didn't deserve this, and neither did Quinn, but there was no way to reverse everything I'd said. Not without showing my hand, without telling the truth, and no way could I do that, not with Doug looking on right now, the cameras shining down on us. I was J.R., acting the part I always played. It'd be great for ratings. Doug was smiling, and he waved his hand, like he wanted me to keep going. I turned and walked away, without another word. Chapter 8 Quinn He hates me. He doesn't hate you. I sighed and pushed my food around on my plate. My buzz had worn off, so Jess and I had taken a nap. I never napped. Ever. I kind of felt like a toddler. Now I was up eating dinner. Well, I was more like drinking my dinner since I'd had approximately three bites of salad and two Long Island iced teas. Oops. At first I was embarrassed. Then I was sad. And now my feelings had gone right to anger. How dare him? We'd eaten crabs together. He'd wiped lotion off my face for fuck's sake. And then he had the balls to get all quit doing your gay thing on stage to Levi and me? Fuck that. Fuck him. Whatever. I'm going to be so gay and do so much gay stuff he can't stop me. I muttered. Jess's eyes were wide as her gaze shifted from my empty Long Island iced tea to my face. Okay, sweetie, you can definitely do as much gay stuff as you want, but let's slow down on the alcohol, okay? She grabbed a roll and stuffed it into my mouth. Eat that. Carbs should soak it up. She cringed. I hope. I bit down on the roll and turned to face her with it still stuffed in my mouth. She laughed, and I grinned around it. 
Uh, looks like I'm interrupting something. I lifted my head to see Levi standing at our table, his eyebrows raised, holding a plate from the buffet. I tried to talk, but realized belatedly that the roll was still in my mouth. Jess reached over and plucked it out, then dropped it on my plate. Savage! You're the one who put it there, I pointed out. Anyway, Levi said, can I sit down? I nodded, and he took a seat opposite us. So! He unrolled his silverware and dropped his napkin on his lap. I want to apologize about earlier. I hope I didn't do anything to make you uncomfortable, or... I shook my head, cutting him off. No, no way, it was fine. Fun. Um, I had a great time. Until... Yeah, he rolled his eyes. Until. And now he's disappeared. He wasn't in the room this afternoon. I hope he went to the gym and tore a groin muscle. I pressed my lips together so I didn't laugh out loud. Levi smiled at me, his green eyes twinkling. It's okay, you can laugh, and as soon as I see him I'll get an apology out of him and ask him to find you to apolo- No, no! I held out my hands. I would rather not think about it, or talk about it. I'd talk to J.R. on my own. Maybe. I exhaled. I've known I was gay since I was six. I've been out since... I looked at Jess. Middle school? Yep. When you told everyone at an assembly that your celebrity crush was Justin Timberlake. Right. And I'm from the South. Not everyone was cool with it. When people say things, it still hurts. But I remember that what they think about me is more a reflection of them than me. And so? I shrugged and looked at Jess, who beamed at me with pride. It is what it is. That wasn't really it, though. It wasn't what J.R. had said. It was that I thought he wasn't like that. As my anger cooled, I tried to hold on to the J.R. who was nice, who rushed into my cabin to make sure I hadn't been hurt. He'd warned me, hadn't he? At least I know you're capable of being nice. Yeah, well, you're probably going to want to remember that as the trip goes on. Normally I'd avoid J.R. Confrontation wasn't my thing, but he deserved the chance to explain, if he even wanted to. I didn't believe J.R. was as two-dimensional as he had been on the show. I just hoped I still had the courage when he was standing in front of me. I focused back on Levi, who was smiling at me. Well, anyway, I want to make it up to you. We have an LGBTQ mixer going on tonight on deck two. Want to come? I leaned forward too fast and nearly knocked over my drink. Wait, what? How come I hadn't heard of this? He shrugged. We kind of put it together quickly, but it should be fun. A lot of dancing and karaoke. Maybe some glitter. I slammed my hands down on the table. Yes! He quirked a brow. Yes, as in, you really like karaoke? I shook my head. No. Well, I mean, I kind of like it, if I'm really drunk, which I sort of am now, but, I mean, yes, I'll come. You okay going by yourself? Jess asked. I signed up to do this twilight yoga thing on deck. Yeah, yeah, I waved at her. I got this. Thanks for telling me, Levi. He pointed at my untouched plate. No problem. Now eat up, ginger boy. We're going to burn some calories tonight. J.R. I wiped my hand across my face and blinked back the sweat stinging my eyes. Selina was beside me, glancing over at me with her brow furrowed in concern. Yeah, I was on minute sixty fucking five of this goddamn treadmill, and I planned to be on for longer because I wasn't sure how else to deal with all these emotions bubbling below the surface. I wanted to run until I was too tired to do anything but fall into a coma and stay that way until this damn cruise was over. J.R. I ignored her as her treadmill slowed down. J.R. My breaths were harsh pants, and my chest was on fire. I wasn't sure how my legs were even moving anymore, 
Maybe I shouldn't have run on an incline this whole time. J.R. A hand reached over and slammed down the stop button. I nearly tripped as I flailed to grab onto the bar in front of me so I wouldn't faceplant. What the fuck, Selina? She stood next to my treadmill, her hands on her hips, glaring at me. I'm not going to just stand here while you kill yourself. Is your body eating an organ yet? I'm fine, I growled. I'm not scared of that infamous J.R. temper, so fuck you. Now what's going on? Nothing. Yeah? See? I don't believe that. Because you stopped dancing with a hot chick to go yell at Levi and that guy he was dancing with, and now you're down here running your ass off for no reason. I set the treadmill to a slow walk so I could cool down. Selina watched my fingers as I set the controls, then nodded when she saw I only planned to walk. As if I needed her permission. Casey was on the other side of the gym doing bicep curls, but I could see his gaze on us in the mirror. Selina leaned closer. Come on. I squeezed my eyes shut. Look, I'm going through some stuff. It's nothing important. I opened my eyes slowly and met her dark brown ones. I thought Selina would like Jay. Too bad she'd only met J.R. She took a deep breath. We only have another couple of months until our contract is up, and I know all of us have had our share of fights, but we're still a family, you know. If you need me, any of us, I'm sure we'd be there for you in a heartbeat. You know that, right? I didn't know that. And would they be there if they knew I'd been forced to lie to them this whole time? She nibbled on her lip as I nodded. Yeah, thanks, Selina. I'll remember that. She smiled and patted my arm, then made a face as she wiped her hand on her towel. Ooh, you're sweaty. I flexed my biceps beside my head. That's what happens when you work out. Hey, I work out. I just don't sweat out of every pore. Ugh, men, you're all gross. She walked away, shaking her head. The camera that had been on us stayed on me. These were moments I hated when I just wanted to be alone, and I couldn't get away from that damn lens. I finished my cool-down and shut off the treadmill, then grabbed a towel and wiped down my face and chest. My legs weren't working properly, and I had to stand leaning against the mirror for a minute or two. When I lifted my head, the camera was in my face. I glared into it flaring my nostrils before walking away. The camera didn't follow. The hot water pounded down on my protesting muscles. I'd gone overboard on the treadmill, that much was clear. I'd had to stop and grab a burger on the way back to my cabin, because my body was screaming at me to feed it after I'd depleted about all of my energy stores. Fuck, that was stupid. And the thing was, it hadn't done one damn bit of good. Quinn was still on my mind. As was my contract. And my future. And my family. This whole fucking ship was starting to make me claustrophobic. I didn't know what was more selfish anymore. To fuck over my contract and my family and go after what I wanted, or keep towing the line and hurt Quinn. Didn't he deserve to know I thought he was amazing? Or maybe he didn't. Maybe he thought I was scum now and my opinion would mean shit to him. I turned off the water, dried myself, and dressed quickly. I sat on my bed and thought about staying there the whole night. Not leaving this tiny cabin didn't sound any more appealing than getting out of it. Shit. I stood up, about to walk out, when the cabin door flew open and Levi marched inside. When he spotted me, he froze. No one spoke for a good ten seconds. The thing was, I knew Levi. He wasn't at a loss for words. He was waiting for me to say something, probably involving a word that started with S and ended in Y. Hey, I said first. He placed a hand on his hip, 
his expression stubbornly impassive. So, yeah, I said. I'm sorry. Again with the no-talking thing while those green eyes threatened to level me where I stood. I sighed. I'm sorry I was an asshole. What I did was uncalled for, but it had nothing to do with the fact that you two are guys, okay? Levi raised an eyebrow. I ran a hand over my shaved head. I'm dealing with something personal, and I took it out on you today. That's no excuse, but there it is. Levi always had to be the nice guy. Immediately his face softened. Is it Darren? Is there anything I can do? Want to talk about it? It's not Darren. And don't do that. Don't be nice to me when you have every right to punch me in the face. His eyes narrowed a little at that. I'm a pacifist. The man hated any violence, and it was one of the reasons his sister's deployment was such a sore spot for him. He wanted her back, safe and sound. Right, well, you should make me sleep on the floor, then. Levi smiled. Look, I know you, so while that outburst pissed me off, I'm not going to hold it against you. Quinn, on the other hand, he shrugged. You owe him a whopper of an apology. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to avoid. We're only on the cruise for five more days. Don't be that guy, Levi said, his voice tight. Don't be that guy who will ruin another person's vacation because you're too chicken shit to say you're sorry. He was upset and he deserves an apology. It wasn't that I was too chicken shit. It was that I didn't trust myself around him. I clenched my jaw. Fine. I'm sure I'll run into him. Levi moved to his suitcase and rummaged around, then pulled out a tank top. He changed quickly before fixing his hair in the mirror. You can tell him yourself. He'll be here in a minute. What? A light tapping sounded from our open door. Quinn stepped inside. Levi? But like déjà vu, he froze when he saw me. I chewed my lip as Quinn stared at me with impossibly wide eyes. He'd done something to his hair, so it was brushed back with a bump in the front. He wore a thin tank top, a pair of board shorts, and flip-flops. I swallowed and glanced at Levi. Um, I'll just... Quinn motioned behind him. Wait out here, I guess. No, Quinn. He stopped, but his eyes were downcast. I hated that, like he was afraid of me. I blew out a breath and looked at Levi helplessly. Can you, um, give us a minute? Levi wanted to roll his eyes. I knew it. Instead, he pursed his lips. Sure. He walked over to Quinn. J.R. wants to talk to you, and I promise he'll behave himself. Want to meet me there? Quinn swallowed. Sure. Levi nodded, and with one last look at me, he left the cabin. I motioned for Quinn to step inside, and he did, shutting the door behind him. And then, I was alone in my cabin with the guy I couldn't stop thinking about. Chapter 9 Quinn I wasn't scared of the guy. I wasn't. But I was done with his hot and cold bullshit. I didn't need that. Not on the trip of a lifetime with my best friend. I took a deep breath and blurted out exactly what I thought, not thinking about how badly this conversation could go. You're an asshole. He jerked a little, as if my words surprised him, then scratched the back of his neck. His gaze on his feet. He wore a T-shirt with the sleeves cut off, raggedy jean shorts, and Converse high tops. Even looking like a scrub, he was hot. Damn him. I waited, an apology on the tip of my tongue for that outburst. If it would have been anyone other than J.R., I would have been rushing to apologize. Except I didn't want to apologize. And with J.R., I didn't immediately feel the need to cover up my discomfort. 
It seemed to take ages before he mumbled softly. I am. I hadn't expected him to agree so easily. I still had more steam to burn off, more names to call him. He was supposed to defend himself so I could continue to rail him. Yeah. I shifted my weight from foot to foot like a boxer. Yeah, you are. God, I was lame. I couldn't even come up with any more insults. He raised his head, and the look in his eyes effectively cooled the anger pulsing through my veins. He looked wrecked and vulnerable, and unlike any time I'd ever seen him. J.R. Stepping closer, he swallowed slowly and licked his full lips. The heat of his body soaked through the fabric of my T-shirt, igniting my skin. He towered over me, and for a split second fear pierced me. Except there was a look in his eyes, a look that made me peer up at him to try to get a better read on his mood. J.R., I asked again. What is it about you? He said quietly, his head tilted down so our gazes met. I squinted up at him. What is it about me that makes you act nice to me one minute and then be an asshole the next? A small upward tilt of his lips. We already established that I'm an asshole. I know, but I wanted to remind you. I also wanted to remind you that you are nice to me sometimes. He smiled then, all white teeth. I couldn't back up any more as my shoulder blades touched the wall. Our chests brushed as he leaned down. No. What is it about you that makes me want to say fuck it? Fuck what? His long lashes shuddered over his eyes, hiding those deep brown depths from me. He bent his head and I stared at the top of it, at the hair he kept shaved close to the scalp. He was standing so close to me, and just a minute before his heated gaze had scared me. Maybe I was reading this whole situation wrong. Maybe he'd punch me in the face, but I had to try. I raised my hand and laid it gently on his head, massaging my fingers into his scalp. His hair was soft under my palm as the skin shifted over his skull. His shoulders hitched once as he inhaled sharply. I paused my ministrations, but he didn't move, frozen in his place like a giant wax sculpture. So I continued to move my fingers and watched the tension leach out of his shoulders as he groaned softly. This way, I didn't have to see his eyes and he didn't have to see mine. We could probably still convince ourselves this was a touch between friends, that this wasn't... gay. But then J.R. took a deep breath and lifted his head, and when his gaze met mine, I knew there was no coming back from this. Not when he placed his palms on the wall beside my head, not when his face drew closer, and especially not when his lips brushed mine. Quinn, he whispered. Yeah? There was a beat of silence. Fuck it. And then there was no gentle brush of his lips on mine. There was no mistaking this as anything but a kiss full of lust and pent-up attraction, and want... He devoured my mouth, opening it with his lips and dipping his tongue inside to meet mine. I lifted my hands and grabbed his head, digging my fingers into the skin behind his ears, holding his head to mine because, holy shit, we were kissing. Something about making out. A hot body pressed against mine, melted away my restraint. It always did. And this was no exception. As I pulled him closer, as I hooked a leg around his thigh, wanting to climb him, anything to get him closer, anything to grind my hips against his, get some friction on my neglected dick. Fuck yes, he whispered against my mouth as he grabbed the back of my thighs and wrapped my legs around his waist. 
He braced my back against the wall and continued to plunder my mouth, rolling his hips against mine. I couldn't breathe, with his chest pressed against mine, and I didn't want to. He was grinding into me harder, never letting go of my mouth as his big hands kneaded my ass. I cursed clothing, I cursed this tiny cabin, and I cursed. Wait! J.R. was straight. And taken. With all the measly willpower I had in my body, I wrenched my mouth away from his, breathing hard, my face tingling from his lips and his stubble. What's going on? J.R.'s pupils were blown, his lips swollen and wet. My hands slipped down to his chest, and he slowly let my feet drop to the floor. He squeezed his eyes shut, hiding the panic swirling there. Shit! I pushed him away, even though I didn't want to, and he let himself stumble backward. I pressed my palms to the wall at my back and worked on breathing steady and not freaking out. Are you curious? Sure, that was the best kiss of my life, but I'm not keen on being J. R. Butler's experiment. His gaze was pained when it flicked to mine. It's not what you think. It's not what I think? Seriously? That's your line right now? Quinn, a loud knock, rattled the door, making me jump about a foot in the air. J.R. He rubbed his forehead, his gaze on me. What, dog? Need you on the deck? In a minute now, buddy. J.R. took a heavy breath and clenched his fists. Okay. He turned away and I stared down at the floor. When his shadow fell across me, I hesitated. I'd taken a leap a moment ago. I was so far off the path, I was cutting through overgrown weeds with a machete. I inhaled sharply and looked up. Gone were the glazed eyes, the soft expression. His jaw was tight, face impassive, and when he spoke, my heart sank into the floor. Just wait five minutes and leave. Those six words brought back every single emotion I swore I'd left behind with Alexander. I was a dirty secret. That was all I was worth. When would I ever be loved by someone who was proud of me? I managed to cobble together what dignity I had left when all I wanted to do was claw off my skin. I felt disgusting. Fine. My voice sounded odd. A glimmer of human flickered over his face before he returned to Cyborg. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Any time. Before he walked out of the cabin, he scribbled on a piece of paper and pressed it into the palm of my hand, then opened the door and walked out, shutting it behind him. I shoved the paper into my pocket without looking at it and glared around the room. I was tempted to do some destruction, but that wasn't fair to Levi. So I stared at the clock, waiting for five minutes to pass, so I could leave and take a shower as soon as possible. When Jess came back from yoga, her blonde hair swinging from a rare ponytail, I was sitting on my bed staring at the piece of paper in my hands. I hadn't shown up at the party with Levi, because after I read the note I knew I wasn't fit for public consumption. Jess frowned at me as she walked into the bathroom. She washed her face quickly and walked out, drying herself with a towel. Quinn, you feeling okay? I ran my fingers over the back of the note, where the force of the pen had almost broken through the paper. Please let me explain. Meet me at our spot tomorrow, it said. My mind replayed the kiss again, like it had for the last hour, the brush of his lips on mine, his taste, his desire for me, of all people. I'd been so angry when he'd discarded me, but now I wondered if he'd been doing it to protect both of us. This was exhausting, though, to second-guess everything J.R. did, wondering if it was really how he felt, or if he was putting on an act for the cameras. 
Queen? She sat down beside me and peered at the piece of paper. What's that about? Who's it from? I rolled my lips between my teeth. J.R. She narrowed her eyes. Is he going to apologize for that stunt he pulled at the contest? I wished that were the only problem between us now. But he'd kissed me. J.R. Butler had kissed me. The dance competition paled in comparison to our issues now. I couldn't tell Jess that, though. Um, yeah, I think so. He runs hot and cold, doesn't he? She stood up and pawed through her suitcase. I know I was hard on him, but now I'm thinking the whole cast is stressed out. I can't imagine my life in front of the camera all the time, you know? I nodded. Yeah. I folded the note and slipped it inside my pocket. You think I should go? She peeled off her yoga clothes and pulled on a big T-shirt and a pair of sleep shorts. I'd go. Look, I know you and you're analyzing every scenario and the fifty million ways things could go wrong, but I'm sure he just wants to apologize. I nodded. I'd never had so many decisions to make in my life. When my future was stretched in front of me, clear as day, there was no need to take leaps of faith. Maybe J.R. was gay and closeted. Maybe he cheated on his girlfriend all the time. Maybe he wanted to hook up while on the ship. That wasn't what I wanted, though. I didn't need J.R. to declare me to the world after we'd known each other for five days, but I couldn't let him touch me knowing he was cheating on a girlfriend. No way. The safest decision would be to forget that blistering kiss and avoid J.R. for the rest of the cruise. Jack off to the fantasy of him touching me, knowing it'd never be reality. I dropped my head in my hands and groaned. I wanted to spill my guts to Jess, but I couldn't do that without betraying J.R. You need a bodyguard? I'll go with you. I smiled at Jess as she leaned against the wall and shook my head. No, it's okay. By the way, how was yoga? Good, except Casey was there and he laid his mat right beside me and made a show of staring at my boobs and ass the whole time. I wrinkled my nose. Ew. Right? After his shit fit? Why does he insist on talking to me? Do you still think he's hot? She hesitated, and I pointed a finger at her while bouncing on my bed. Aha, uh -huh, you do. Throwing a pair of jeans at me that were on the floor, she growled, I hate you. Do not. She stomped her foot like a kid. Why does he have to be hot still? Why couldn't he get a super big pimple in the middle of his forehead right now? Good skin care regimen? She laughed and slid to the floor on her butt, bent knees in front of her. I don't know. J.R. told me they aren't who they appear to be on camera. I shrugged. I'm trying to remember they have bad days just like us, right? They aren't any different from us except they have a camera in their faces. Jess played with the ends of her ponytail. Yeah, I guess so. My hand strayed to my pocket, and I tapped the outside, listening to the crinkle of the paper inside. I'd just made the decision on whether I'd meet J.R. on the deck. I hoped it wasn't the wrong one. Chapter 10 J.R. The sun rising out of the ocean cast a yellow and orange glow over the calm waters of the Atlantic. I picked at the sea bands on my wrist, which I'd worn since the day Quinn had given them to me. It was either that or feel like shit for the entire trip. I settled my elbows on the railing and watched the water lap at the side of the ship. I shivered, the height doing weird things to my head and stomach, like I needed that, since I was already nervous as hell. The last time I'd been on the deck at this hour, I had been sick as a dog, until Quinn had appeared. And now I was here, hoping he'd show up. Had he looked at the piece of paper I'd given him? Or had he looked at it, cursed me out, then thrown it away? 
He could be in his cabin right now, sleeping peacefully, while I sweated my ass off on the deck. That would probably be better for both of us, but he deserved an explanation, one where I didn't feel rushed or have a camera breathing down my neck. The cameras couldn't hear what I had to say. I glanced at my watch. 5.59 a.m. I was going to be here for a while because I planned on giving him as much time as I could. The hum of the ship's engine was soothing, as well as the sound of the water. I closed my eyes, lifted my head, and inhaled the salty air. Hey, said a voice behind me. I looked over my shoulder to see Quinn standing on the deck about ten feet away. He wore a pair of mesh shorts and a faded Nike T-shirt that said, Just do it. His hair was sleep-rumpled, and there was a line on his face made by the pillowcase. He must have known because he rubbed at it self-consciously with his palm while his gaze dropped to the floor. Hey, I said back. He didn't answer. I knew it was my turn to apologize again. He wasn't meeting my eyes, but at least he'd shown up. He was willing to hear me out. The thing was, I had no idea where to start. So I blurted out the first thing I wanted him to know. There's no Andrea. His gaze darted up quickly, his mouth dropping open. After a moment, his lips turned down and his brows furrowed. What do you mean? She's... I waved a hand. Made up. Fake. A cover. Quinn took a step toward me. Once. Twice. Until he was close enough that I could see the individual freckles on his face. A cover for what? A cover because I'm... Fuck! Was I really going to say this? Quinn could spread the rumor all over the entire ship and I'd be screwed. But if there was one thing I prided myself on from growing up in Jersey, it was learning to read people. And fuck me if I was wrong, but I swore I could read Quinn, and my read told me I could trust him. I'm not straight, I said finally. I'm bi, actually. Quinn's face was frozen in this weird purgatory between shock and confusion. I'm sorry, what? I'm bi. You're by. Yeah, but you're not out? This was where shit got complicated. I placed my hands on my hips and looked down the deck of the ship. The chairs were perfectly aligned, the floor clean. The opposite of my life. I sank down into an empty lounge chair facing the ocean and braced my feet on the end of the chair, resting my forearms on my bent knees, my head back, so all I saw was sky. There was a scraping sound, a jolt as Quinn's chair met mine. And then he sat beside me. I felt his gaze on the side of my face for a moment until he, too, turned to scan the cloudless sky. I silently thanked him for letting me tell my story to the few seagulls that flew overhead in front of us. I wasn't sure how I would have gotten it all out while looking into his eyes. I'm not sure how to answer whether I'm out or not. I always knew I liked girls, and in middle school I started noticing my attraction to guys. It took a long time for me to sort out that I wanted to be friends with guys and fuck them. I guess. I laughed at that, and when I glanced at Quinn he was turned on his hip, facing me, those blue eyes not missing a thing. I continued my conversation with the sky. But it took me longer to realize not everyone thought like me, you know? I made an odd comment to my brother, and instead of brushing it off he talked me through it, and that was when I realized not everyone looked at the world like I did that there were people who looked at women one way and men another. I wasn't like that. I took a deep breath and felt a bead of sweat roll down my temple. Where we grew up, people weren't gay, and they certainly weren't what I was. So I kept my attraction to guys on the back burner and dated girls. 
It was okay, but I hated not exploring that part of me, you know. Even though I really liked girls, I felt like I was lying to them. They'd be like, oh, damn, that Idris Elba is fine. And I wanted to be like, fuck yeah, I know, right? I'd hit that. Quinn laughed, and I turned to him with a smile. So when I graduated and moved to California to try to act, I met guys who liked guys. I'd date girls, too, and I was open about being bi. For once in my life, I felt fucking liberated. It wasn't just that I could date guys now. It was that I could say out loud who I was, you know? Quinn didn't move a muscle. And then slowly, his fingers trembling, he reached over and took my hand, threading our fingers together. He rested them on the chair's arm between us. I squeezed once. He squeezed back. He didn't speak like he knew I had more to say. I wiped my hand across my forehead. And then I made a mistake. A big, dumb one. But I was young and impressionable. I got an agent and he told me about Trip League. But he said they didn't want another gay guy. They already had a gay guy. And man, fucking forget putting a black queer on a show, you know? We'd blow people's minds. People would rather assume unicorns exist. I heard the venom in my voice and realized I was squeezing Quinn's hand too hard when he made a sound. Sorry, I said, relaxing my muscles. It's okay, he whispered back. It's really okay. So I signed a contract saying I was straight and that I'd stay that way. J.R. Shit! His voice was incredulous, and I had to make him see. I needed him to understand. Look, I grew up a middle-class black kid in Jersey surrounded by white people. I was used to compromising all the damn time, like, don't even bother going in that store because they'll assume you're there to steal shit, or don't even try to beat that kid to be a starter for the basketball team because his rich daddy is on the school board, or don't try to rise above your station in life. Don't you know what you are? My voice didn't sound like my own anymore. It sounded bitter and jaded and cynical. I hated what this whole situation was doing to me. I was told I should be grateful for this opportunity, and I believed, after a lifetime of being told I was shit, that this was more than I deserved, so I compromised. Quinn's thumb rubbed the skin on the back of my hand in support. What about when this season is over? I laughed, bitterly. I'd planned to come out. Fuck my agent. But now that we're saving up for Darren's bone marrow surgery, I don't know what I'm going to do. My agent called me the other day, told me he got me an audition for after this season is over, but that I'd have to stay quiet about being bisexual. I thought I'd be home free, but... I shook my head. I won't be. I'm not sure I'll ever be because every decision I make impacts how much money I make, how much money I can send home to save up for Darren's operation. I dropped my head in my hands, too tired to hold it up anymore, as I purged everything I'd been keeping inside me since I signed that contract at nineteen. I was twenty-two now, and felt like I was forty-five. I can't believe I just told you all that. I whispered. There was silence for a minute before Quinn said, Why did you tell me? I lifted my head slowly, my body aching like I was ancient. His blue gaze met mine. Because you're the first person other than my castmates who didn't make me feel like you were using me for something. Quinn I wanted to offer answers, a solution. I wanted to give J.R. something that took the hopeless look out of his eyes. I couldn't, though. I was lucky in craps, but I wasn't a miracle worker. Wrapping my brain around his life wasn't easy. He'd taken a huge leap moving to California, all so he could pursue his dream. In a few months I'd have a degree, and if I got the balls I'd take a leap too. What I didn't have? 
someone who looked at me like J.R. did. And that was what I wanted. I bit my lip. Well, I'm using you. He raised an eyebrow, his expression softening to amusement. Oh, yeah? How? I had to shut off everything in my brain that was screaming at me to stop talking and walk away, to melt into the background like I always did where it was safe. I couldn't do that. Not now. Not when J.R. had spilled his guts to me. So I swallowed and did everything I could to be as honest as possible. You notice me. No one ever notices me. His eyelids fell to half-mast. I did notice you, he said softly. I still do. I inhaled sharply as his words warmed my chest. And I guess I liked how it felt, how it feels. Are we really using each other when it's an even exchange? I guess not, but I hate this for you. But this is your life right now. He leaned closer and bumped his forehead to my temple. I thought I was in the home stretch. I was so close to the end I could taste it, and now I don't know what to do because another marathon has been tacked onto this race, and all I want to do is take a detour with you. He angled his head so his gaze met mine, and I lost myself in those warm brown eyes. I want you. Like I haven't wanted anyone in a long time. He shook his head, the tension in his body spilling to my own so that my shoulders began to rise up to my ears. This is fucking crazy. I did not think. I leaped. Grabbing his shoulders, I hauled myself across his lap and straddled his hips. He stared up at me, silently begging, pleading. So I kissed him. This kiss wasn't like the frenzied unleashing from yesterday in my cabin. This was slow, my tongue swiping his lips before pressing inside. His hand brushed my jaw, then cupped my face, his fingertips pressing into the muscles there as I inhaled him. When I pulled back, my vision was a little blurry and my chest heaved, smashing into his with every breath. J.R. J., he whispered. I blinked. What? My first name is actually J. J A Y. My name is J. Ryan Butler. He heaved a breath like this was his last gasp of truth. You can call me J. I didn't know what to do with this information. Oh. His fingers brushed at the mole I knew was on my right cheek. Why'd you kiss me? I ducked my head. I wanted to. Look. He began. I closed my eyes briefly because this was the moment where he'd tell me he couldn't do this, that his job was on the line, his brother's health, and I knew I wasn't worth costing him either of those. I slid from his lap, but his hands clamped over my hips. Wait. Let me talk. I shook my head. It's okay. You can't get caught doing this with me. And I can't do this again. Hide. I did it for two years with my ex-boyfriend, and I can't do it again. He tugged me closer and cocked his head. You had to hide? I hated talking about this, but he had to understand. Well, I didn't even realize at first that we were hiding. He was my first boyfriend. I thought that was how it was done, sneaking into each other's rooms, not meeting each other's families, never speaking in public. Jesus Christ, Quinn. I shrugged, even as the familiar sting of shame crept over my skin. Jay gripped my face, forcing me to look at him. I won't make you do that. You deserve someone who will hold your hand at a restaurant, who will be proud to call you his. I... He hesitated. I'd be that man for you. If I could. But I can't. Not here. 
not now. I nodded, my throat too tight to talk, because the sincerity in his eyes, the fierceness in his tone, told me he was speaking from the heart. Damn this cruise and his job and his contract. Damn it all. I slid off his lap and he let me, even though I could tell he didn't want to. You'll find that guy, Quint. I know it. I stood up, and he slowly rose to his feet. You will too, Jay, I said, backing away from him as he stood with his hands shoved in his pockets. Once word gets around you're into guys and girls, you won't be able to keep any of them off of you. I gestured toward his body. Just look at you. He clenched his jaw, and his face twisted into a grimace. Quinn. I kept backing away, even as my heart wanted to surge back into his arms for one last kiss. Thanks for everything, Jay. Have a great rest of the cruise. I turned around and walked away, head down. I listened for his voice calling me back on the breeze. One word and I would have done it all over again. I would hide and lie. Because Jay wasn't Alexander. And I knew now, with a bone-deep certainty, that I wasn't the same Quinn. Chapter 11 J.R. Quinn was playing pool volleyball, or whatever it was called with the net in the water. I stayed away from pools, so I'd never played. He and Jess were against two other girls. Their laughter rang out over the pop music playing near the bar. Quinn skimmed his arm across the top of the water, in between a play, soaking Jess in an arc of water, who squealed and splashed back. The ball came sailing over the net, and they ran into each other trying to get it. I watched them with envy. I had been drinking with Paisley on the deck and was on my way back to my cabin to shower when I'd caught sight of his hair, and now I was sitting down on a chair, out of view, watching him play volleyball. This mooning was ridiculous. We were on day four, over halfway, and all I had to show for it was a kiss. Okay, two kisses. Someone sat down on the chair beside me, and I didn't even bother turning at the sound of Levi's voice. Quinn had actually scored a point for once and was trying to do a dance in the water. Jess is pretty hot, isn't she? Levi said. Mm-hmm. I mumbled, playing along. Yeah, the blue eyes and the red hair are really gorgeous. And the freckles, I murmured. Quinn stepped back to serve. He hit the net and groaned, dunking his head under the water. When he surfaced, he slicked back his hair and grinned at Jess. Yeah, the freckles, Levi said. Muscles, too. Yep. His biceps shifted as he stretched out his arms to volley the ball back. Hey, J.R., Levi said. He was messing up my concentration. Damn, what do you want, Levi? His eyes were wide, lighter green in the brightness of the sun. Uh... Do you want to rewind that conversation we just had and either confirm or deny? Think fast. I replayed in my head, and a deep chill washed over my body. My face must have shown my shock because Levi lifted a hand. Dude, it's okay. I was already up, striding swiftly off the deck, not knowing what to do or say or think, but needing to get away from what I'd just done what I had revealed. I could barely see through my haze of panic, my body going into emergency mode as everything shut down to prevent myself from fucking up further. The seal was broken this morning with Quinn, and I was nothing but a leaky pipe now, spilling my guts all over the damn place. Footsteps pounded behind me. Levi called my name, but I was pulling open the doors, descending the steps two at a time and throwing myself into the elevator. As the doors began to close, I saw Levi vaulting down the stairs after me, and the last thing I saw before the elevator shut was Levi's concerned face, his mouth open, saying my name. I sagged against the back of the elevator, rubbing my face over my hands. 
I could lie to Levi, come up with some reason why I agreed about the red hair and blue eyes. And freckles, I could do that. But I was so tired of the lies, of the omissions of fucking everything. When I reached our cabin, I went right to the shower and turned it on as hot as I could stand it. I stayed under the scalding spray for what felt like an hour, but was probably only twenty minutes. When I walked into the bedroom with my towel around my hips, Levi sat on my bed waiting for me. I knew he'd be there. He didn't say anything, and I wondered how many times I'd have to do this in my life— come out. Would life always be about coming out? It sounded exhausting to think about, having to explain this over and over again. Although Levi could probably help me with that, if I told him the truth. So I didn't think about what came before this or what was to come after. I stood with my back to him as I dressed. I took a deep breath. So I'm by. Silence buffeted my back like ocean waves. It hadn't been as hard to say those words to him as I thought it'd be. I lied, because under contract I'm supposed to be straight. No one could know, but apparently after years of keeping this silent, I'm cracking a little. I laughed, and it sounded slightly hysterical to me. I turned around, wearing a pair of shorts and a T-shirt, then held my hands out to my sides. So that's that. You caught me out. My voice held a little of a challenge in it, but Levi's expression was anything but angry. His face crumpled like a paper bag before he leapt up and ran into me, wrapping his arms around my back in the tightest hug I'd ever had in my life. I wasn't sure what to do at first, and then settled for returning the hug, grabbing his shoulders and laying my cheek on his hair. I accepted his affection, the empathy that was rolling off him in waves. He knew what this was costing me. J.R. Yeah? I hate this for you. I closed my eyes. I hate it for me, too. He pulled back, and although his face was red, his eyes were dry. And now his face was tightening up a little, his lips thinning. Then he punched me in the shoulder. Hard! Why the hell did you sign that contract, and why the hell haven't you told me until now? And does Andrea know? I started at the beginning, like I had told Quinn, explaining there was no Andrea, and signing the contract had clearly been a dumb move. Three years ago, gay marriage wasn't legal. It's crazy to think how far the gay community has come in a short amount of time. I rubbed my jaw. I didn't tell you about me because I didn't know how to and I was afraid if I told one of you, I'd tell you all, and then I could get in deep shit. He was pouting. I really liked Andrea. Me too. She was fucking perfect, because she didn't exist. He laughed. So you were out before signing the show? Yeah, for a little bit. No one knew who I was then. I always wondered if one of them would recognize me and come forward, but no one ever did. Other than my family, no one knows me as anything but straight in my hometown. And now you... What? Have a crush on Quinn? I stared at the floor and mumbled. We kissed. When I looked up, Levi had his hand cupped behind his ear. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I didn't hear you, because I could have sworn you just said you kissed. Can you say that louder? I cleared my throat and glared. We kissed. Well, shit. He crossed his arms over his chest. Sad I missed that. Look, it doesn't matter. I'm still under contract and there are cameras everywhere. There's not going to be any more kissing. How big is your crush on this guy? Big. On a scale of one to Matt Bomer, how big is this crush? I rolled my eyes. Eight or nine. Levi was shaking his head. No, see, this isn't okay. He began to pace the small cabin space in front of me. We've all been fucking pigeonholed into characters, and I'm fucking sick of it. Nothing is wrong with being a feminine gay, but that's not me all the time, 24-7. That's all they show, though. 
They show you angry in literally every episode, although now I see you have a legitimate reason to be angry. Casey is like a perfect angel, and we all know that's not fucking true. I'm so sick of this shit. He was raging now, stomping his feet with every step. Levi, it's... Don't you dare say it's okay, he said, pinning me with a finger. Don't! Okay, fine, but what the hell do you expect me to do? He threw up his hands. I don't know, but I'm sick of all of us bending over and taking it. For the record, I'd jump at the chance to bend over and take it. Levi stared at me. Then he erupted into laughter, and even I had to admit, that was pretty damn funny. So what are you going to do? He asked as he wiped away his tears. I can't do anything. You know I'm sending money home for Darren. Coming out would affect them way more than me now. And Quinn doesn't want to hide. He told me he hid for two years for a closeted ex-boyfriend. I'm not doing that to him. Levi bit his lip and murmured, Oh, Quinn. This morning I told him I couldn't, that there was too much at stake. My agent wants me to try out for this part after this season is over, but it's for the T.W., so I'll have to keep playing the straight actor part. He really thinks you won't get roles if you come out as bi? It's hard enough that I'm black. Levi's eyes narrowed. It's not any of their business, though. You should just... Do your thing. I shook my head. You know that's not how it works. Maybe a decade in the future, but now it would be a thing. You know it. Levi growled under his breath, clearly as frustrated as me. It's not even just about wanting to be with Quinn. Or another guy. This is about me. It's about being black and queer and compromising, because that's all I've ever done in my fucking life, you know? Sympathy would have pissed me off, but Levi was angry right along with me. I know! Well, I don't know, but I understand what you're saying. I shook my head. I was so sure this morning, but I don't know. My skin is tight, and I want to scream. I want to scream until I'm hoarse that this isn't who I am, that I'm so much more than the J.R. Butler they edit me to be on TV. Levi stepped forward and hugged me. When he pulled back, he gazed up at me. Life's short, man. His expression was sober. Life's too short to be something other than who you are. He was right, but I couldn't find a way around all the obstacles in my way to get where I wanted to be. Quinn My thumb hovered over the call button. My body listed to the side, and I righted it before glancing at Jess. She was covering up a laugh. This is all your fault, I muttered. She was the one who'd plied me with Mamma Mia's all afternoon, and I'd happily tossed them back in an effort to prevent myself from crawling my way to J.R.'s cabin. Calling my parents in this state was probably a bad idea, but I had missed five calls, and they didn't take well to being ignored. I also was in a fuck-it kind of mood. Shit, I really need to call them back. They probably have the captain's number on speed dial, and they'll call him if I don't return their calls. I paused. Is that what you call the headship person? Captain? What else would you call him? Um, I don't know, Blackbeard? Jess clapped a hand over her mouth, then stumbled. Shit! I groaned, the cabin spinning slightly. This is going to be bad, so bad. We're on spring break, Quinn. You shouldn't even have to call your parents, but if you must, then they have to understand if you're slightly inebriated. I gave her a look. Her lips twisted to the side. Okay, so maybe the Mathers don't understand the concept of spring break. Definitely not. I took a deep breath and wiggled my finger over my phone. Here goes. I managed to find the call button as well as my parents' number. As the phone rang, I tapped my fingers on my knee. The receiver clicked. Quinn? My mom's voice came over the line. Is that you? Yep, I said. It's me. I drew out the last word in a sing-song tone. When the hell did I start talking like that?
I widened my eyes at Jess, who mouthed, Too much. I nodded and focused on my mom's voice. How's the food? Are you feeling okay? Be careful and don't eat anything that looks bad. I heard food poisoning is common on cruise ships. Um, okay, I mumbled. Everything's fine. John! My mom yelled, her mouth away from the receiver. Quinn's on! Another click as my dad picked up the phone somewhere else in the house. You staying hydrated, son? I was totally hydrated. By alcohol. Uh, yep. Honey, please don't say uh so much, my mom said. It makes you sound uneducated. I sighed and rubbed my forehead. There were times I wish I had a sibling to take some of the brunt of my parents' attention. This was one of those times. You have those bands your mother bought you, right? Yep, I answered, still rubbing my forehead. And I checked on the inspection of this ship. I zoned out, completely, utterly zoned out. All my life I'd played into their worries and their fears. As the alcohol buzzed in my brain and my best friend stood in front of me, taking time out of her spring break to listen to me on the phone with my parents, I couldn't do it any more. I didn't have it in me. I'd taken the sea bands and fretted with my mother over getting sick on the boat. I'd packed with her over my shoulder, urging me to throw in this and that and extra underwear. Now, with some distance between them on a trip so far out of my comfort zone, I wanted a week without their voices in my ear. On the phone or in my head, I was twenty-one goddamn years old. You know, I said, cutting off my father, who was still talking about health violations on cruise ships and God knew what else. I think they just rang the bell for dinner. Jess glanced around, straining like she was trying to hear the phantom bell. A laugh bubbled up in my throat and she turned to me with a confused look. She caught on and began to giggle. I tried to hold in the laugh as best as I could, especially as my parents began to dither about this bell. Is that how they notify you when food is ready? That doesn't sound right. Janet, I'm sure they have it all figured out. I'm just saying it's a little odd is all. Fuck, I needed to get off the phone right now. Okay, so they said they're running out of clams, so Jess and I gotta go. Smell them first, my mother yelled. Take care, son, my father said as I ended the call. I dropped the phone to the floor and stuck my head in my hands as Jess collapsed on her knees, struggling to catch her breath through her laughter. Did they really think there was a bell? Oh, God, Jess, I can't with them any more. I threw back my head and wailed, I can't! Her eyes widened, and she thrust her fists in the air. I've waited years for you to say that. Oh, my God, fucking finally cut the cord, Quinn! Hey, I protested. I'm sorry, she sucked in a breath. I'm so sorry, but I've waited so long to say that to you. I wanted to whimper. It's not like I asked for them to be like this. She walked on her knees until she was in front of me, and when she spoke, her voice was softer. I know, sweetie, I do. You know I love you, but you've enabled them to be like that. You're 21 now. You're graduating college. You'll be living on your own with a real, actual, adult job soon. I know. I never wanted to hurt their feelings. You know I hate confrontation. You don't have to hurt their feelings, but a healthy distance is important. You're amazing just like you are, but I know there's another amazing part of you that hasn't been able to breathe. It's time to breathe, Quinn. I thought back to everything I'd done since I'd been on this trip. I'd put myself out there more than I thought I would, more than I thought I could. This whole time I'd been taking risks without realizing it. I hadn't necessarily stopped analyzing every consequence, but I'd been willing to accept when something went bad. After graduation, I'd been offered a job with a marketing firm. They'd given me several locations where I could work. Right at home in North Carolina was one. New York was another. And California was the third and final option. My parents assumed I'd stay in North Carolina, save money and live with them. Save money for what, exactly? I didn't even know. 
What kind of life would I have still living at home? I'd never take a leap again, not ever. Jess? Yeah? I... I think I might take the California job. Her eyes grew so big that she looked like an anime character. I held up a hand. I said might. She nodded her head comically. Might is good. Might is still a very good word. It's fucking scary to think of being on my own. Of taking that leap, you know? Quinn? She was nearly pleading. It would be so good for you. I know. And if it wasn't for this trip, I don't know if I would have reached the point where I could say might about moving across the country on my own. Jess hugged me and I squeezed her back, breathing in the scent of her air and loving the familiarity of my best friend's arms around me. When she hopped up and announced she was going to shower before we grabbed dinner, I stayed sitting on my bed, turning my phone in my hands. Already my body felt lighter with the knowledge that I was taking some ownership of my life, making my decisions. Later that night, we sat at the bar after a particular massive buffet dinner. I leaned back and rubbed my tight skin. Ugh! I feel like a whale, like an actual Moby Dick. Jess groaned, her head propped up on her fist, resting on the bar. I think I didn't need that last piece of chocolate cake. Probably not. We're pathetic. I wondered where Jay was. I liked that I had the permission to call him that, and also the knowledge that he kissed really well. He noticed me, and I made him feel special. Jay was so much more interesting than J.R. In the corner of the bar, a crew member was currently setting up a karaoke machine in the far corner. Oh, God, I'm not sure I'm ready for 532 versions of I Will Survive. I groaned. Jess giggled. The cameras were already in the bar. I spotted a couple of leaguers, in particular Adriana. I hadn't seen much of her on this trip, and when I did, she was reading on the lounge chairs on the deck. But as they began karaoke, she was first up on stage. She stood with Paisley, their dark heads bent as they found what song they wanted on the screen. They stepped back, microphones at the ready as the opening bars to Call Me Maybe filtered through the speakers. I groaned again and laid my head on my forearms. That was until I heard the first voice, and I straightened immediately to see Adriana singing like a dream to one of the catchiest pop songs in history. Holy shit! Jess said breathlessly. Girl can sing! The cheers began immediately, which didn't even phase Adriana. She continued to sing, holding the microphone casually, not even bothering to look at the screen as she sang to Paisley, who was merely window-dressing as she strutted around the stage like a backup dancer. By the end of the song, I was whistling. Jess was kneeling on her chair, cheering, and the entire bar was erupting. Adriana simply looked at the crowd, smirked, and handed the mic back to the DJ. A piercing whistle cut through the crowd as Casey walked into the bar, pumping the air with his fist. On his heels, Levi and J.R. Judging by the hard expression on his face, he was most definitely J.R. in that moment. I turned away immediately, draining the rest of my drink. My hands shook as I thought about whether I should say something or keep things the way they were. I didn't want things the way they were, which was me frustrated and J.R. miserable. Casey leaned against the bar beside Jess and looked her up and down. Hey, sweetheart. She glared at him. Excuse me? He didn't even try to pretend like he wasn't checking her out. He swiped his tongue over his bottom lip. Can I buy you a drink? Are you kidding right now? Uh, Casey. J.R. started to say, but Casey held up a hand, silencing him, which I thought was rude as hell. I made bug eyes at J.R., who just shrugged and muttered something like, It's his own funeral. Which, yeah, it would be, because Jess's cheeks were flushed and she was about to go off on him. You want to buy me a drink? 
after I accidentally spilled mine on you the first night here and you swore at me like a jackass? Casey frowned. I did that? He looked to Levi and J.R. Did I do that? Both nodded emphatically. Casey turned back to Jess. Huh. Well, let me make it up to you. A drink? A dance? A kiss on the deck at midnight with the hottest member of Trip League? Holy shit! You are the worst, Casey, Levi said, turning away in a huff and stalking away. Casey held out his hands. What? What did I say? Jess put her fists on her hips, her elbows cocked, something she did when she wanted to appear bigger, like a puffer fish. Look, buddy, you might think you're hot shit, but I don't care if you're on TV or in a fucking movie or walking the red carpet in can. I don't have time for assholes, so I don't have time for you. She whipped her head to the side and said to me, And now, I'm going to head down to the other end of the bar to talk with that guy who's been smiling at me all night, you know, like a nice person. With her blonde hair flowing behind her, she stalked off. I was going to have to high-five her later. Casey watched her go, then looked at me. If she's that mad, then that means there's some passion. She'll come around by the end of the cruise. I rolled my eyes and walked away, but not before glancing over my shoulder at J.R. His eyes were on me. I pulled out my phone and texted Jess that I was heading to the deck. I loved watching the ocean at night, the moon reflecting in the water while the rest of it, around us, looked black. There was a party on the deck, a huge crowd dancing to a DJ. The bar was packed, and I had to maneuver through the bodies to get to the front of the boat, where I hoped the coast was clear. Once I was past the throng of dancers, the bass of the music began to fade, and then it was just me at the front of the boat. Well, me and a couple making out hardcore, so they didn't even notice me when I walked by. I ran my hand along the railing and peered over the side, catching glimpses of whitecaps as the boat plowed through the water. Pulling back, I was debating if I should walk somewhere else when the heat of a body blanketed my back. I closed my eyes as the familiar scent of the person encircled me. Hey, Jay. How'd you know it was me? His deep voice rumbled down my spine. Your cologne? Soap? Whatever? Mm. I didn't care if anyone else saw me leave. Just you. I swallowed as I stared at the water. You wanted me to follow you? I did. Why? The phone call with my parents had cracked something inside me. I was riding a high of making my own decisions. My relationship with Alexander burned because I'd never consented to being in the closet with him. I'd never consented to being his dirty secret. I wanted Jay. I didn't care if it was only for a day. I was going into this with my eyes open. It wouldn't hurt my pride to hide from the cameras. I'd do it because I wanted to. I leaned back slightly, and his arms came to rest on the railing on either side of me, caging me in. Staring at the stars, twinkling in the clear night sky, I said, Because we only have one full day left and I know I'll regret it if I don't spend every minute of that day with you. He exhaled roughly and plastered the front of his body to my back. He was silent for a moment, and I rested my head on his chest. He took a deep breath, the moist heat coating the side of my head. I don't really know what it's like to be me. I hadn't been in L.A. for too long before I signed the contract, I was still finding my footing and learning who I was attracted to. His breath hitched. I'm scared as hell, Quinn. Of the future. Of myself. I knew what it was like to be scared of who you were. Scared of people finding out and treating you differently. I turned around and leaned back against the railing on my elbows so I could see his face. He was watching me, the moonlight cresting over his sharp cheekbones. The more I think about it, the more I... He grimaced. I'm worried I'm using the contract as an excuse. 
that even when it's not over my head, I'll still be scared. I still won't be able to be me. It's okay to be scared about that, I said. And what about Darren? How selfish am I that I'm willing to do this and hurt his chances? How do you know for sure this would kill your career? He blinked. Well, I don't know for sure. Does Darren know about you? Does he know you've been keeping this a secret? Yeah, he does. And he's thrilled for me that I can come clean soon. He doesn't know about the audition I have. I shook my head, the hot lick of fury beginning to rise. I can't imagine he'd want this for you. I can't imagine he'd want you to hide who you are, and I refuse to believe you wouldn't find roles just because you came out as bisexual. This is two thousand and fucking fifteen! My whole body was quivering at the unfairness of the situation. J.R. cupped my face, his expression tender as he brushed my jaw with his thumbs. You're hot when you're fired up. And just like that I wasn't angry anymore. I was turned on. Part of me thinks this is the wrong decision. But that's my rational side. My heart says fuck it. He took a deep breath. But we barely know each other, and it's asking a lot for you to hide from the cameras with me for the rest of this trip. It'd be basically you and me against the man. I grinned. You asking me to bet on you rather than the house? He leaned forward, his hand beside my elbow on the railing. I guess I am. I jutted my chin forward and lifted my eyebrows. I ever tell you I'm lucky? I think you might have mentioned it. I leaned forward, so our lips were an inch apart. Well, I'm betting on you. Chapter 12 J. He kissed me. Slow at first, a tease. His hot breath slid over my lips as he nibbled at the corner of my mouth. Our noses bumped. Our stubbled chins rasped together. I pressed a palm to his back and drew us closer, aligning our bodies. His head tilted back to accommodate our height difference, our mouths still fused. His scruff tickled my face. His hands gripped my waist. I smashed our hips together, needing to get closer, oh so much closer. The memory of the frenzied kiss in the cabin flashed through my mind when Quinn had responded like a dream, wrapping his long legs around my hips. I pulled back just enough to see his blown pupils. He licked his swollen lips and his gaze darted over my shoulders. I looked back, but we were alone on this section of the deck except for the couple that was still making out. By the sounds of their moans, they weren't paying us any attention. While the cameras had been busy with Adriana, I'd slipped past them. I couldn't remember where the live-feed cameras were on this part of the deck. Shit! Quinn's tongue lapped at my jaw, and I closed my eyes with a groan. I wanted this guy alone, and now, or I thought I might go out of my mind. Quinn? Hmm? He hummed against my skin as his lips coasted down my neck. I bit my lip to get myself in check. We can't be here. Doing this. He wasn't getting the urgency as his fingers traced my collarbone through my shirt. Where are we going to go? I grabbed his hand, and his gaze finally met mine. Is your luck contagious? Any of that going to rub off on me? He squeezed my hand. I guess we'll have to see. I took a deep breath and rolled my neck from side to side. To get back to the deck, we had to make our way past the party, hopefully without being seen. I wasn't quite sure how that was going to happen, but we'd figure it out. All right, this could get rough, but follow me, okay? His eyes widened. Ooh, an adventure. I shook my head. Fuck, you're cute. Don't call me cute. He grumbled as I ducked my head and led him from the deck. I dropped his hands once we got in sight of more people. I glanced over my shoulder, just in case of the cameras. He nodded, 
A sad smile on his lips. My heart ached, hoping he wasn't thinking of that asshole ex-boyfriend of his. I so wished this could be different, for both of us. I focused on getting back to my cabin. I wasn't as worried about the live-feed cameras because it was too dark for most of them. But if the camera crew found me, they came with lights, and that would be bad. To get to our cabins, I had to cross the top deck, then head down the flight of stairs to the lower deck, then into the ship. If the cameras catch us, can't they just... edit it out? Quinn asked. I shook my head. It's not that simple. I wish it was. I signed the contract, and I have to behave or they could sue me. Quinn fell silent after that, and when I glanced back at him his expression was pained. I led him up to the top deck where the DJ played dance music to a packed crowd. Most of them were well on their way to being drunk, so I melted into the crowd with Quinn. I pulled him to my body and swayed my hips, singing to the pop song the DJ was mixing with a popular R&B song. Quinn's eyes were bright, his mouth stretched into a huge grin as he sang with me. Bodies were all around us, so there wasn't a part of me that wasn't touching someone else's skin, but yet, ironically, nothing was more private, it seemed, like a crowd full of people. Everyone else focused on their own bodies, the music. This was just us, so close we were one body moving to the music, so close that his breath was mine, his heartbeat pounding against my chest. His rhythm was rough and his voice was off-key, but I didn't care, not when I had this moment with him in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean under a clear, star-filled sky. I wanted to take a snapshot of this moment, because no matter what happened in the future, I had this night with Quinn. No one could take that away from me. I hugged him closer to me, wanting to melt into him. You're something else, Lucky, I said into his ear. He slipped his hand under my shirt and dug his fingers into my skin. As the song's chorus rocketed through the crowd, he threw his head back and boomed the words to the pale moon above us. His pale throat beckoned me to touch, lick, kiss. And I took the risk dipping once to press my lips right under his jaw. Then I grabbed his hand and began to move through the crowd. I still danced, hoping to look as casual as possible. A couple of people said my name, but no one seemed to notice Quinn was with me. When we finally reached the edge of the crowd, I could nearly taste freedom as I saw the stairs that would take me down to the bottom deck. Until... I saw the familiar lights of the camera crew as they made their way up the stairs. Shit! Abort! Abort! I whirled around and shoved Quinn back in the direction we'd just walked from. There was a break along the side of the dance floor, and we sprinted down the deck. Quinn was fast, almost as fast as me, as he pumped his arms and darted a glance over his shoulder at the crew who'd yet to spot us. We reached a railing that overlooked the lower deck. I knew there was a door down there that would take us into the ship, but there were no stairs on this side. We were trapped. I laced my fingers on top of my head. Fuck! Quinn looked back over his shoulder at the crowd. It's okay. You just head toward the cameras alone and I'll disappear into the dance party crowd. It'll be fine. I didn't want to do that. I wanted Quinn with me. Plus, as the cameras drew closer, I knew we were losing every chance we had to blend into the crowd without them catching us here alone. About twelve feet below the railing was a pool. The water sparkled, reflecting the stars in the sky. I glanced at Quinn, who was watching me with a raised eyebrow. I was done compromising. I wanted to spend time with Quinn tonight and fuck everything that was stopping me. I stepped onto the lower rung of the white metal railing and swung my legs over, so I sat on the top rung, my legs on the outside. I reached back to Quinn and beckoned with my fingers. Come on, Lucky. Jump with me. Quinn. Jump with me. I stared at his hand, the big solid hand that had held my face as we kissed, that had eaten crab legs with me, that had just moments ago been clasped in mine. The hand I wanted to feel all over my skin and down my pants. 
At that moment I knew I was with J, not J.R. His lips were parted, his expression hopeful. He'd dropped the reality TV show facade for me and bared all the insecurities that plagued me daily. Will I be rejected? Will I be scorned? Will I be loved? He gestured behind him, his face closing slightly, like he was bracing for me to turn him down. You can go back to the dance floor alone. No worries. No hard feelings. Then that look again, the one that told me he knew he was taking a risk. Or you can come with me now and see what else tonight holds. This could end in two days when we left this ship, but for these two days I could follow my heart and forget about my fears and my worries, so I grabbed his hands, perched myself on the edge of the railing with him, and looked at the water below our feet. Is this safe? I asked. He grinned at me, his face lit from the light reflecting in the pool below. I don't know, but I'm curious to find out, huh? I nodded and swallowed, that familiar knot of anxiety in my gut, the feeling that always made me not take that step, not jump. Damn it, I wanted to jump, and I wanted to jump with Jay. On the count of three, he whispered. I shifted my legs and shook out my arms. One, he squeezed my hand. Don't let go, Lucky. My heart pounded in my ears. I won't. Two. I closed my eyes, then I opened them. I wasn't going to miss this. Three. We launched ourselves off the railing, but there was no time to focus on the queasy feeling in my stomach, the scream that lodged itself in my mouth, Jay's death grip on my hand, because in mere seconds our feet smacked the water, and then we were plunged underwater. Our hands came apart on impact, and I flailed wildly amid the bubbles. Instinct hit me and I kicked my way to the surface. After flipping my hair out of my eyes, I looked around for Jay, but I was the only head above water. I splashed around. Jay? Jay! I whispered. There was no one on this deck, no lifeguards, nothing, and we'd be in deep shit if they caught us in this pool. Jay! I saw movement underwater about five feet away. I took a heaving breath and dove down. I couldn't see well, but I waved my arms and connected with something fleshy. I kicked and grunted and pulled and struggled with another body in tow. We breached the surface with a splash and a yelp. Jay was swimming inefficiently, so I hauled him onto his back and swam to the side of the pool. Once he was gripping it, he sucked in gasping breaths. Water dripped from his spiked eyelashes. Jay! I panted. Are you okay? Did you get hurt? He shook his head as water dripped off his chin and full lips. No. I can't swim. What? You can't swim? I punched his shoulder with a wet smack. What the fuck were you thinking by asking me to jump? He swallowed and moved hand over hand to the edge of the pool, drawing closer to me until our faces were inches apart. Quinn. What? I pouted. I'm mad at you. You could have drowned. He smiled. A slow smile. And it was one I hadn't seen before. This was Jay's smile. I trusted you. And you were there. There was reverence to his tone. And a little awe. Warmth crept up my spine and I wanted to bottle this feeling when Jay looked at me like this. I didn't do anything anyone else wouldn't have done. I wasn't going to let you drown. He huffed a laugh. You trust easily. I don't. You know, you could have just told me that you trusted me. We didn't have to demonstrate it by jumping into a pool. He thought I was hilarious, if his low laugh was any indication. You really are cute when you're pissed. I looked up at the railing we'd jumped from. The light of the cameras swept back and forth through the night air, probably searching for Jay. I reached out and ran my thumb over his full lower lip. I told you not to call me cute. I didn't feel the water dripping off my nose or the cold night air on my wet hair. All I felt was the heat of Jay's body against mine, the taste of his tongue in my mouth. He kissed me like he couldn't get enough 
like I was the last drink of water on earth, and he wanted that cool, crisp liquid before he perished. Voices came from above us. Jay whispered, Hold your breath, as he plunged us under water. We kissed again, clinging to each other as I kept us from sinking. Jay let me. He trusted me. And when the shadows along the railing on the upper deck moved away, I pulled us back up to the surface. You ready? he asked. I nodded. Let's get out of here. Chapter 13 Quinn Jay knew some back way to his cabin, so we ran through the halls, soaking wet. He shoved me into a wall, and I got him back by tripping him so he slammed into someone's cabin door, resulting in a shouted curse. We picked up the speed and eventually tumbled into his cabin, dripping water all over the floor. He locked the door behind us, and with an unspoken command we both immediately stripped out of our drenched clothes. Jay handed me a towel to dry off my skin, which was now even more pale from the cold, and pebbled with goosebumps. I wrapped my towel around my waist and turned around slowly to see that Jay had done the same. He stood a couple inches taller than me, and with probably thirty pounds more muscle. His abs were cut, and the dark grooves of his V-muscle trailed down beneath the towel. He stood with his arms at his sides, watching me study him. A rush of insecurity about my looks came back, but Jay shut them down in an instant when he stepped closer and trailed his fingers over my shoulder. I like the freckles. I hated them for a long time. Why? His fingers continued their exploration down over my chest, and I sucked in a breath as the pad of his thumb rasped over a nipple. I'm sorry, what was the question? He smiled. Why did you hate your freckles? Uh, because they made me different. He leaned down and his pink tongue traced my skin along the top of my shoulder. I sucked in a breath. He placed a hand on my hip. Breathe, Quinn. I let out my breath and laughed. He smiled as he leaned down and pressed his lips to mine. We were alone. Just us. And we didn't have much time, but we had tonight. We had this moment where we could explore this chemistry and this lust and see if there was anything else to it once we burned it out. I wrapped my arms around his shoulders as we deepened the kiss. The towel was coarse, rubbing against my hard cock with equal parts pleasure and delicious pain. He was hard, too, poking me through the cotton of his own towel. My mind raced as I thought about what would come next. Would he want to fuck me? Would he want me to fuck him? Did he have condoms and lube and— Hey, Lucky, come back to me. He held my face in his hands, and I realized I'd squeezed my eyes shut. I opened them. Hey, he said again. You got lost there for a minute. Quit thinking. Just feel, okay? No pressure. If we just stood here and kissed all night, I'd be happy. I raised an eyebrow. Does that line work on women? Because I'm not buying it. He threw back his head and laughed, then shoved me backwards so I fell on the lower bunk bed with a bounce. With a knee to the bed, he loomed over me. Smart ass. His lips were the most kissable lips I'd ever seen, ever felt, ever touched. And when his eyebrows lifted and said lips quirked, I realized I had said that out loud. Oh. He shook his head and ran his hands up my side. I shimmied as he hit a ticklish spot over my ribs. The knowledge clearly pleased him because he grinned. Ticklish. Why else do you think I'm gritting my teeth right now? His fingers danced over the spot, and I squirmed. Then his head dropped, and I wasn't so ticklish any more. Now I was turned on as fuck because his lips were there and his tongue. My skin tingled and rippled under his attention. I sighed, raising my arms over my head. 
I could have laid there forever while he mapped every inch of my torso. Finally he raised his head, and although clouded with lust, a bit of uncertainty crept over his features. So, I've only, uh, been with a guy once before. I nodded. Okay. He stayed silent. Oh, is this where I share? He huffed out a laugh. Uh, I guess. You don't have to. I mean, it's fine. So, uh, that boyfriend in college I told you about, the closeted one? He nodded. He was my first boyfriend. My first everything. I was dumb and shy and desperate to not graduate from college a virgin, so I'm not a virgin anymore. And he's still straight, apparently. Jay lifted his hand, and a finger slowly caressed the furrow between my brow. I relaxed my scowl under his gentle touch. I'm sorry that happened to you. It wasn't... Plenty of people have been through shit relationships. He wasn't mean to me or abused me. He didn't care about how you wanted to be cared for. Jay said softly, Oh, God, he got it. And just like there, I thought I might cry then and there, which would totally kill the mood, so I blinked and bit the inside of my cheek. Yeah, exactly that. Jay nodded. I get it. I grabbed his face and drew it down to mine so I could taste those lips again. They were salty from my skin and so hot and pliant against mine. He was still turned on, judging by the hardness pressing against me. Mine was still there, ready and raring to go. He reached out, and with a quick twist of his fingers, the pressure around my waist eased. It took me a minute to realize he'd unknotted my towel. Cool air hit my groin as he swiped the offending fabric away. He was on his knees now, his legs on either side of mine. We both looked down. His towel was gone, too, and his cock jutted toward me, dark and hard and big, like thick and long. And I said that out loud because once again he started laughing. I shoved his shoulder and tried to roll onto my side, but he wouldn't let me. This isn't a measuring contest. He flicked my nose. I like your cock. I like the freckles and the red hair leading down to it. And most of all, I like that it's hard. Yours looks like it has its own NASA space station. You're so dumb. But his voice was affectionate as he lay down beside me and drew me into his arms. He kissed me, and I hooked a leg over his hip, grinding against him. Our cocks brushed, and every point of contact sent shivers down my shaft, up my spine, and into the synapses of my brain that controlled everything that was pleasurable. He understood me, this complicated man who had hid who he was for so long. I hated that for him. But we had this moment so I'd make it good. Fuck the consequences. Fuck em. I pushed on his shoulder so he rolled onto his back. We didn't have much room in this narrow bed, and it took some maneuvering, but eventually he was settled and I loomed over him. All I wanted to do was touch. His nipples, his abs, that dark hair leading down to the body part I was most certainly interested in. He was all dark skin and cut muscles, and I could have stayed like that forever, admiring his body. His thighs were huge, probably one and a half of mine. His quads bulged above his knees as he flexed. You like looking? he asked. I nodded. I like it a lot. I like how you look at me. He swallowed, hesitating before he went on. No one looks at me like you do. What is this? I whispered my voice shaking. I don't know, he said. I have no fucking idea. But I'm not going to fight it. Me neither. 
With that said, I curled my body so my face was in line with his cock. I gripped him as a shudder racked his body under me. A soft curse reached my ears as I pumped once, twice, then took his crown into my mouth. I closed my eyes as I got the first taste of him, resting the tip of my tongue. I sucked hard, tonguing the underside as his thighs twitched. Another curse. I smiled around his shaft, opened my eyes and began to slowly bob my head. I couldn't take him deep, no way. So I pumped my hand in time with my mouth, twisting every time I reached the tip and making full use of my tongue. I swirled it, tonguing his slit. His hands gripped the sheets at his hip. He was quiet. And I pulled off to look at him. You can talk, you know. His lips were pulled in between his teeth. He let them out like a rubber band snap. I don't know if you want me to talk. Why? Because the shit I want to say is filthy. I cocked my head, a hot thrill running down my spine. Filthy? I gotta be straight with you that the things that will come out of my mouth are going to make you blush. I shifted my head as my cock thickened more. Since I didn't get laid often, I watched porn, a lot of it, and the dirty talkers always got me hot. I'd never told anyone that, though. I was Quinn Mathers, the guy who kept his mouth shut. Except for today. Except around Jay. Try me. He raised up on his elbows. Excuse me? I took a deep breath, my arousal overriding my shyness. What do you think, I'm fragile? Pure? I want what you want, which is to get off, so please tell me all the filthy ways you plan to make that happen. J. I sucked in a breath as I stared into the blue of Quinn's eyes. My forearms ached, since I was clutching the sheet like any minute a gust of wind would hurl me from the room. This was spring break. All the students on this damn boat were fucking like rabbits, and now I had everything I wanted and thought about for the last five days staring at me, his hand wrapped around my erection. Fuck it all. I was going to enjoy this time we had. I licked my lips. When I walked in on you in the bathroom that day, Quinn, and you were on your knees, I felt like a fucking loser. But all I could think about were all the things you could be doing on your knees. He groaned, and his tongue darted out to lick the tip of my shaft. He seemed surprised at himself that he had this seductive side to him. I reached down and threaded my fingers through his soft hair. I gripped and tugged once, and he jolted with a moan, his eyes closing, his cheeks flushed bright red, his freckles stark on his skin, as I trailed my fingers down his face. Look at me, I said. Do you want to suck me? He opened his eyes and nodded as I ran my thumb over his lips. I stared at these lips, thinking about what they'd taste like, what they'd feel like on my skin, on my dick. I pressed against them until he opened his mouth. I pushed my thumb inside, and he kept his eyes on me as he hollowed out his cheeks, swirling his tongue around the pad of my thumb. So you want to know the filthy ways I plan to get us off? For starters, I want to see what your mouth can do. Then we'll take care of you. I pulled my thumb from Quinn's mouth and let his jaw go slack as he watched me with glazed eyes. Good. He was as turned on as I was. I bent one knee and pulled my hand away, resting it on the back of Quinn's head. I pressed gently, guiding him toward my balls. He watched me as he tongued the delicate skin until I pulled him back to my shaft. As he took me in his mouth again, I dropped my head back on the pillow. Oh, fuck! Tight, wet heat surrounded me. I never wanted it to end, not while Quinn kneeled between my legs, bare ass in the air, as he moaned around my dick. As much as I enjoyed this, I wanted something else. I wanted more of him, more of his body. I tugged on his shoulder, so he lifted his head. He was breathing hard, 
his back arching. I sat up and ran my hand down his back to his ass. I squeezed one cheek, and he bucked into me. Fuck, get up here, I said. This bed was too damn small, but I managed to rearrange us so Quinn was facing a wall and I was plastered to his back. He trembled a little, and I didn't know if it was nerves or a little bit of fear. I wrapped my arm around him and, with my hand on his jaw, turned his head to one side so he could see me over his shoulder. I couldn't stop my hips from churning against him, my wet shaft sliding between the cheeks of his ass. I wanted to be there so badly, sliding inside of him, taking him. But not now. I want to fuck you so bad. I whispered against the side of his face, and he trembled. I did from the first moment I saw you. I want those legs wrapped around me while I take you against the wall. I want you on all fours. Quinn shook, his lips parted, harsh pants escaping. I reached down and took his cock in my fist. He was hard, a vein thick and pulsing against my skin. If I took you inside me, if I let you be the first to do that, would you make it good for me, Quinn? His cock twitched in my hand, and he let out a curse. Fuck, Jay, you're killing me. Would you? I slipped my cock between his thighs and thrust gently. Yes, he gasped, bracing a hand on the wall as my hips jerked against his ass. I began to stroke him, and he bucked. Fuck, yes. I shoved my face into his neck, licking the sensitive skin there, tugging on it with my teeth. In the back of my mind I knew I was leaving marks, but I couldn't make myself stop. While jacking Quinn, I continued to thrust between his legs. The soft hairs on his inner thighs created delicious friction. He was moaning continuously now, cursing under his breath. Holy shit, holy shit, I'm so close, don't stop. Can't stop. I said, pressing my forehead to his temple. His body froze, and then his cock pulsed once, twice. He came over my fist, over the sheets, drops landing on the wall in front of us. He grabbed the back of my head, pulling me to him for an awkward, sloppy kiss, the taste of sweat, his tongue sliding across mine, put me over the edge and I came, my release coating his inner thighs. We continued kissing until I needed to breathe. My head dropped to the pillow behind his, and I pulled him closer, wanting to enjoy this a minute or two before we had to deal with whatever came next. His head fell to the bed with a thud. There was a swish sound of a thumb being dragged across fabric, then a delicate touch to the back of my hand, where it still gripped his softening shaft. Slim fingers threaded through mine, and we held hands, not caring about the stickiness or anything but the weightlessness of post-orgasmic bliss. Eventually, Quinn shifted, and I became uncomfortably aware that we needed to clean up. I pressed a kiss to the back of his neck and separated our bodies. Let me get something to clean up with, I said. He nodded with a sigh, a red flush creeping across his chest and neck. In the bathroom, I ran a washcloth under warm water. After I cleaned myself, I returned to the bedroom with a clean one for Quinn. He hadn't moved. And I reached out, about to clean him when I hesitated, unsure if I should hand it to him or if he wanted to do it himself. If he had been a girl, I would have done it myself. But was there a gay dude etiquette? I hadn't been out long enough to... Are you waiting for the washcloth to get cold? Quinn rolled onto his back, giving me a small smile as he stretched. He held out his hand, and I gave him the washcloth. Sorry, um... I scratched my head and blew out a breath. I was trying to decide if I should clean you or have you do it yourself. He stopped wiping his thighs. Really? But I didn't know if that would make you feel like a girl, and... Do you think I'm a girl? I frowned. 
No. He bit his lip and was silent for a minute. It wouldn't make me feel like a girl. It would make me feel cared for, I think. We were both fumbling through this, I realized. I sat on the bed and took the washcloth from him, cleaning my release from the rest of his skin. I didn't meet his gaze, but I could feel him watching me. I probably took way longer than I needed to, but focusing on Quinn was peaceful. It felt right. Finally, I pulled back. There. Thanks. Next time it's my job to, um, care for you. That flush was still there. I leaned down and kissed him. Yeah. Next time. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me to him. I dropped the cloth on the floor and braced myself on my elbows over him. We have two days, right? Well, tomorrow is our last full day. Not much time. Damn. Then what? I brushed a lock of hair off his forehead. We can do this. We can avoid the cameras and make the most of it, right? I'm willing if you are. They'd have to sink this boat to get me away from you. The little voice in my head was screaming a warning at me, but the smile Quinn gave me was enough to drown it out. Chapter 14 Quinn I stood at the door to my cabin and took a deep breath. It was after midnight. There were hickeys all over my neck. My lips were swollen. Jess would know something was up, and then the Inquisition would start. Except now I had permission from Jay to tell Jess his story. No more lies. At least, not to my best friend. And on this trip, other than Jay, she was the only one who mattered. I was about to knock when the door opened and a guy stepped out. His head was down, so all I saw was blonde hair, until he lifted his head. And our eyes met. Casey. A half-naked Casey Arlington was leaving Jess's room at midnight with his shirt fisted in his hand. I stared. He stared back. Oh, um, he mumbled, scratching his head. He grinned, but it was tight. Hey? What are you doing here? Quinn! Jess said from somewhere inside the cabin. The door opened wider, and her blue eyes peered at me from around Casey. She pushed him to the side with an irritated sigh. Um, okay, so have a nice night. Casey had been dismissed and he was staring at her like he was half in love. He walked backward, trying to look cool, except he stumbled over a seam in the carpet and almost fell on his ass. He righted himself and laughed it off. Right, so I guess I'll see you around. Yep, Jess said, grabbing my arm and pulling me inside. Later. She slammed the door and turned on me. Where have you been? No way I ask the questions now because I caught Casey Arlington leaving your room at midnight. I poked her in the chest. What the hell, Jess? I hissed. You said you hated him. She fisted her hands in her hair and tugged. Ugh, I still hate him, but I also want to fuck him. I didn't know what to say to that. Uh-oh. Wow. I'm doomed to be attracted to men who are probably not good for me. What is with that? I don't know. You're the therapist on this friendship. You tell me. She flopped onto my bed in a heap of limbs. I'm great at telling other people how to run their love lives, but I suck at introspection of my own. I tapped her foot. Sorry to bring this up now, but do I need to change my sheets? Because she glared at me. We didn't do anything in your bed. Okay. And I also thought we agreed you were going to put a sock on the door or something? I jerked a thumb behind me. I want it on record there was no sock. Enough about me. She pointed at my neck. Who gave you those? I clapped my hand over my neck and used my other to point at her. Hey, you have beard burn on your face. Don't look at me all accusingly. She covered her cheeks in a huff. 
We glared at each other in a hickey standoff until she dropped her hands with a sigh. Look, I was worried about you. Could you have texted me? Oh, shit. I hadn't texted her to tell her where I was. To make sure she was okay, guilt twisted my gut. I'm so sorry. I'm a shit friend. She smiled. You're not a shit friend. I had these visions of you falling overboard or something. Didn't stop you from making out with Casey Arlington, though. I pushed her shoulder with a laugh. She flushed, then patted the bed beside her. Sit down and tell me who put that smile on your face. I hesitated. Look, I really need a shower. Can you tell me his name? I chewed my lip, wondering if she was going to be pissed when she realized I kept this a secret from her. His name is Jay. Okay? She drew out the word. Is that it? Um. She raised her eyebrows. You didn't get his last name? Wow, look at you, loving him and leaving him. Butler, I blurted out. She froze, then slowly cocked her head to the side. When she spoke, her voice was deceptively calm. What did you say? I sank down on the bed beside her. Don't get mad. I have my reasons for keeping this from you, but I can tell you now that, um, I have a thing with J.R. Butler, or J. She didn't speak or blink. I waved a hand in front of her face. Jess? Finally, she came alive with a flail of arms and legs. You have a thing with J.R. Butler? A thing? Tell me everything. I started at the beginning, not getting into too much detail, but explaining that there was no Andrea, that he was bi, and that he was apparently out of his mind because he found me attractive. Shut up! She said to that with an eye roll. You are the cutest ginger on the seven seas. Whatever, I muttered. So I'm sorry I didn't tell you about him, but it didn't seem fair to tell his secret without permission. I twisted my fingers in my lap. Jess touched my knee. Hey, I'm not mad. You were being a good friend to him. And that's who you are. But can I just add a word of caution? Because... Alexander, he was deceptive, I said. I don't think any part of Jay is being deceptive. He doesn't really know how to be out, exactly, as bisexual. But he's not deceiving me. In fact, he's been brutally honest in a way that's goddamn refreshing after what I've been through. He's not asking me to go into the closet with him. He hasn't asked me for a damn thing. We both agreed that for one day we'll hide from the cameras and keep our relationship between us. For one day... I can do that. She leaned forward. And then what? And then... I shrugged. And then I'll go back to class on Monday and I'll live my life. Are you okay with that? What else is the outcome? We elope and get married? Come on. I scoffed. We like each other. A lot. I love to dream, but I'm a realist, and the realist in me says enjoy tomorrow because once we leave this boat, that's it. No one will know but us. And you. And that's okay. She ran a thumbnail over a design in the sheet and stayed silent. What about you? I said. Going to go steady with Casey? She looked at me from under her lashes. Doesn't he wish... Not sure what you did in here to him, but he couldn't take his eyes off you. You'll never understand or appreciate my magical vagina powers. A laugh burst out of me, and then I wrapped my arms around her. Don't break his heart. She blew out a breath against my neck. I'll try not to. J. I startled awake when I heard a crash, then a muffled curse, followed by giggling. I opened a bleary eye. Levi stood in the center of the cabin, rubbing his shoulder. Dumb dresser, he muttered. The room was still dark, and we had no windows. I reached under my pillow and pulled my phone out to check the time. 
It wasn't 6 a.m. yet. Good. Where were you all night? I asked. Levi jumped about a foot in the air, crashing into the dresser for what I assumed was the second time. He howled, Damn it! What is with this thing trying to kill me? I sat up and rubbed my eyes. Seriously, where were you? I crashed with Paisley. Why? He shrugged. I felt like it. And you seemed to... need the room. I stiffened. What? Levi put a hand out. Don't get mad, okay, but when I came to the door last night, I heard, um... noises. And left. Wow. I refused to be embarrassed about it. About Quinn. Thanks for giving us the room. Levi's mouth dropped open. Whoa, ho, ho, looks like getting laid appeases that legendary J.R. Butler temper, huh? I threw a pillow at him, which he caught with a laugh and threw back at me. Then he sobered. So where is he? I stood up from the bed and stretched. Back in his cabin. I walked into the bathroom and didn't bother closing the door while I pissed. I'd taken a shower last night, so all I had to do was swipe on some deodorant and I could head out. Levi stood in the door with his arms crossed. Is that it? What do you mean? I washed my hands and dried them on the towel, then stood in front of him until he moved back so I could leave the bathroom. I mean, did you get him out of your system? I paused while shoving my legs into my shorts. Out of my system? Hell no. I craved more time with him. No. You going to see him again? I pulled on a T-shirt. I plan to spend all day with him. It's about all the time we have left. He eyed me as I dressed. Now? Yeah, now. It's not even six in the morning. Your point? We have a breakfast date. J.R. I sighed. I know, okay? I turned around to face him. I know the risks. And I don't give a shit right now. He chewed his lips. I'm just concerned about you. Thanks, but this is what makes me happy, so this is what I'm doing. He nodded. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. If for some reason I'm late to the beer pong tournament today or the party tonight, can you make excuses for me to Doug? Levi straightened his spine and snapped his heels together. He saluted me. Mission accomplished. I grabbed the back of his head and pressed a kiss to his forehead. Smart ass. I pulled on a sweatshirt, tugging up the hood to cover my face as best I could. After leaving the cabin, I made my way to the small breakfast buffet room that I knew wasn't heavily used. Because of the early time, it was deserted. I grabbed a couple of boxes of cereal, some bowls and spoons, and hightailed it out of there before anyone saw me. While clutching the food to my chest, I took the stairs to the deck two at a time. At the top, before I pushed open the doors, I hesitated. When Quinn left my room around midnight, we decided to meet at our spot on the deck in the morning. Doubt crept over me now. What if he regretted everything? What if he realized I wasn't worth the risk, wasn't worth betting on? Hell, he could have blasted the news all over social media already, and I wouldn't have known. No, I told myself. Quinn wouldn't do that. I squared my shoulders and pushed open the door. I had to know if he was there or not, if he'd decided that today was our day, or if what happened last night was all we had. I crept toward our spot at the front of the deck, my eyes trained straight ahead for any glimpse of Quinn's fiery mop. A lone figure stood in our spot, his back to me, wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt. I faltered, unsure if it was Quinn until he turned around. Red hair spilled out onto his forehead, and his blue eyes speared me from beneath the hood. He was there, right where he said he would be. I smiled, and he grinned back. I was in front of him in seconds, my hands still wrapped around my contraband. I leaned down and nudged his nose with mine. Hey, you. Hey, he said. Sleep okay? Yeah. I motioned for us to sit down on the deck, and we did. 
with the railing of the ship at our backs. I unloaded my goods, two bowls, two spoons, and four single-serve boxes of lucky charms. I waited, unsure what he'd do or say. As I stared at the small boxes now, I wondered what I'd been thinking. I should have found a way to get him a real breakfast, not a stupid kid's cereal. Oh, my God! He whispered, picking up a box and running a finger along the rainbow on the front with reverence, like the box was made of pure gold. I haven't had lucky charms in years. He glanced up at me, eyes bright. You remembered. Of course I remembered. You just told me two days ago. He shook his head. I know, but... <sighs> Never mind. What? What were you going to say? It'll sound pathetic and whiny. Just tell me. He ripped off the top of the box and didn't look at me as he tore open the plastic sleeve inside. I was just going to say that most people don't remember things about me. I'm the wallflower, the guy in the corner, the redhead, like that's all there is about me, like that's the only description that needs to be made. I told Alexander multiple times I didn't like our dining hall's chicken sandwiches, and yet every time I went to his room he had a chicken sandwich for me. I usually just ate it anyway. He rolled his eyes. That's whiny and dumb. Forget it. I handed him a spoon. That's not whiny or dumb. And I'm sorry that's the way people have made you feel. But not me, okay? Not me. His gaze shifted over my shoulder, then back to me. Sometimes I wonder if I'm being punked. Like any moment, the cameras are going to come out from behind a wall and shout, Surprise! We made you fall for J.R. Butler! Aww. I nudged his knee, trying to cover up how much those words had pierced me. You're falling for me? His eyes narrowed. Now I hate you. I laughed, then opened up my cereal and dumped it in the bowl. I stared at it, thinking there was something I forgot. Milk! Quinn crunched on a piece of cereal. What? I forgot the fucking milk. He shrugged. Yeah, I noticed. But it doesn't matter. You sure? I can run and get some. He made a face. Don't be dumb. I'd rather sit here and eat dry cereal with you in the brief time we have. It's not a big deal. You're not just saying that. Or is this like the chicken sandwich situation? He shook his head with a smile. No... This is amazing. Lucky charms on the deck of a cruise ship. Quinn swirled his spoon in his cereal. Best date I ever had. I tapped my chin. My best date was probably with Andrea. He raised an eyebrow, his lips pressed together to suppress a grin. Seriously, she took me to Tahiti and we rolled around on the beach and made out in the sand while the waves crashed over us. It was basically a cologne commercial. He reached over and shoved my shoulder. You are so full of shit. Hey, I made her up. I can make her an excellent date planner. He crunched his cereal. Were you glad you... had her? I shrugged. It was nice to have an excuse not to date. My head was so messed up when I signed that contract... I was only thinking about how this was my shot to get noticed, and I didn't take a second to step back and wait for something better. I'm sure many people would have made the same choice you did. Maybe. I spooned a bit of cereal into my mouth. So did you tell Jess about us? His head shot up. Oh, my God! I have gossip for you. Gossip? So last night, when I went back to my cabin, Casey was walking out. Shirtless. I sat up straighter. What? I know! Quinn was vibrating with glee. They hooked up. Jess looked pissed off that it had happened, and Casey was looking at her like she was his queen. Wow. He's not with Selena anymore, is he? I shook my head. No, they both made it clear they were free to do whatever or whoever they want on the ship. Okay, so you feel Casey out. What's his story anyway? Casey is a good dude, but he can be a little entitled, you know? Look at him. He's been handed a lot of things in his life. Girls pretty much throw their panties at him. 
Jess has given him a hard time. Yeah, he always goes for the challenge. But is he an asshole? I shook my head. No, but he's human, you know. Yeah, he was thoughtful. Jess did seem like she was still hooked on him, even though she tried to hide it. I'll talk to him. Quinn held up his hand for a high five. Hugh and Jay matchmakers, getting spring breakers hooked up in the Atlantic Ocean since, um, Sunday. I laughed as I smacked my palm against his. You're fucking cute. I told you not to call me cute. I leaned in and pressed a kiss to his cheek. Whatever you say, Lucky. Now eat your charms. Chapter 15 Quinn Jay and Casey stood at the opposite end of the beer pong table, whispering to each other, while Jess fidgeted with the red solo cups in front of us, double-checking the beer levels. Maybe I should go over and look at their cups. I don't trust them not to cheat. Jess, there aren't that many ways to cheat in beer pong. She glared at Casey who hadn't taken his eyes off her the whole time he and Jay had been strategizing. Finally, Jay turned to me. Okay, you're up. It was hard not to launch myself across the table at him, but I had to keep my hands to myself. We were playing in the beer pong competition and the deck was packed. Cameras were everywhere and drinks were flowing even though it was only a little after lunch. Our game was almost over. Jess and I were winning with two cups left, and the guys had one cup. All we had to do was sink one shot. Jess took a ball out of the water cup and shook it off. Standing with her feet shoulder-width apart, she bent her knees and narrowed her eyes. Casey stepped right up to the end of the table and went with the classic distraction-tactic technique of humping it. They were playing dirty now. I groaned. But Jess didn't move, all her concentration on the game. She threw, the ball bounced off the front cup, then onto the table, and was then caught by Casey. Ah, oh, baby, I'm sorry. I realize it was hard not to stare at my package. I think you have some drool there, too. He pointed to the corner of his mouth. Jess ignored him, threw her second ball, and missed again. Damn it, she said. He's throwing me off my game. Casey was up next, his expression smug. As he lined up his shot, Jess slowly removed her shirt, so she wore only a pair of tiny shorts and a string bikini. Casey swallowed, but otherwise showed no sign he was affected as he lifted his hand above the table for his throw. Jess braced her hands on either side of the table, leaned down, and with her elbows pressed her boobs together for maximum cleavage. Casey threw, and the ball hit her right breast, then bounced onto the floor. I scooped it up as Jess grinned, while Casey yelled, I call foul! Foul! He missed his second shot, too, and then it was my turn. I smiled at Jay, preparing to be the responsible couple of the game, until he slowly removed his shirt and tucked it into the back pocket of his shorts. He stood casually, all dark, glistening skin and hard muscles. He flexed a peck. I got hard. Quinn, Jess nudged me with her elbow, get it together. But do you see him over there? I whispered. Do you see that? Yes, I see that. These boys are playing into our weaknesses. I clenched my jaw and threw my first ball. I missed, but I sank the second shot. I hollered, and Jess and I high-fived, but the game wasn't over yet. The guys still had a shot at our last cup. As Jay chugged the beer, his dark eyes watching me over the rim, I wiped my forehead. Okay, Jess said, as Jay got ready to throw. Do something sexy. What? Do something sexy. I don't know how to do anything sexy. Jay threw his first ball. The ball went into one of our last two cups. No! Jess shouted like I'd thrown the ring into Mordor. We can't lose! 
She took the cup away and began drinking it. She paused long enough to hiss at me while Jay prepared for his next shot. Do something! I didn't know what was sexy. I didn't do sexy. So I did the first thing I could think of. I turned around so my back was to Jay and Casey. Then I lowered my pants and mooned them. Jay's ball went flying past me as he completely missed the cup. Jess threw her hands in the air, and I pulled my pants up in time to complete our victory dance. Casey drank the rest of the beer straight out of the pitcher, and Jay... Jay looked like he wanted to devour me. Anyone who looked at him right now would see how he was looking at me, and the truth would be out in a heartbeat. I whispered into Jess's ear, Gotta go. She leaned back to look into my eyes and understood what I needed to do. She smiled and kissed me on the cheek. Have fun. I glanced at Jay and, with a jerk of my chin, made my way off the deck. Jay. I had to ditch the cameras first. They seemed intent on following me, and I wasn't sure why. I wasn't doing anything other than walking back to my cabin, but apparently Doug had told them to keep an eye on me. Asshole. Turning down the hallway toward my room, I went to pull out my phone when I heard voices, voices that sounded a lot like some of the camera crew. They stood at the entrance to my cabin, talking, and I had a split second before I knew they'd look up and see me. Had they seen Quinn? Was he cornered in my cabin? Something grabbed my shirt and tugged me to the side. Before I could protest, I was hauled into a small room and a door slammed shut behind me. What the pshh? Quinn clamped his hand over my mouth. Did they see you? I couldn't talk because of his hand over my mouth, so I stuck my tongue out and licked it. He dropped his hand with a yelp. I tugged him to me, wrapping my arms around his waist. I don't think they saw me. Where are we? Quinn laid his hands on my chest, curling his fingers slightly into the muscle. The storage closet. Thinking on your feet. I wanted to be alone with you. I raised an eyebrow. How do you think I feel? I got to see your ass and I couldn't touch it. His body was hot, the muscles quivering under my palms. You can touch it now. I wanted him laid out on my bed. I wanted to take my time, kiss every inch of skin. But this would have to do for now. As much as I hated having to hide, it was exhilarating, too, knowing we were doing something we shouldn't, something that could have far-reaching consequences for both of us. I cupped the back of his head and brought his lips to mine, this ginger kid who calmed me, who reminded me I was Jay not J. R. Butler, who was willing to bet on me, and who turned me on like a motherfucker. I pressed his lower back against me, so his legs straddled one of my thighs. He began to ride me slowly, rubbing his hard cock on me. He made small sounds in the back of his throat, and I swallowed them down as we kissed. But this wasn't working, this standing thing. I broke the kiss and glanced around. We were in some sort of laundry room. There were linens and towels. I pulled a couple of towels off a shelf and tossed them on the floor, then laid Quinn down on top of them. He didn't even hesitate as I lay beside him, as I pushed down his board shorts so his hard cock sprung free. He watched my hand as I pumped him, as I rolled his tight balls in my palm. His breath hitched, and his body shook. I grabbed his head and made him face me. Hey, I said, as I continued to stroke him. He seemed to have a hard time focusing on me. His eyes kept closing, his breath uneven. Jay, fuck, Quinn. I wish you could see how you look right now. His freckles stood out on his pale skin, and there was a small cluster of them on his left rib cage that I had never noticed before. His shirt was rucked up to his chest, his abs flexing as his hips thrust up, pushing his cock into my fist. Hot as hell. I moved down his body and took his cock into my mouth. I'd only done this one other time, and I had no idea 
if I was horrible at it or not, but I knew I wanted it. Quinn's shaft was salty sweet on my tongue as I sucked on the head. His hips jerked as I squeezed his balls gently, then moved my finger back. Back, until I pressed on the tight ring of his hole. Holy shit, he cried. Oh, God, I'm... I'm... He came in my mouth and I hadn't been ready, so it was sloppy as all hell, but I swallowed what I could. Then I moved back up his body, past his heaving chest, so that I could see where he lay, his hands thrown over his eyes, his mouth moving soundlessly. I moved his hands, but his eyes were squeezed shut. Hey. He didn't move. I lightly tapped his cheek. Hey, look at me. He opened one eye slowly. I'm so sorry. So sorry for what? That was... fast. Like teenager fast. And I didn't warn you. I'm the worst. I couldn't help it. I kissed him, a soft, hard-pressured kiss. I pulled off with a smack and looked down at his two wide blue eyes. I loved it. It was a compliment that I got you that hot. Unless you were thinking of someone else, like Channing Tatum. He smacked me. I promise I wasn't thinking of anyone but you, and especially not J.R. Butler. Ugh! He sighed dramatically. That guy is awful. Horrible human being. Did you hear he eats all the marshmallows and Lucky Charms first? First! What kind of monster does that? I rolled onto my back, laughing and Quinn came with me, lying across my chest. He smiled at me and gently pulled off my shirt, then began to slowly work his way down my body, leaving hot kisses in his wake. I sighed as he swiped his tongue across the base of my throat and shivered when he gently tugged on a nipple. I gripped the towel beneath me when he circled my belly button, and I couldn't stop the groan from escaping my mouth as he lowered my board shorts and began to suck me. He went slow, taking as much of me in his mouth as he could before slowly pulling off with hollowed cheeks. I lifted up on my elbows so I could watch his slender body kneeling between my spread thighs. When I came, it was a slow orgasm, one that started in my balls, then rushed out through my dick and echoed into every limb, every digit in my body. I collapsed onto my back and wrapped my arms around Quinn as he stretched out on top of me. We didn't speak for a long time, and when Quinn broke the silence, his voice sounded hoarse. We could take one of the safety boats. We'd steal out in the middle of the night and use the North Star to guide us. We'd find some little desert island, and we'd make a shelter. That would probably be your job, because I'm really not a good architect. Can you build stuff? I closed my eyes. Yeah, I can build stuff. Good, he said. That settled, then. I could probably cook our meals. I know how to make food stretch as a broke college student. Oh, and I would totally find a plant that has some sort of oil that we'd use for lube. His voice was rising in excitement, and I smiled as he continued to talk. Yes, that's it. I'd find a natural lube, and we'd swim all day and fuck all night with the lube I made and the shelter you built. His fingers flexed against my side. That'd be fun, huh? I didn't open my eyes because I knew I wouldn't be able to handle the longing in his. The same emotion that was currently tugging in my heart, pulling it in a million different directions. Sure, that'd be fun. But there was my job. And Darren. Was this what it was like to be an adult? To feel like every single decision I made was the wrong one? Quinn. I think we dozed in that closet, lying on a towel, our shorts around our knees. There was no effort to move, no desire to return to the complicated world outside the door. 
In here, it was safe, and we could be together. In here, Jay didn't have to worry about money or cameras, and I didn't have to worry about consequences. I lifted my head eventually and pulled my phone out of my pocket. It's almost dinner time, I mumbled. Jay's eyes were closed, not hungry. His stomach growled beneath me like it had its own brain. I scooted up his body as a smile spread across his face and his eyes opened. Oops. I kissed him slowly. Man, am I glad I jumped with you. He ran his fingers through my hair, sifting the strands between his fingers. Me too. He met my eyes. What are we doing, Quinn? What is this? I don't know, I said softly. I, I've thought about this a lot, wondering if you're only interested in me because I'm a gay guy on the ship. Hold up, he said. I managed to keep my hands off every person I've found attractive since I've been on this show. It's not because you're available, Quinn. It's because you're you. I tried not to show how much those words affected me, but I must have done a shitty job because he cupped my face. Aw, oh, damn, look at you. In my head, I said, letting out a long exhale, I'm calling it a spring break fling. But my heart is telling me something else, and I get that this can't go any farther, but it's going to break my heart to see you in public and miserable. His eyes closed slowly. Fuck. You're such a sweet guy. So fucking sweet, Quinn. He pressed his lips to mine, a kiss that started out chaste, but soon had us rutting against each other. Jay reached down, wrapped his hand around our shafts, and stroked us until we both came. I could have napped again, but our phones were beeping, and we needed to leave our cocoon. After grabbing more towels and cleaning up, we dressed. Jay glanced at the door. I fucking hate that we have to make a getaway plan, but we do. I nodded. I know. Can you take a look outside and check to make sure the coast is clear? You can slip out, and then I'll wait and get out in a few minutes. I hated this a lot. But I knew this situation wasn't anything like my situation with Alexander. I'd do this for Jay. I cracked open the door and stuck my head out, peering up and down the hallway. There was a kid a couple doors down fiddling with his lock, but other than that, no cameras. I turned back to Jay. It's all good. I hesitated. Will I see you later? His features were soft and I liked knowing I got to see him like this. The big party is tonight, right? The last hurrah? Yeah. He chewed his lip. I don't know how much... Shit, and it's the last night, too. He slammed his hand against the wall. Motherfucker! Hey! I shut the door and grabbed him. At least we had this. I wanted. He shook his head. Never mind. Can we meet tomorrow morning? Our spot? Yeah, of course. I'll be there. Me too. After another quick kiss, I was out the door, speed walking to my cabin. I wanted to cheer that we'd gotten away with it, that we'd beat the house. I should have known. The house always wins. Chapter 16 Jay I was out of the shower and getting dressed when the door to my cabin flew open, and Levi rushed in, slamming the door behind him. He looked at me with wide eyes. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. I had just pulled on my shorts and stood with my shirt in my hands. What? Where were you this afternoon? With Quinn. Where? I ducked my head. Uh, in a supply closet, actually. There were cameras swarming the cabin. Levi grabbed his laptop and sat on my bed, his fingers a blur as they flew across the keys. Yo, 
I said. What's the deal? This, he said with a final click of the keys, is the deal. It took me a minute to understand what I was reading. And then I swore a wave crashed over my head. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't do anything but stare at the message boards for Trip League, which were flooded with posts about J.R. cheating on Andrea with a girl named Quinn. Holy shit! My knees buckled and I fell to them on the floor, not taking my eyes off the screen. I took the laptop and set it on the bed, my fingers scrolling down the trackpad. It was everywhere and there were links to gossip sites and... Oh, fuck. I'm going to be sick. I rushed to the bathroom and threw up what little I had in my stomach. A shadow loomed over me as I sat hunched over the toilet. A cool cloth was placed on the back of my neck. Tell me what Doug's saying, I said. J.R., just fucking tell me, Levi. He was silent for a moment. They're scrambling. Some live feed cameras caught you telling me that you were going to our cabin to meet Quinn, and I made some sort of joke about using my condoms. He winced as I nodded, remembering that had been right after the beer pong game. Fuck! How could we have slipped up? Levi's fingers skimmed my head. Everyone assumes Quinn is a girl because you're... straight. Doug doesn't know how they missed it, but this is drama, and right now, I'm sure there are cameras outside our cabin door waiting for us to come out. I squeezed my eyes shut. That time in the supply closet felt like years ago. I wanted to regret it all, but I couldn't. I loved every single minute of my connection with Quinn, eating crabs and playing craps, dancing and eating Lucky Charms and taking that leap into the pool. I groaned, flushed the toilet, then stood up to brush my teeth. Levi stood in the doorway, his arms crossed. What are you going to do? I shrugged with my toothbrush in my mouth. Then I spit and washed my hands. What do you mean? I'm going to stay in my lane, I guess. I can't risk them finding out who Quinn is, and I don't want Quinn to be shoved into the spotlight. That's not fair to him. He's already been on camera, but not linked romantically to me, and no one knows his name. I walked past him, into the cabin, and pointed at the laptop. They're freaking out, and they think he's a girl. Can you imagine if the real truth came out? No. I shook my head. Absolutely not. Levi chewed on his lip and stared off to the side. What? I asked. I don't like this, he said, spearing me with a glare. I don't like it at all. You've been... different since you met Quinn, happier. And the way you looked at each other when we were playing beer pong? Oh, boy! Did you plan to see him tonight? I was going to try, and then we were going to meet tomorrow morning. He nodded and straightened. Then you're going to see him tonight. I'll make sure of it. It's my mission. And I'll enlist the others. I held out my hands. Wait, what? No. It'll be fine. Everyone thinks Quinn is a girl. You can totally have one more night with him. Dude, I know we got off to a rocky start. It was jealousy. I hated that you could be yourself. His smile was sad. I see that now. But we're a team, this cast, and hell, I don't really have anything better to do on this trip, so let me talk to the rest of the cast on the down low. What? Well, I can't get everyone together at once and talk about something top secret. The cameras would be there. Wait, are you going to tell everyone? Is that okay? Was that okay? I didn't even know anymore. The Internet was blowing up and my head was still fuzzy from my Quinn-induced orgasms. Most of all, I was tired, bone-fucking tired of the bullshit and the lies. I blew out a breath. I feel like I've been living inside this little brick tower and one by one the walls are being torn away. 
I'm so fucking scared about what it's going to be like once everyone can see in, Levi. His face softened. I get it. I so get that feeling. So what do you choose? The tower? Or the view? I met his steady gaze and swallowed my nerves. The view. He smiled. Leave the mission to me, then. The mission? The mission, he shrugged. All you gotta do is make the most of it when you get the shot, okay? Levi, promise, okay? I pulled Levi to me and dropped a quick kiss on his head. Promise. Quinn. It was our last night on the ship. Tomorrow we'd pull into the dock where Colin and Riley would be waiting, all smiles and eager to take us back to school. That would be it. The end of the trip that had managed to make me look at myself as someone completely different, as someone actually prepared to make a tough decision and take risks and... Be an adult. On my own and without my parents guiding my steps. I had Jay to thank for that. And Jess. And mostly myself, I guessed. I had to want it for myself. Jess wore a blue sundress that swirled around her thighs. She clutched my elbow as we walked into the ballroom where the big party was being held. It was our last hurrah. I hoped I was able to find some time to spend with Jay, but I was trying to be realistic. There were cameras everywhere and way too many people. Jess jerked beside me, and I turned to see Casey tugging on her arm. A camera was nearby, but Casey ignored it. You look great, babe. Jess blushed. Blushed. Wow, this trip had changed both of us. Um, thanks, she said. Casey's gaze snapped to me once and back to her. So... Did you hear the rumors? What rumors? she asked. J.R.'s been messing around on Andrea. The breath left my body like I'd been stuck with a pin. Jess's grip on my arm tightened, and I turned my back to the cameras to fake a cough when, really, I was gasping. What do you mean? Jess's voice sounded far away as a white noise filled my ears. Was I going to pass out? I risked a glance at Casey, who was watching me again. He knew. I could see it all over his face, in the way he studied me, clearly checking my reaction, eager to see me crumble when he spilled the truth. That asshole. I clenched my jaw, unwilling to show any emotion, then opened my mouth, but Casey cut me off. Yeah, the rumors are that it's with some girl named Quinn. I was definitely going to pass out. Watching Casey now, I'd misread him. There are things the cameras don't show. Casey was warning me, in the only way he knew how, with our every move on camera, and if I wasn't mistaken, there was sympathy in his tone. I swallowed, managing to muster up my voice. How'd you hear about this? The live feed cameras picked up some conversation, and the message boards blew up. I sucked in a breath. Shit, I hoped Jay was okay. All I could say was, wow. Casey smiled a little. Yeah, so he'll be here, because he has to be. But he'll be laying low, you know? I nodded, understanding the message. Makes sense. Jess looked at Casey with a little bit of adoration on her face, probably because he'd done something nice for me. I checked out the ballroom and saw Levi flitting from cast member to cast member, whispering to them whenever he got them alone. Something was up, but I didn't see Jay. I rubbed my palms on my pants and wiped away the sweat that was beating at my temple. You okay? Jess asked me. It's hot in here, right? Jess patted my cheek. Yeah, sure, it's hot in here. I blew out a breath. Let's get something to drink. 
Casey squeezed Jess's shoulder and said something in her ear, then left us alone. What did he say to you? I asked. Just that he'd see me later. She hid her eyes from me, and I wondered what she wasn't telling me. Why the change of heart about him? She shrugged. He's complicated. I like it. I snorted and ordered piña coladas from the overworked bartenders. We clinked glasses and began to drink. The night went fast after that. Jess and I danced and ate and drank more. We were on the dance floor, Jess pretending to reel me in because we were dorks like that, when J.R. walked into the room, a camera behind him. I stopped moving toward Jess like a fish, while J.R. slunk around the outside of the ballroom, a scowl on his face. He held his body stiffly, and I knew he was submerging himself back in J.R. Butler mode. My J wasn't anywhere in that face. Hey, you're not playing along, Jess grumbled, then turned her head in the direction I was looking. Oh. She pulled me off the dance floor while my stomach flipped and flopped. I couldn't stop glancing at J.R., but every time I did, his sullen expression was a punch to the gut. Jess directed us to Casey, who stood along the wall. He jerked his chin at her, and when she reached his side, he tugged her to him. His eyes flicked once to me, then to Selina, who stood a couple feet away. In the corner of the room, a shout went up as the DJ began to play a new song. Paisley climbed up on the bar, swaying a little, using her fist as a mic. She began to lip-sync. She wore a skimpy dress, something I'd never seen her wear in her life, and every time she twirled, the crowd below her got a clear view of her underwear, or whatever she had, or didn't have, on under her dress. Her hips swayed, and her long hair, which was usually in a ponytail, was drawn around her shoulders in waves. She looked beautiful, and it was pretty impossible to take my eyes off her. That was until Adriana showed up. She decided it was time to lay on the bar as a line formed to take body shots off her. I watched some guy take his shot, lick the salt off her neck, then bite the lime from her lips, except he spit it out and kissed her instead. She curled her arms around him and leaned into the kiss. What the hell? I muttered, turning to Jess. Are we in opposite world, or... I forgot where I was going with that sentence, because right in front of me Casey bent down and began to kiss Jess, and by kiss I meant devour. His hands cupped her face. His jaw worked. I wasn't sure what to do, but standing there right beside them seemed awkward as hell, so I did what I always did. Retreat. I blended into the wall, something I had a lot of practice doing, and made my way to the corner near the door. There was a screech, and the party-goers and cameras weren't watching the bar. They were now watching the trio of Casey, Jess, and Selena. The small Latina cast member screamed at Casey, her words undistinguishable but clearly angry, as she stood inches from him, her finger pointed in his face. I couldn't see Jess's expression because her back was to me, but Casey was standing protectively between her and Selena. I began to inch my way back toward Jess when whatever they were fighting about became insignificant compared to what was going on at the bar, which was also a fight, a real chair-tossing, punch-throwing fight. Was there something in the water, uh, drinks tonight? Everyone had fucking lost their minds. The entire room was a clearing of the benches as everyone rushed to see what was going on at the bar. In the middle of it all was Levi. He was yelling and shoving, and damn, but that boy could hold his own. I was caught between wading in to help Levi or standing up for Jess when a hand clamped around my arm and yanked me backward through the door. Chapter 17 J. Quinn struggled until I turned him to face me and whispered, 
it's me. He blinked, one arm cocked back to punch whoever had him. I gestured to his fist with my chin. What do you plan to do with that? He flushed a little and dropped his arm. Shut up. It's like a war zone in there. I was prepared to defend myself. I grinned. Yeah, they're doing awesome. He tilted his head. What did you say? So everything they're doing in there is just one giant distraction. I was damn proud of them, too. Oscar-winning performances. But Jess, she's in on it, too. And Selena's playing her part perfectly. The line between his brows was cute. I'm so confused. A distraction for what? For us. I licked my lips and dropped my head. So we could do this. I kissed him, and this time he didn't put up a fight at all. Immediately he moaned and grabbed the collar of my shirt, tugging me to him. Before he had a chance to deepen the kiss, I pulled back. Hold on, we can't do this here. We have a couple of minutes before the crew, who was supposed to be on me, stops rolling on whatever is going on in there. I pointed at the door, through which we could still hear shouting. He nodded. All right. Your cabin? Is that okay? Uh, yeah. I'd love to be naked with you, so if we can do it there, then let's go. I laughed and pressed a quick kiss to his lips. Perfect. To avoid the live-feed cameras, we took separate routes to get to my cabin. I kept an eye out the entire way for rogue cameras or passengers. I felt a little like Clark Kent, like I needed to shed these clothes and get down to my real self. The one who wanted to be with Quinn. The one who was so tired of hiding. The one who wanted to be honest. I was in my cabin for a minute when there was a soft knock at the door. I opened it up and tugged a panting Quinn inside. He leaned back against the wall to catch his breath. We stood, facing each other for a minute, the air between us heated and crackling. I braced my hands on either side of his head. One last leap with me, Quinn. He brushed the back of his hand along my jaw, then swiped his fingers over my cheekbone. I'm ready. I kissed him. Wishing like hell we had more than this, more than tonight. We'd get off this ship tomorrow and Quinn would return to school and I'd be signing my life away again. Quinn pulled my shirt over my head and I did the same to him. Then we stepped out of our shorts, mouths crashing together, fingers touching skin. I laid him down on the small bed and covered him with my body. Reaching between us, I stroked both of us in my fist. Quinn's eyes were glazed over as he arched into my touch. His lips were parted, his entire body flushed with arousal. I kissed his nose and his jaw, licking his neck and nibbling on his ear. His fingers dug into my shoulders, my back, my ass, as the muscles flexed every time I thrust against him. I wanted to say so much, to tell him what this meant to me to tell him what I wanted to do, but our pants and our moans and our groans somehow made words unnecessary. Finally, when we were both close, I touched our foreheads together. Let me get the stuff, okay? His eyes were huge, pupils blown, and he only hesitated for a second before nodding. He made a sound of protest as I let go of him to roll off the bed, I rummaged around in Levi's drawers until I found what I was looking for. Then I was back on top of Quinn, a condom and lube beside his head. I straddled his hips, my hands near his shoulders. There were so many things I wanted to do with him, and not near enough time to do them. He rolled his hips beneath mine, his tongue swiping his lower lip. What are you waiting for? I'm not waiting for anything, I said. I'm enjoying. I'm appreciating. I'm so fucking happy in this moment that I'm with you. Quinn groaned and smacked my shoulder. Quit saying sweet stuff like that. Why? What do you mean, why? 
because you'll ruin me for everyone else, and then I'll be a crazy old gay with twelve cats and no sex life. I shook my head. That was dramatic. Leaning down, I nudged my nose with his. Quit thinking of anything else but right now. Right here. With me. His arms wrapped around my neck, and his fingers dug into my skull. He pulled my head back so our eyes met, and his expression was earnest. You're right. Just this moment. Freeze frame it, I whispered. He made a clicking sound with his tongue, like a camera shutter. Done. As I stared into his eyes, I knew this was a moment I'd remember, one of those ten-second memories that replayed in my head sometimes, like my first kiss with my first crush, a girl named Dawn, like playing football with the neighborhood kids and catching the ball one-handed to score a game-winning touchdown. When we won state championship in basketball, and my parents cheered and clapped for me in the stands. And now, this moment here, where I knew without a doubt that I was falling for Quinn, that I'd always care for him, wonder where he was, how he was. This quiet boy I'd met on a cruise ship, who would change the way I looked at myself. The guy I trusted enough to ask him to fuck me. I opened up the condom and rolled it down over his dick. His body stiffened, and I didn't look at him in the eye as I smoothed it down, then coated him with lube. Finally, my gaze met his. Will you fuck me? He blinked a couple of times. Wait, you were serious before? Yeah, I'm serious. I want to know what it feels like. I want to know if I like it, and I trust you, Quinn. Please? I sat up, and, with a crack, my head slammed into the bunk above me. Fuck! I hollered, clutching the back of my head as I collapsed down on top of him. Oh, my God! His fingers massaged my head. Are you okay? I began to laugh. Not just a small huff, but a full-on belly laugh. Shit! This is ridiculous! Could I get any sexier? You turned on now that I have head trauma? After a second of silence, Quinn laughed as well, his hands cupping my face as he kissed me. Then he smacked my shoulder. Get up. I have a better idea. I stumbled out of bed, still rubbing my head and aware that despite the crack in my skull, my dick was still hard as a rock. Quinn took the blanket off my bed and laid it on the floor. He stepped on it carefully, wiggling his toes, then looked up at me. I've never topped before. God, we were like awkward teenagers. Okay. He held a hand out. But I know... I know what feels good when I'm... You know. His face reddened, but he licked his lips and soldiered on. When I'm the bottom. So we can do this. A smile spread across his face as he took a step toward me and stroked his dick. It feels so fucking good, Jay. I tried not to show my nerves as I smiled back. Okay. He told me to lie down, and then he curled up next to me, the lube in his hand. First he coated my dick and stroked a couple times. I let my legs fall open as his hand squeezed me as his fingers rolled my balls. After another application of lube, he moved his hand back until he began to circle my hole. I reached my arm out and grabbed his shoulder as he applied a little pressure. It felt... weird. Not painful. Not fully pleasurable, either. But I knew I wanted more. I wanted that finger inside. He was watching his hand but his gaze swept up to mine. You okay? I nodded. Yeah. My voice sounded odd, strained, detached, as that finger continued its increasing pleasure. I have to stretch you. I know. He smiled. 
Right. And when he leaned down to kiss me, his finger slid in all the way. Immediately I clenched, my first instinct against this foreign object invading my body. But Quinn murmured against my lips, and his hard dick rubbed against my hip, so I focused on him. On us. He was able to add two fingers, then three, and by that time I was sweating, my breathing erratic. I was glad the lights in the cabin were dim because I couldn't imagine what I looked like. My body sprawled on the floor, legs obscenely spread, as Quinn worked his fingers in and out of my body. Please, I whispered. Go ahead. You sure? Positive. He nodded, then lay on his back, tugging me to him, and urged me to straddle his hips. He stroked my thighs, his thumbs moving in slow circles. I think this will be a good position for you. You can see my face and control the speed and depth, okay? I squeezed my eyes shut at the tender look on his face, the gentleness of his voice. For once in my life I'd made a fucking right decision. Thank God I hadn't sated my curiosity with some stranger back in L.A. who wouldn't have cared to make it good for me. I scooted forward, then reached around and lined up the head of his dick at my entrance. He smiled. Those hands continued to massage my thighs. Just sit back, Jay, and take me in. I held back a wince as the blunt head began to breach me. It was wider than his fingers, and it hurt. Breathe, Quinn said, stroking my softening erection. Breathe. I did, but it still hurt, and I wondered if this was going to work. I moved my hips in a circle, working to take him inside me. There was a slight burn, then something inside me gave way, and I sank down all the way. We both froze as I braced my hands on Quinn's chest. His blue eyes were round, his mouth open. His lips moved a couple of times, like he was trying to talk. Finally, he swallowed and licked his lips. I can't describe how good you feel right now. I wiggled my hips experimentally, moaning when his dick brushed against my prostate. Quinn's hands were gripping the sheet below us in a white-knuckled grip. I'm going to move now, I said. Are you okay? He asked. I think so. He nodded. Okay. Okay. I placed my palms on either side of his shoulders and then slowly began to rock myself up and down on his shaft. He encouraged me to change the angle a couple times until we found the way that had his dick pinging my prostate on every thrust. He continued to stroke my dick, and the burn was receding. The pleasure of being full, of Quinn inside me, overtaking any other sensation. The tendons on his neck were straining, his teeth gritted as he stared at me with not a little bit of awe. I wondered if my expression was the same. When I came, the orgasm raced down my spine and exploded in my groin. I came with a hoarse curse all over Quinn's stomach, and I vaguely heard him groan in response as his body shuddered below mine. I held the condom in place. As I pulled off him, my thigh muscles screaming at me. I flopped onto my back, my hand rubbing my chest as I fought to catch my breath. Beside me, Quinn was doing the same. He got up for a minute to deal with the used condom, then he was back with a warm towel. He cleaned himself, then me, then pressed it for a moment behind my balls. You feel okay? I think my thighs hurt worse than my ass. He laughed at that and then tossed the towel back into the bathroom. 
Might want to up the weights on leg day, huh? I turned to him as he braced himself above me with his elbow on the blanket. Thank you, he said, his fingers tracing my collarbone in a gesture I now recognized was comforting to him. For trusting me. Thank you, I said, for being the one decision in my life I don't regret. Quinn I woke up an hour later needing to take a piss. Jay was beside me, snoring softly. When I returned from the bathroom, he was awake, watching me. Those deep brown eyes so focused on me tightened my chest. I blinked my eyes and made the clicking sound with my tongue. Freeze frame, I said. He grinned and rolled onto his side, tugging me closer. Then he mimicked the sound and the blink. Me too. A strange sense of possessiveness swept over me. I wanted to stay here forever and hide Jay from everyone out there wanting him to be someone else. When he was with me, he was kind and caring and passionate. And not straight. I wanted the world to meet Jay, not J.R. It killed me to think they never would. I wasn't sure what my face showed, but it must not have been good because Jay hugged me tightly and pressed a kiss to my temple. I sighed in his arms. Hey, we had tonight, he said, and no one can take that away from us. Ever. I squeezed my eyes shut. What if one night wasn't enough anymore? When we woke up again it was morning, and we had five minutes of peace before Levi knocked on the door. Jay and I quickly dressed as he rushed inside. I took one look at his face, and I knew what he said next wasn't going to be good. Quinn, I gotta get you out of here. The crew is on their way with Doug. Levi's eyes switched from alarm to mirth. He's so pissed, but I think we got away with it. My heart lurched in my chest, and it took me a second to clue in why. Disappointment. That's what that was. Disappointment that Jay hadn't been found out, because if the truth came out, maybe we'd... have a future? and on the heel of that emotion came a nearly drowning wave of guilt. I was such a selfish prick. Jay's entire body sagged with relief at Levi's words. He'd been forced to hide this whole time, so it should be on his terms when he decided to tell the truth. So I beat my selfish desires back and smiled as brightly as I could at Jay. That's great we pulled it off. Jay turned to me, and it had to be my imagination that I saw a brief flash of disappointment on his face, too. Yeah, it is. I stepped toward Levi. So, I guess I should go. My words were cut off as I was yanked back into Jay's arms. He shoved his face into my neck and squeezed me tightly, so tight I could barely breathe. But I didn't protest, not at all, just closed my eyes and hugged him right back. His head came up so he could whisper in my ear. I'm sorry it has to be like this. I melted into the heat of his body. It's okay. He leaned back and pressed one last kiss to my lips. Take care, Lucky. I pulled a chip from the casino out of my pocket, one that I'd never cashed. I wanted it as a souvenir, but now I couldn't think about keeping it. I placed it on his palm. You too, Jay. He stared at the chip in his palm, then raised his gaze to meet mine. Before he changed his mind, before he called me back and ruined his future, I turned around and slipped from this cabin with Levi. He walked me down the hall, arm in arm. Our heads dipped as the cameras walked by us on their way to Jay's cabin. In the elevator, when it was just the two of us, I sagged against the wall. You'll make sure he's okay? Levi nodded, his face pale. 
I'm worried about him. His agent is pressuring him to stay quiet and audition for this pilot. Blowing out a breath, Levi stepped toward me. I'll watch out for him. But you watch out yourself, okay? I'm pretty sure we didn't expose you, so you should be fine. Don't you get it, though? My shout bounced around the four walls of the elevator, and Levi stepped back, clearly surprised at my rare outburst. I don't care about being exposed. Normally that would make me break out in hives, the thought of cameras and attention and whatever, but I'd do it if it meant supporting Jay. If he wanted to tell the truth, I'd be there for him. I lost some steam. I want what's best for him and I hate that it doesn't seem like any decision he makes right now is best for him. How is that fair? Shit isn't fair, Quinn. Levi's face was twisted into an uncharacteristic sneer. You came on this trip to party with your friend and have a good time and gawk at the cast members, right? The elevator stopped at my floor, and before the doors opened, he cast a parting shot. Well, guess what? We got problems. This is our job. This is our lives. So just go back to yours and don't worry about us. The doors opened, and I backed out of them, unable to take my eyes off of Levi. He looked tired and beat, and while a part of me took offense to his words, I knew there was more to it. This wasn't about me. As I stood in the hallway, the doors began to close, Levi's face softened. His last words to me were quiet. Have a nice life, Quinn. I didn't see J.R. after that. I assumed he was holed up in his room. Jess sat next to me in the lounge while I stirred a rum and coke. She rubbed my arm and offered to text Casey to see if Jay had any messages for me but I didn't want that. Jay had made it clear that this ended here. We were done, and I had to deal with that. Levi's words, while harsh, were what I needed to hear. This wasn't about me. Jay had much bigger problems than my hurt feelings. When we disembarked, Colin and Riley were waiting for us. We spotted them before they saw us, Colin's brow was furrowed as he searched the crowd for his sister. Riley was chatting away about something. When Colin found Jess, he smiled and waved. Riley waved as well. Jess turned to me with a wary expression. You okay? I was getting a little tired of her asking that. I'm fine, really. She bit her lip. Okay. When we reached the dock, Colin hugged his sister tightly and grabbed her bags. Hey, you guys have fun? I expected to pick up two liquor-soaked rags, but you don't look too bad. I felt like I'd aged ten years in a week. Was that what a first love did? Because if I understood anything, it was that I'd fallen for the famous bastard. Jess was chattering about the parties and about Casey as she walked next to Colin. Riley fell into step beside me his brown eyes thoughtful. You're quiet. I'm always quiet, I said. He wasn't having that. This is a different kind of quiet. Something happened? Colin and Jess were about five feet in front of us, and because of the noise of the crowd, I didn't think they could hear me. Riley and I hadn't ever clicked. I thought we were too different but he clearly cared and was amazingly perceptive. So I hitched my bag higher on my shoulder and swallowed. I, uh, met a guy. Ah, Riley said. What does that ah mean? He smiled and looked down at his feet. I know what it's like to meet someone in unusual circumstances. It's like every emotion is heightened. He glanced at me. This guy treat you okay? I think... I took a deep breath. I think he really cared about me. Me. Like he saw me, you know? Riley's gaze 
drifted to the back of his boyfriend in front of us before returning to me. Yeah, I do. So are you going to see him again? I shook my head. It's complicated. Riley was silent for a long moment, and I thought the conversation was over until he said, Complicated doesn't mean it's impossible. Chapter 18 J. Two months later. From the driveway I could smell the spices of Ma's famous ribs. I inhaled deeply, closing my eyes, letting it soak in like a balm to all the cracked pieces of my soul. I was home. Ma? Dad? D. I called as I opened the front door. In the kitchen! Ma yelled back. I towed off my shoes, because no one tracked dirt in Ma's house, and padded my way down the narrow hallway. In the kitchen, my family stood around the center island. Dad drank a beer while Darren stole a hunk of rib meat from the steaming plate in the middle. Ma wagged her finger at him. I told you we were waiting for your brother. Darren pointed at me. I know, and I listened, but he's here now, so let me at those ribs. Ma rolled her eyes, then came toward me with her arms out. Hey, sweetheart. I wrapped my mom in a big hug, breathing deeply, her familiar perfume surrounding me. She wore the same paisley, threadbare apron she always did. We got her a new one last Christmas, but she wasn't having it. She said this apron was her lucky one, the reason her food came out so delicious. Since no one wanted to mess with her kitchen skills, we promptly returned the new apron. Hey, Ma. Recently she'd cut her hair, so there was about an inch of short curls on her head. With her high cheekbones and light eyes, which she'd inherited from her white father, she was striking. You look beautiful. She cocked a hip and raised an eyebrow. I know. I shook my dad's hand. Everyone said I looked like my dad. The darker skin, the same eyes, wide nose and full lips. It was Saturday, yet he still wore a nice pair of pants and a button-down shirt. Teacher mode was his default, and even now, with his glasses perched on his nose, brown eyes studying me, I wondered what he saw, because I'd learned a hell of a lot the last year. Good to see you, Dad. He squeezed my shoulder, his hand lingering. You too, son. The sounds of chewing made me turn to Darren. Man, you can't wait five minutes. I'm hungry, he grumbled, but a smile was there. I pushed his shoulder gently, and he grinned, then clapped me on the back. My season of trip league was over. I was home for a couple days before I flew out to film the reunion episode. I missed my family so goddamn much, it was like an ache in my gut all the time. I hadn't been sleeping or eating well. Now that I was home, around my family who loved me, smelling the macaroni and cheese my mom was pulling out of the oven, I wanted to eat until I burst and then sleep for five years. It was spring in New Jersey so we ate outside on our patio. I knew I had the sauce from the ribs smeared all over my face and hands. Oh, and there was a spot on my pants. But I didn't even care. I set down a rib bone I'd picked clean and took a sip of my water. Our classes, D. He swallowed a forkful of mac and cheese. Good. I got finals next week. Darren took classes at our local state college. He lived at home to save money, and most of his tuition was covered by a scholarship because he was smart as hell. He wanted to teach high school, science and math. He would be fucking great at it, which was another one of the reasons I'd work myself into the grave to make sure he lived long enough to do it. You still seeing that girl? He pushed around the coleslaw on his plate, then peered up at me with a grin. Yeah. Good deal, I said, smiling back at him. Ma leaned forward. So tell me more about this audition. I wiped my hands on my napkin and leaned back in my chair. 
I belched and slapped my hand over my mouth. Maybe I shouldn't have had that extra helping of... everything. Ma glared. Jay! Sorry, I muttered. Excuse me. She rolled her eyes. So talk. About the audition. I gulped more water and then spun my glass on the table as the ice clinked together. Um, it's a high school football show with the TW network. I'd play the quarterback in a small southern town. I'd gotten the audition materials from Carl and gone over the lines a couple of times. I wanted to hate the part of Drake Mason. Too bad I didn't. Not at all. I wanted the part. I just didn't want everything that came with it. Darren pushed his plate away. The TW network, huh? I nodded, and he leaned forward with his forearms on the table. There were lines at the corner of his eyes, and his color had paled. Hey, you okay? Want to go inside? He glared. I'm fine. You look. I'm not in pain, Jay. I'm pissed. What aren't you telling us about this? I glanced at my parents, who sat still and silent. When I met my brother's eyes again, I swallowed. My agent says it's a family-friendly show and network, so I gotta play straight. The table erupted. Darren pointed his finger at me, his voice low and deadly. Ma was yelling, and Dad put his head in his hands, shaking it back and forth with a groan. The neighbors were gonna think we were all fucking nuts. Everyone, stop! I slammed my palms on the table. It took another minute or two for the grumbles to die down until I could speak again. What the hell do you want me to do? This job could mean everything. I stared down my family. Money for Darren's treatments, his surgery. Money to help pay off the fucking two mortgages you put on this house. Money so you could actually retire before you're fucking seventy. I blew out a breath. It's fine. I'll stay with Andrea or date women. And forget about Quinn. It'll be fine. By the time I was done talking, my throat was scratched raw and my eyes burned. Ma made a small choked sound with a napkin pressed to her mouth. Then she stood up and walked into the house. Dad followed her with an unreadable glance back at me. I dropped my head into my hands, wishing I could build a blanket fort in my bed and stay there forever. I was making this decision for them. Why were they mad? Darren and I sat in silence until he finally spoke. I don't know what it's like to be you. But I imagine even if you date women, you want to be able to be honest about who you are. I didn't look at him, just nodded. And you want to be free to get with a guy you like, right? I lifted my head and met his gaze, then nodded again. He tilted his head. Levi emailed me. Did he tell you that? No. After the cruise, he asked me to check in on you. Why is that? I dropped my gaze to my empty plate. I don't know. Jay... I sighed. I met a guy on the cruise. He was... I leaned my head back, staring at the waning, or was it waxing, moon in the dusky sky. My hand strayed to the pocket of my shorts where I always kept the chip Quinn had given me. He was so fucking nice. I was sick the first morning on the boat, and... He saw me on the deck and offered me these stupid wristbands, but they worked. And he was quiet and was good at craps and loved to eat Lucky Charms, but he always saved all the marshmallows for last. I laughed, remembering eating cereal on the deck with him. I looked at my brother as my vision blurred, as my cheeks grew hot. I think I did something for him, too. I don't know. I guess I like to think I did. He's a really cautious guy, you know. Darren nodded. 
we had to hide to see each other. It was a risk, since he could have been exposed, too, but he took that risk for me. With me. I pulled the casino chip out of my pocket, rolled it in my fingers, then tossed it to Darren. He caught it and studied it, then looked at me with a raised eyebrow. I shrugged. He gave that to me. I don't have his number or anything, but I have that. Darren swallowed as he ran a finger over the chip, then threw it back to me. So that's it? What? You only saw him on the ship, and... Yeah, what choice do I have? Would you have wanted to see him again? If you didn't have to hide? I'd told myself I wouldn't. But I wasn't as good at lying to myself as I was to everyone else. Yeah. I'd want to see him again. Darren shook his head and kicked the table, his face tight. I don't want you to do this. Do what? His gaze burned into mine. Hide. I can't stand it any more. Ma and Dad hate it because they see how miserable you are. I'm not. You are. When you first started Trip League, you were okay because you didn't think it'd be long. But I can see what this is doing to you. J.R. isn't my brother. J. is. J. is a whole lot of things, and bisexual is one of them. You should be allowed to say that, to tell people. Carl said I'll get less offers if I come out. Fuck Carl! Darren sneered. I can't tell you what to do, Jay. But don't sit there and tell me you don't want to come out. You talked all the time about how excited you were for your contract to be up, for you to be able to be honest with everyone about who you are, so don't act like that doesn't mean anything to you anymore. What do you want me to do? I pleaded. I'm doing this for this family and for you, and... Darren's lower lip trembled. I rarely saw my brother cry, even when his pain was at its worst, even when the doctor asked him for a scale, and Darren had to gasp out that he was at a ten. But he was on the verge now, and I felt the familiar pinprick in my own eyes. I rubbed them and looked away. I didn't ask for this. Darren said softly, My life and this family's have been dictated for too long by a disease that none of us asked for. I hate it. I fucking hate it, and I feel helpless. I risked a glance at him. A tear rolled down his cheek, a single sparkle in the light of the setting sun. So I can't. Won't. Let it control your life. I tried to protest. The money. I don't give a shit about the money. He whispered harshly. His Adam's apple bobbed as he swallowed, and he brushed his face angrily. I refuse to accept this. That you have to be miserable for me. That you have to be a martyr for this family. It would have hurt less if he'd taken his fork and stabbed me in the chest. D. I'm scared for you. If you agree to stay quiet about your sexuality now, when will it end? There'll always be another audition, another part, another reason not to be who you are, openly. If that's what you want, if you're okay being in the closet, then fine, I'll drop it. But I don't think that's what you want. Don't use me as an excuse. You're killing me. I thumped my chest, my voice strained as I held on to my composure with my fingertips. I don't know what the right answer is. What if I come out and no one wants to touch me? What if I never get another job in this business again? What the fuck am I going to do? He lifted his chin. But what if you do come out and people do want you? What if more doors open because of it? What then? I pressed my lips together and shook my head. 
all the words I wanted to say colliding into the lump in my throat that prevented them from escaping. That's on you to make the decision. If you want to take that risk. He pounded his fist on the table. But I won't be the cause. I won't, Jay. I've got enough guilt for everything I've put this family through. I squeezed my eyes shut as something wet trickled down my cheek. I don't know what to do. I'm fucking scared. Darren sighed, and when I opened my eyes he was smiling sadly. I'll love you no matter what you do. Just please, for fuck's sake, do what makes you happy. Coming clean to my castmates about who I was made me happy. Quinn made me happy. The thought of being honest with everyone sent a bolt of exhilaration and terror through me at the same time. I laughed softly and gulped the rest of my water. What would make me happy right now is to sleep for about twelve hours. Darren gestured at the table in front of us. Let's clean up for Ma and Dad and then go into a coma. That's a good plan. For now, that's my only plan. How does that sound? All right, Jay. My mother had calmed down by the time we finished cleaning the dishes. Darren went to the basement to watch TV with my dad, while I found my mom in the living room, dusting. We all had our ways to cope with bad shit. Ma dusted. I sat down on the couch and waited until she finished cleaning the fireplace mantle and turned to look at me. I'm sorry I upset you. She shook her head and sank down into the chair beside me. No, it wasn't all you. Sometimes I feel helpless. With Darren? With you? I want you both to be happy, but I can't snap my fingers and make it happen. Your mac and cheese helps. She smiled and patted my hand. Well, that's something I can do then. I stared at her hand over mine. Darren thinks I should come out. Her red nails dug into my skin until I raised my eyes to meet hers. What do you think? I think... It's complicated. How so? There's more to it than spell it out for me. She leaned back and speared me with that Mama Butler intensity. It can't be too complicated that we can't sort it out. You make it sound easy. Sometimes. She let her gaze travel around the room. A problem seems too big. Too much. And I'm so anxious about it that I make myself sick. If I actually sit down and pick it apart until there's no aspect of the issue I've left uncovered, it doesn't seem quite so bad. Or at least, I've addressed the big, bad unknowns. What are the big, bad unknowns? I chewed my lip. I stay in the closet, but I'm miserable. Why would you be miserable? Because I can't be honest with anyone. I couldn't see a man want him and act on it. I blushed a little at this conversation with my mother, but she didn't even blink. If I fall in love with a woman, I'd want to tell her about me. So what's the alternative? I come out and my career goes in the crapper. Do you think it would? I don't know. But if it does, how will I help you? How will we save enough for Darren's surgery? He told me he doesn't care, that it's not worth it to him for me to be miserable. And is that your only fear? Money? I had to be honest with myself, didn't I? God, my throat was tight and my head pounded. The introspective shit was hard. I think I'm scared too, Ma. I'm scared to lose friends because of who I am, to read what the press has to say. I braced my elbows on my knees and wrapped my hands around the back of my head. Shit! 
the couch dipped beside me, and then lips pressed against my temple. I closed my eyes. No matter what, Ma whispered, I will love you, and I'm proud of you, and this family will survive, because we don't know how not to. Later that night I lay in bed on my back, staring at my ceiling. I'd left the blinds open and the moonlight filtered in, catching on the trophies and medals I'd earned in high school. I rotated my cell phone in my hands, then turned it on, quickly typing in my passcode and flipping to my photos. I smiled as I found the photo of Quinn and myself that I'd taken on the boat the morning we'd eaten Lucky Charms. Quinn's red-gold hair was blown back from the wind, his blue eyes as bright as the sky behind us. His mouth was open in mid-laugh. His head half-turned to look at me. I was beaming at the camera, and even I knew that was the smile of Jay, not J.R. Sometimes I texted Casey, who was still talking to Jess. I'd get updates from him about Quinn, but I wouldn't let him tell Jess or Quinn that I asked about him. I told myself it was for him, but really, it was for me. I knew if I heard from Quinn one word that he wanted to talk to me, I'd cave. But now that I was home, now that I'd begun to sift through everything in my head, I wasn't so sure any more if I was doing either of us any good. Even if Quinn never wanted anything to do with me, even if our time on that boat was all we had, I didn't know if I could do this again, sign on for another period in my life when I couldn't be who I was. I turned off my phone, rolled over, and decided I'd think more tomorrow. Tonight, I'd sleep. Chapter 19 Quinn I retied the bandana around my forehead and wiped the sweat out of my eyes. The kitchen at Patty's Barbecue was always a fucking sauna. Well, a sauna that smelled like smoke and barbecue. Colin, who was now the manager, peeked his head into the kitchen and spotted me. That was the last car, so we're closing the drive through Your parents are out in the dining room when you're finished. I nodded and bent my head to begin cleanup. Graduation had been a couple weeks ago, and I returned to Plymouth, North Carolina, to work at Patty's for the summer. Colin and Jess's parents owned Patty's, and it was the only job I'd ever had. It was hard, sweaty work, but I was going to miss it when I was sitting in my pampered office. I hadn't told my parents yet where that office was going to be. They still thought I was going to stay in North Carolina living at home. It had taken a cruise ship and a reality show celebrity for me to see that I couldn't do that. To be the man I wanted to be, I had to get away. I had to live on my own. I had to start a new life, even if it scared the shit out of me. It was rather calculating of me, but I planned to tell them now out in the dining room. My mom refused to make a scene in public, so she couldn't get hysterical this way. Once I'd finished wiping down the kitchen, I washed my hands and face, then quickly changed my shirt, since it was streaked with sweat and food. I still smelled like a, well, like a barbecue cook, but whatever. When I walked out into the dining room, I spotted my parents in one of the corner booths. They sat beside each other, leaving the booth across from them empty for me. This was going to be an interrogation. I slid into the booth, and they looked up. Honey, Mom said, how was work? I snagged a french fry off her plate. Good. Manners, she tisked. We got you a soda. Do you want us to order you something to eat? I shook my head as I ripped the paper off my straw and dropped it into my drink. I'm all right. I grabbed a sandwich earlier. We fell into silence as I drank my soda, letting the bubbles fizz on my tongue. So, my dad began, Have you thought about, I'm taking the job in California? I blurted out, Just like that. 
I vomited the words out on the table where we all sat staring at them like they were poison. What? Mom finally whispered. What did you say? I was an adult, damn it. I could do this. I looked her in the eye. I decided I'm taking the job in California, but I'm in a rut here. And if I stay, I'll never get out of it. I need to be forced outside my comfort zone for me to realize who I am and who I want to be. Wow, this was becoming an epic speech. I wished I was recording myself to play it later when I had an anxiety attack over moving across the country. I know in my heart that this isn't where I want to be. I love it here, don't get me wrong, but I want to experience new things and challenge myself. I can't do that here. Dad's jaw was nearly on the table, and my mother looked near tears. Quinn, she whispered, let's not make any hasty decisions. We're not making any decisions, hasty or otherwise. This is my decision. I thought my entire body was going to go up in flames. I'd never talked to my parents like this, but it was time, and I couldn't handle it any more. I need to do this. Please understand. But where will you live? Who will you know? Mom, I'm not the first person to move to a new place for a job. The company has a department that will help me find an apartment. I'll meet my co-workers, and hopefully some of them will turn into friends. It'll be okay. Mom didn't look any better, but my father seemed... almost proud. I clenched my fists into my lap. What do you think, Dad? He took a sip of his iced tea, not speaking for a full minute. Dad never rushed his words, always working them out in his head before he vocalized anything. Finally, he met my gaze. Your mother and I will miss you. Very much. But I think this is the right decision for you. I worried a little bit about you staying here. John! Mom gasped. He held up his hand, and she fell silent with a huff. We'll always worry. We'll never stop being your parents. But it's time for you to be a man, Quinn. And I think you're doing a damn fine job of that. I was going to cry, right in the middle of Patty's. It wasn't like my parents hadn't ever told me they were proud of me, but this was a decision I'd made all on my own, one I'd agonized over repeatedly. I didn't need my parents to approve, although it sure helped. Thank you, I said. I promise we'll keep in touch all the time. I'll call and we'll FaceTime. You can come visit. Dad smiled, while Mom dapped her eyes with a napkin. We'll do that. Suddenly I was hungry again. Turned out life decisions took a lot of energy. I flagged down a waitress and ordered a late dinner. I woke up the next day to banging, and then excited voices. I rolled over and checked the time, noting it was nine in the morning. I didn't have to work today, so I had planned to sleep in. What was that racket? I was about to holler at everyone to shut up when my bedroom door burst open. I yelped and tugged the sheet up to my neck as Jess raced in and jumped on my bed. Quinn! Jess, what the hell? She rolled her eyes and tugged on the fabric. Stop! I've seen you without a shirt, you weirdo. I sat up and the sheet pooled around my waist. Why are you here? Why are you in my bed? She blinked at me. You really don't know, do you? I slapped my hands down on the bed. Jess, what the hell? What were you doing last night? Uh, I came home from work, showered, and then read. Her eyes widened. Then she hopped off my bed, grabbed my laptop from my desk, and sat down beside me. So, the Trip League reunion show was on last night. Oh, I had known that. I wanted to watch, but I needed time to shore up all my emotions before I saw Jay again, although he'd be J.R. on the show. I wasn't sure if that would be more or less painful for me to see. She tapped away at the keys, then slid the laptop onto my lap. Watch. The video was already playing. A clip from the reunion show. 
My breath caught as the camera zoomed in on Jay. He sat slumped on a stool, his leg jittering, his gaze darting around. What's wrong? I looked at Jess. Is he okay? She pointed at the screen. Just watch. The host was talking to Jay now, and I turned up the volume. So, Jay, rumors have dogged you since the cruise. You want to give the audience any insight on whether or not you were unfaithful to Andrea? I rubbed my chest. Oh, God, poor Jay. He froze for a second, his gaze darting to Levi next to him, before he focused back on the host. Um, yeah. I'd like to address that, actually. Oh, no. Jay ran his tongue along his bottom lip, pausing when he reached the corner, before leaning forward on his stool. His posture was better, his eyes a little brighter. So, I have some things to admit. And I hope people can forgive me because I've told some lies and omitted some truths. I thought I was doing the right thing for my career and for the show, but I can't keep this secret anymore. He took a deep breath, and I took it with him as my fingers strayed to the screen, brushing it where his hands lay in his lap. There is no Andrea. We made her up, my agent and me, to hide the fact that I'm bisexual. The audience gasped, and the host's mouth gaped like a fish. Levi slid off his stool, wrapped his arms around Jay's waist, then hopped back into his chair, a triumphant grin on his face. Casey high-fived Jay, who laughed breathlessly. One by one, the cast members offered their support on camera with a hug or whispered words or a kiss on the cheek. I was fucking crying. Jay wasn't done. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to everyone who feels hurt or betrayed. There are many reasons we did this. Most I can't say publicly, but I hope everyone understands it was complicated. I thought that, at the time, it would be fine. I could date women and it wouldn't matter, but... He shook his head. It does matter. It matters that I can't be who I am, that I can't be free to date or be with anyone I'm attracted to, that even if I were in a heterosexual relationship, I wouldn't be able to tell them the truth about me, for them to know all about me. Well, the host said, managing to find his voice, congratulations on the truth. Jay smiled, and it was Jay's smile, the one I loved. Thanks. So this Quinn? Jay looked down for a minute, his lips moving without sound. The camera zoomed in as he lifted his head and looked right into the lens, his face taking up the entire frame. I met a guy on the cruise. He showed me what it was like to leap and proved to me that I was someone worth betting on. He sniffed and dipped his head as his face scrunched up. I couldn't breathe. I was going to have a heart attack. He stared into the camera again, his eyes wet. Lucky. I don't know where you are, or if you're even watching this, but I still have that chip, and I think I'd like to cash it in. He laughed softly. The house didn't win. We did. The camera panned away, and I lost it. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God! I held my breath and rocked back and forth as the clip stopped on a freeze frame on Jay's face. Arms wrapped around me. Blonde hair tickled my ear. Jess. Jess was here. I turned and clung to her like a lifeline. He, he, I know, she said. I know. But what if he fucked everything up? What if he can't find work? What if he can't help his family? I'm not worth this. Jess grabbed my face between her hands and squeezed. Quinn, get it together. I focus, Quinn, she said. Calm down. 
I breathed, in and out, in and out, matching my breaths with hers. Finally, when my heart was no longer beating out of my chest, I nodded. She dropped her hands. This was Jay's decision to do this, and he had time to think it through. He didn't walk off the boat and immediately declare his sexuality and proclaim his love for you. Think about it, Quinn. He planned this. She was right. Of course she was right. Jess was always right. I speared my hands through the air. I'm so worried for him. I hope he's okay. Is the Internet freaking out? She placed her index finger and thumb about an inch apart, scrunching her nose. A uh, little bit. God, this is insane. Quinn? Um, there's something else? I couldn't take much more. What? She nibbled her lip. He's coming here. I blinked. Say what? He's coming here with Casey on a plane today. Today? She'd said today. Today? He wants to see you. Do you want to see him? I was going to lose my mind. Of course I want to see him. I've thought of nothing but him for months. I close my eyes and I can see his. I step outside and I can swear I hear him laugh. I can't eat my favorite cereal for fuck's sake because I get a hard on and that's really fucking awkward at breakfast with my mom. Jess was bent over laughing. This isn't funny, I yelled at her. She laughed harder. I picked up a pillow and began to hit her with it, while she defended herself weakly. Stop! She gasped for breath. I'm sorry! Now stop! You are mean! She sat up on her knees, her face flushed with laughter, tears in her eyes. So? What do you think? I think. I need to shower and eat cereal that isn't Lucky Charms, and I need to figure out what the hell I'm going to say to him. She leaned forward. This is so exciting. This is basically Pretty Woman. There is nothing Pretty Woman about this. I'm not a prostitute, and I don't live in a shitty apartment with my prostitute friend. But he's going to ride in all gallantly. Your analogy sucks. She narrowed her eyes at me. You suck. I hit her with the pillow again. Get out so I can shower. She hopped off the bed and sauntered to the door, then looked at me over her shoulder. I need to get ready, too. Casey is coming to see me, after all. She winked. I scrambled out of bed. Shit, I'm so not ready for this. See you soon, she called as she walked out. I stood in the middle of my room, in my boxers, staring at myself in the mirror. My hair stood on end, and I had sleep lines all over my face from my pillow. But most of all, I had no idea what the hell I was going to say to Jay. The Quinn who boarded that cruise ship was a vastly different Quinn than I felt like now. Would I still feel the same when I looked at him? Would he still feel the same way about me? I was going to barf. Chapter 20 J. I saw his hair first, and it was a little blonder than I'd remembered. Casey and I had no idea what the fuck we were doing. He wanted to see Jess. I couldn't wait to lay eyes on Quinn, so we'd flown to North Carolina and rented a car and found the nicest hotel we could that was close to Quinn's town, which was seriously in Narnia but I didn't care, because as I pressed my nose up against the glass of my hotel room like a little kid, Quinn was walking through the parking lot toward the front doors, arm in arm with Jess, his head down. I rubbed my palms on my shorts and checked the air conditioner in the room for the umpteenth time. I'd already taken a shower, or I'd do it again based on how much sweat was soaking my T-shirt. Gross! I had offered to share a room with Casey, but he wanted to be alone with Jess. It wasn't that I didn't want to be alone with Quinn, but I wasn't sure how this was going to go. 
It was only a couple of months since I'd seen him, but it felt like years. We'd had only a handful of days, and they'd done so much to change the course of my life. When I could no longer see Quinn, I stepped back into the room and sat down on the bed. Since the show aired, I hadn't looked online. Hell, I'd barely been able to breathe, every inhale catching in my chest, my lungs pierced with a thousand fish hooks. The last thing I'd wanted to see was what everyone was posting on the show's message boards. They could be cursing me out and hurling every gay slur at me in the book for all I knew. I'd given my agent a heads up about what I'd planned to do, and he told me he could no longer represent me because I was committing career suicide. The audition he'd gotten for me was cancelled because they'd heard the news and said I was no longer right for their network because of my values. The thought that I was now untouchable, toxic, and that my career was in the tank before it ever started sent a streak of white-hot fear through me. I couldn't dwell on that now, though. I focused on one thing at a time. My family had called me, all of them screaming with excitement, at once, over FaceTime, their faces blurred because they wouldn't stop moving. I hadn't seen Darren that happy in so long. He said he wasn't crying, but I saw the tear tracks staining his cheeks dark. And then there was Quinn. I'd planned out what I'd say on TV, but I hadn't planned to address Quinn. It must have been the adrenaline of the situation or the gratitude I was feeling toward the man who'd begun the push to get me out of the rut I was in. I had to talk to him. I had to see him. There was a knock at the door. With a deep breath I opened it, and for the first time in months took in the sight of Quinn Mathers. I was greedy for him. He wore a green T-shirt, black shorts, and checkered vans. I meant to say, hey, or something appropriate, but the first thing that came out of my mouth was, did you see the reunion show? Quinn swallowed, then nodded. He didn't speak, and I flexed my grip on the door. What did you think? He glanced down the hall, then back at me. Like a dumbass, I hadn't moved out of the doorway so he could walk in, so I backed up now, holding the door open for him. He took two steps inside, and I shut the door. I didn't know what to do with my hands, so I shoved them in my pockets. Quinn. He launched himself at me, and I fell back onto the bed, Quinn landing with an oomph on my chest. You did it! His eyes were huge, and I wanted to stay locked on them forever. Yeah, I did. Quinn's palms squeezed my cheeks. Are you okay? Is everything all right? He scrunched his face. No one said anything crappy to you, did they? I'll punch them in the junk. I laughed. No one was mean. But then I haven't signed online to see the shit show. Quinn's thumbs stroked my cheekbones. Fuck em. He rolled off of me and sat on the bed with his legs crossed. I braced myself with my hands behind me and twisted at the waist to face him. His eyes were down, fiddling with a loose thread on the sole of his shoe. I leaned closer. Kinda feels weird to be near you on solid ground. He lifted his head, and I was struck again by how blue his eyes were. When I went back to school after spring break, sometimes I had to convince myself that whole trip was real that it had actually happened, that I met you and that I... He blushed and looked back down. That you what? His lips shifted over his teeth, and then he tilted his head so one blue eye squinted at me. That I fell for you. His words hung in the air between us for a minute, and then they dropped each one soaking into my skin, sending my heart into overdrive. I'd laughed it off the last time he said those words. I wasn't laughing now. I put a knee to the bed and rose up on my hands to lean over him until he was forced to lay back. No. You didn't fall for me. 
Quinn didn't move, didn't breathe, as he stared up at me. I didn't? You fell with me, Lucky. We fell together. I pressed my lips to his, and he opened immediately, tugging me down, taking my weight. His legs fell open, and I settled myself between them as we poured everything we had into each other. Beneath me, Quinn sighed and moaned. His slender body wriggled and squirmed like he wanted to levitate off the bed with me. I rucked his shirt up to his chest and splayed my hands along his ribcage. The skin jumped below my palms as he wrenched away from my kiss. He lifted his forehead, touching it to mine, as we stared down our bodies. Then he let his head fall back on the pillow with a soft laugh. I bet I can get undressed quicker than you. I raised my eyebrows. Oh, yeah? He nodded, biting his lip. On the count of three. One, two, three. I levered myself off of him, already pulling my shirt over my head as he arched his back to tug his pants down his legs. He towed off his shoes at the same time as I struggled with the button on my shorts. I should have worn fucking baseball shorts because now Quinn's shirt was off and he was naked. Completely naked. And my pants were around my knees. Damn it! I tried to shove them down the rest of the way and only succeeded in tangling them up with my ankles and falling to the bed on my side. Quinn laughed, helping me with my shorts as I lay on my back. Then he crawled over me and kissed my chest. What do I win? What do you want? He traced my collarbone with his tongue, and my cock jerked against his hip. Um, how about a private island? I'm not Idris Elba. He changed direction, going lower now, and I lifted up onto my elbows to watch him. He winked at me. I guess I'll settle for sex with you in a hotel room in North Carolina. You'll settle, huh? I'm patient. We can work up to the private island. And then he took me into his mouth. I sucked in a breath as the sight of his pink lips stretched around me, his cheeks hollowed as he sucked. I had to touch him, because this wasn't some random faceless guy in a club. This was Quinn. I ran my fingers through his hair and kneaded the muscles in his shoulders. Quinn moaned his appreciation, sending waves of vibration down my shaft and into my balls. He pulled off and began to kiss a trail up my chest to my mouth. Please tell me you have stuff. I want you to fuck me. Please, Jay. He hadn't said my name since he'd walked through the door, and the sound of it on his lips turned me on even more. Who gave a shit what anyone thought of me? I had Quinn, who for some reason liked me back, and that was all I wanted right now. I motioned to a bag on the table beside the bed, which I'd placed there with hope. He dug inside and pulled out lube and a condom. I rolled it on, then motioned him closer. He straddled my hips, and with lube-covered fingers, I prepared him. His eyes fell closed as he rocked back onto my fingers as they stretched him. I had thought about this many times in the last couple of months, what it would be like to be inside Quinn. He tugged my hand away, an impatient sound rumbling in his throat. Then he grabbed the base of my shaft and slowly sank down. I sucked in a breath as Quinn's body took me inside him, his fingers curled on my chest, his nails digging into the skin. When his ass met my hips, he wasted no time beginning to ride me. He threw his head back, and I massaged his thighs and his ass, then gripped his cock to pump it in time with my thrusts. Look at me, I said, as I could feel my orgasm barreling toward me, Quinn's eyes lowered and locked with mine. I licked my lips. You're willing to bet on me again? His chest was flushed, his lips parted. I wouldn't have showed up if I wasn't. 
I groaned, tugging him down to me, and when I came, I cried out into his mouth, and he did the same as his cock jerked between us. It was inelegant and messy, and I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. His head was tucked into my neck, and my lips were at his ear. I squeezed him closer, my arms wrapped around him, my cock still inside him. Neither of us moved. The only sounds were our harsh breaths and the pinging noise of the old air conditioner. I wouldn't have changed a thing. Quinn I wrapped the hotel's white robe around me and did a little spin with my arms out. Eh? How does it look? I had no idea this hotel even had robes. I threw myself onto the bed. Or room service. Jay sat on the bed next to the phone, wearing only a pair of black boxer briefs while studying the menu. What do you want? I crawled next to him and flopped down on my stomach. French fries. He didn't look away from the menu. Okay. And a slice of apple pie. His head turned to me and he lifted an eyebrow. Okay. And maybe some mozzarella sticks. I could so go for some of those. He didn't even answer me now. Just let me ramble. I rolled onto my back and stared at the ceiling as I thought of all the things I was hungry for. Oh, and a soda and those cute little bottles of ketchup and maybe a pickle. A pickle? Yeah, a pickle. I turned my head. What, you don't like pickles? He looked at me with amusement and didn't bother answering me. I continued to stare at the ceiling as he ordered. After the awesome reunion sex, we'd both decided we were starving. I wasn't sure I'd ever ordered room service anywhere. When he hung up the phone, he reached over and ran his fingers down my nose. His smile faded, and a wrinkle marred the skin between his brows. What are you thinking about? I asked. He shook his head roughly, like he was trying to clear a thought. Nothing. I don't want to think about anything but being here. That's what we do, right? You and I? We enjoy the moment. I sat up, wrestling with the tie around my waist that was cutting off my circulation. No, that's what we did when we had no choice. We can talk about the future now. My voice trailed off as a sick feeling settled in my gut. Right? Or was this just... Jay grabbed me, and seconds later he was sitting against the headboard, me straddling him. I sat back on his thighs and tried not to touch all that gorgeous dark skin stretched over sleek muscles. Because that was distracting for a serious conversation, even though I wanted to touch it so badly. Quinn. I lifted my head. There was no hesitation in his voice when he spoke. I came here to start something with you, not end it, not to have one last memory, to make more. But I'm freaked the fuck out. My agent dropped me and I'm floundering here. I don't know how I'm going to make money or how I'm going to be able to see you as much as I want. I can't afford to fly here from L.A. all the time. He stopped talking when I began to bounce on his lap. His eyebrows quirked as he stared at my grin. Why are you looking at me like that? You don't have to fly. I kissed his nose. He batted me away. What are you talking about? I took the job. He squinted at me. What job? The job in California, near Los Angeles. I held my arms out to the side. So problem solved. His mouth moved, but he seemed to have no idea what to say, and his eyes flickered like his brain had to catch up to the conversation. I leaned in and kissed his lips. You're cute when you're confused. Quinn, what? You'll be near me? In L.A.? Yes! I'll have a real adult job and everything. It'll be amazing. You'll be... near me? I stopped bouncing and stared into those warm brown eyes. 
I'll be with you. He wrapped those big arms around me and squeezed me until I was wheezing. I opened my mouth on his shoulder and bit down until he released me. Then I kissed the teeth-dented skin. Oh, that's going to leave a mark, I muttered. He didn't seem to care as he held me at arm's length. Quinn, I don't know what to say. Please tell me that's what you really want. I made the decision before this happened. I made the decision a month ago. I need to get away from all of this. I waved my hand around the room. My parents, this town. I want to start somewhere new where I have to figure out who the fuck I am and who I want to be. Because the only thing I know for certain right now is I want to work and I want to be with you. Jay hugged me wordlessly, not so hard this time, but he trembled a little under me. I leaned my cheek against the top of his head and let him hide his face from me. I couldn't imagine what he was going through, the fear of what he'd done and how that would impact everything. I ran my hand along the back of his head. I'm so proud of you. He didn't answer, but gave me one squeeze. I wrapped my arms around his shoulders, and we sat like that until there was a knock at the door and a soft room service. While we ate, Jay seemed to perk up. He'd ordered about three meals, and he would finish one plate before moving on to the next. I crunched on my french fries, extremely pleased with my tiny bottle of ketchup. So are you ever going to brave the Internet again? He forked some mashed potatoes into his mouth. I kind of have to. Got to check email and shit. I stood up and walked over to his bags, rummaging around until I found a slim silver laptop. I held it up. May I? Sure. I sat cross-legged on the bed and opened up the laptop. Jay rolled the desk chair over beside me, holding a plate so he could eat and look over my shoulder. When the password prompt came up, Jay mumbled, Captain Crunch 99, all one word. I raised my eyebrows at him. Hey, don't judge my password. Yours is probably Fruit Loop 69. I shoved him and he almost dropped his plate. Foul, he yelled. I shook my head at him and typed in his password. The first thing I opened was his email. I squinted at the screen. Is your agent Rick D. Fox? Huh? He asked, scooping the last of his chicken into his mouth. No, why? I pointed at the screen. You got an email from him, and the subject line is Inquiry for Representation. You got another one, too, from Margot Bossman, and Katie Re— The laptop was turned as Jay abandoned his plate and hunched over the computer. His finger flew over the trackpad, and his mouth dropped open. Lower. Lower. Small gasps and muttered curses escaped. Finally, he leaned back and stared at me with wide eyes— Hands on top of his head like he'd just run a marathon. Quinn. What? I can't see anything. Quinn. Quit saying my name and tell me what's going on. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that I have a lot of people asking to represent me, because... He licked his lips. Because... Studios have been putting out calls asking for me. They want to know who my agent is. I jumped up and stood beside him to stare at his overflowing inbox. Are you serious? Like they want to offer you work or auditions or what? His head slowly turned. He was like a shell-shocked soldier. He just nodded, then went back to his computer, his hands flying across the keyboard. He did a quick Google search of his name, and we stared in awe as headline after headline made it seem like he was the most in-demand TV personality. He told me it'd be career suicide, that fucking bastard. Jay murmured, Fuck him. I'm black, and I'm bi, and I'm still standing. I began to pace. We need to strike while the iron is hot. New head pictures, or whatever those are called, headshots. And I can build you a website. Do you have a website? He shook his head. I threw up my hands. I can help with that. I can be useful, and... He tackled me so hard my breath left my chest. One minute I was standing, the next I was on my back, in the bed, Jay on top of me, grinning. Lucky. 
I growled. What? Stop. I want to be supportive. He cupped my face, placing his thumb over my lips. Don't you know? You're my good luck charm. All you gotta be is you. That's all I need. I blew out a breath as he moved his thumb away. Well, I muttered, I guess that's good. That's all I know how to be. Thank God, he said with a laugh. And then he kissed me. Epilogue Quinn Just lay down. No. Come on, you can rest. Close your eyes. Oh, for fuck's sake, Landry, no. I won't do it again. Yes, you will. Get away from me. The tall one with the ball cap, Justin, launched himself off the couch and tackled his boyfriend, Landry, to the ground. I jumped out of the way as they came skidding to a halt, Landry laughing so hard he couldn't breathe as Justin huffed and wrestled the seagull feather out of his hands. He stood up and pointed the feather at him. I swear to God, if you stick this up my nose tonight when I'm sleeping, I'll replace your shampoo with ketchup. Landry sat up, a smirk on his face. You wouldn't. Try me. Can I have my feather back now? Justin growled and stomped into the kitchen. Riley flopped down on the floor with Landry as they whispered together amid outbursts of laughter, clearly conspiring something. I turned to Colin. Um, are they always like this? He was lying on the couch, somehow still paying attention to the TV despite the racket. Yep, Justin and Landry have been best friends since middle school. Not much has changed, they just live together now. And sleep together. Oh, well then. Colin and Riley had a tradition now. Where they stayed with their friends, Justin and Landry, in a beach house on the outer banks of North Carolina every summer. This year they invited Jay and me. It so happened that he had a break in filming, so I took the time off work and we flew out. Landry and Riley were close, and I learned they'd all met when Riley and Landry became friends over email. Throwing six of us in a house together for a week had been a bit of a challenge, but Jay said he was happy to be here, and it showed in the relaxed set of his shoulders. The stress lines had nearly disappeared from around his eyes. He slept in until noon every day and then sought me out for kisses and cuddles, usually involving nudity. I walked into the kitchen where Jay stood talking with Justin. He was calmer now, his ball cap pulled low over his gray eyes. He watched me as I sidled up next to Jay, who wrapped an arm around me. Justin leaned back against the counter, a small smile on his face. Why ketchup? Jay asked. He hates it, makes him gag. You two are weird, I said. His grin grew wider. Yeah, we are. But it's all good. We've been together a couple years now, and I still can't look at him without losing my breath. Damn, that's sweet. I leaned my head into Jay, and kind of sappy. Justin's cheeks colored, and he looked down at the floor. Lance says I'm cheesy. Hey! We can all use a little cheese now and then, Jay said, raising a bottle of beer to his lips. Justin glanced at the door to the kitchen. I better get out there before he plans some revenge shit with Riley. Those two together are trouble. He strode out and I turned in Jay's arms, my hands reaching down to clutch his T-shirt by the waist. I nuzzled my face into his chest, which was bigger now that he was playing a rookie cop on a cable show. A gay rookie cop. After I'd moved to California, he'd hired a new agent who found him several auditions. He wasn't big enough yet to warrant much attention from the paparazzi, which was great. He had a small part that paid well and gave him plenty of money to send home to contribute to Darren's surgery. In fact, they had a cousin who'd be donating his bone marrow, and the surgery was lined up for the next year. If all went well, Darren would be a teacher until he was old and gray and I'd be the shy ginger boyfriend to the famous J.R. Butler. But to me, he was just Jay. He set his beer bottle on the counter behind him 
and smoothed my hair off my forehead. I'd let it grow a little longer because Jay said he liked it. I like it here, he said. Do you? Yeah, I get a whole week where I don't have to share you with millions of cable subscribers. He laughed. They get J.R. You get J. And you never have to share J. I grinned and rose onto my tiptoes for a kiss. That's the way I like it. J. The moon shone full in the sky, and I sighed, wrapping my arms around Quinn tighter. After a lazy afternoon, we'd traipsed out to the beach for a bonfire. Justin and Landry were all hard eyes for each other now, Justin running his hands up and down Landry's arm while he lay passive in Justin's arms. Riley and Colin were talking about some kid Riley was counseling at the LGBTQ Youth Center where he worked. The waves crashed onto the shore behind us, and I leaned my head back on the lounge chair we'd brought out. I thought Quinn had fallen asleep until he spoke up. Jay? Hmm? I love you. I smiled and pressed a kiss into his hair. I love you too. We'd said the words before, shortly after we moved in together a year ago. The Quinn, who I lived with in California, showed some of the same qualities as the Quinn I'd first met on the cruise ship. And then some. He was still shy, but it was more of a preference now. He liked to be quiet, and was happy for me to be the center of attention. He was more confident, more independent. I understood now when couples said they'd grown apart because I knew what it was like to grow together. That cruise ship had been the catalyst for us both to take control of our lives, to be the people we wanted to be. And sharing it together had bonded us, our hearts interwoven so tightly I couldn't imagine being apart. That was so cheesy. I was turning into Justin. Want to head back? I murmured into his hair. His head bobbed and we climbed off the chair. I folded it up and hiked it over my shoulder, reaching out to take Quinn's hand. When I felt it slip into mine, I turned to the other guys. We're going to go back, that okay? Justin and Landry nodded, and Colin looked up. Be safe on the walk back. Our house was right on the beach, so it wasn't much of a walk, but Colin was kind of a dad to us all, so I just nodded. Sure thing. Quinn bumped into me as he stumbled on the loose sand near the stairs to our house. We brushed off our feet and padded barefoot down the wooden walkway. When we reached the gate, I unlatched it and motioned Quinn through. He paused when he spotted the hot tub. Want to get in? Hot water jets blasting my muscles? A wet Quinn? Hell yeah! We stripped down to our underwear and stepped inside. I hissed as the hot water enveloped me, and I perched on the seat, leaning my head back. I opened my eyes to see Quinn playing with the bubbles on the surface of the water. Come here. He glanced up, and although his cheeks were reddening from the heat, they flushed even redder. He paddled over, and with a grunt, straddled me. I settled my hand on his cotton-clad ass. Look at us. We're having a great week and there's no need to hide and take leaps into large bodies of water. Quinn laughed. We just stepped into this hot tub. We're such adults now. About no more leaps for a while? I kind of like this calmer life, yeah? He placed his hands on my shoulders, thumbs kneading the muscles. I focused on his face, damp, from the water, the steam curling his hair and spiking his eyelashes. I'd never tire of looking at him. His eyes fluttered for a moment before he locked gazes with me. I'd do it all over again, even if we didn't end up together in the end. 
I'll always leap with you. I brushed the mole over his right cheekbone, and he pressed into my touch. I'll always leap with you too, Lucky. This concludes Out of Frame by Megan Erickson, narrated by Mark Bachman. Copyright 2016 by Megan Erickson. This unabridged audiobook is recorded by arrangement with Intermix, an imprint of Penguin Publishing Group, a division of Penguin Random House LLC, and was produced in the year 2016 by Tantor Media Incorporated, a division of recorded books, which holds the copyright there too. Please visit Tantor.com for more information on our growing library of unabridged audiobooks and to take advantage of special offers. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.